Hello and welcome. It's World Building Thursday. Hello, everybody. Hello, Prostar, Jammin, Rebuilt, Wolfmaster, Rocker. Hello, first time chatter. Sycophant Green, Scarlet, Zebus, Mystic, Skullthrone, Inkly, Gaming Void, Cosmos, X, Fish God, Legion. Hello, everybody. Uh, Wolfmaster, thank you very much for the gifted sub to the first time chatter. It's incredibly kind of you. Thank you very much for that. And the Hydra right off the bat. Well, uh, today I have a NOS energy. Oh. Don't know, watching a guinea pig cook a kobold alive was pretty wild. Yeah, but he's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Noss it up very well. So, I had a little bit of inspiration last night, which is why we're streaming today. Uh, I was working on, like, all of this talk of everybody making new characters for, for TOS, for Tales of Sunfall, got me thinking that I was like, man, the races of my setting don't really have that much distinction. They're not really like mine. They are, they're a product of Watsi. Uh, I was like, I, I haven't really touched up on them at all. Aside from, aside from like maybe writing it over, like maybe like writing a little name about it. So uh, today, we're going to see how far I can take this spark of inspiration and write up some more stuff for the races of my world. We've already done humans. I, uh, I posted humans last night in the creation showcase tab as well. They're on the Kanka page. Uh, so, yeah. I think we're going to I think we're going to see how far I can get today. My leash on a Thursday? What a gift! <laughs> hey, Ruffian. And hello, Rad Trills. Hey, Blood. Red has dog kobolds in his world and he burned to death? Jesus. <laughs> My god. <laughs> Gentle Ruffian, thank you very much for the four months, bro. It's incredibly kind of you. It's been four months, my leash. <laughs> thank you for your support. I really appreciate that. Hopefully these streams have helped you get through uh, through some of your, uh, your shifts at work, as I know you frequently listen at work. <laughs> so hopefully they have helped you in some way. Uh, so the humans... Humans. The second creation of the Aranar, the humans of Aetis are a diverse and complex people that have seen many changes through the countless centuries and ages they've inhabited the surface of Aetis. Once united by clans and purpose, the humans of Aetis have migrated to all four corners and have melded with the numerous societies, departing from what they once used to be. Having spoken a common ancient tongue, their language and dialects are tied to their homelands. Terosi, Caressian, Sunite, and Nerosi. Uh, as a human, you get an ability score of a plus two, uh, to one ability score and a plus one to another, or plus one to three ability scores. Uh, they reach adulthood in late teens and live just over a century. They vary wildly in height from barely five feet to well over six feet. Uh, their walking base walking speed is 30. They get versatility, which is proficiency in one skill of your choice. They get their uh, their common tongue, and then they get one extra language of their choice. And then, as a base human, you get primeval connection. With the destruction of the human star-blessed tree, the humans of the world have a unique sense that is available only to them. You can smell the presence of magic in the air. 
It does not reveal its location or school, but you are alerted when being within its vicinity. Baraku. Hello, CD. Apologies for not catching the previous stream. It's been a bit busy. Alas, I'm here now, especially after I read Inspiration of Races. Hope to lend a spark of creativity. Thank you, Baraku. Uh, burnt to death and was strangled by a, a heat metal infused robot doll. That's fucking terrifying. About, would it be odd if your race is unlock a fourth? Uh, uh, let's get, let's get through them first to get their baseline abilities down. And then maybe, maybe I can look at like a scaling ability that levels up as you level up type deal. Uh, as well as being a human, you'll pick one of the below options to gain more features depending on your lineage. Uh, on the Kanka page is where I, I, I fed it a little bit more flavor. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, Terosian human. To be Tarosian is to be of stout body and brave of heart, throwing yourself against the dangers of the realm for the good of all. Tyros is built upon the stories of heroes when the land united under the uh, under the boughs of Thorlin, the silver flame, and repelled the shadows which sought to consume everything. In times past, it is said that every man and woman lent their strength to the founding of what Tyros is. But today, Tyros faces complacency. The sword, sir, uh, the sword has been replaced with a shovel as the people of the land serve their lords, cowering from the darkness. Every Tarosian possesses the spark of a hero within them. This is shown in their unique abilities and the traits you choose when you pick this lineage. Uh, leaders of men. Tyros is built upon the legend of brave knights and righteous heroes who've battled against the darkness of the realm. When an ally scores a critical failure on a d20 roll, you can expand your reaction to choose to inspire them, granting them an inspiration to use on their next roll, any roll that requires a d20. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Uh, might makes right. To be Tarosi is to come from durable and heroic lineages, but not all realize the potential that lies within them. You gain proficiency in athletics. If you're already proficient in athletics or gain proficiency of athletics later on, you instead gain expertise. As well, you gain uh, proficiency with one martial weapon of your choice. It's not listed here, but it's on the Kanka page. Uh, Legacy of Conflict. Tyros has endured tragedy upon tragedy, and yet withstands the onslaught of time and tyranny. As an action, shout to the heavens. All allies within 30 feet radius who are not deafened receive temporary hit points equal to 1d6 plus your level. Doing so again requires a long rest. Caressian humans. To be Caressian is to be cunning and sharp-witted, holding yourself with a sense of importance that rivals even some elves. Caruso belongs to the Elven Empire, and the humans whom call the Eastern Continent home must compete to be recognized and seen in this land. These humans strive for greatness and seek to push themselves, lest they be forgotten and cast aside amongst those who have lived several of their lifetimes. Every Caressian possess possesses a keen mind that flourishes in the right situation. This is shown in their unique abilities and traits when you choose the Caressian lineage. To be a Caressian human, you get the Light of Eloine. Ah... Uh, Either by uh, either being raised under the light of the golden flame or having lived in Karasa long enough, you have gained the dark vision trait out to a range of 30 feet. Uh, diplomacy. Caressians participate in local politics of the Elven Empire frequently, serving in courts, juries, or even some rare instances, nobility. You gain proficiency in persuasion. If you're already proficient in persuasion or gain proficiency in persuasion later on, you instead gain expertise. Uh, and then they get shift the battlefield. Caressians are no stranger to wartime and strategy surrounding it. It's not uncommon to have served a number of years in the legions of the Empire. As an action, you can command a willing creature. Uh, if the target can hear you, the target can use their reaction to move up to their speed or make one weapon attack. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Uh, Sunite Humans. To be a Sunite is to be bathed in the brilliance of the sun since birth. 
touched by the cool waves of the Sudali Ocean and nourished by the bountiful harvest of the Garden Wall. Tuna's connection to the elemental plane is shown through all who call it home, affording them endurance and sweltering heat and nimbleness unseen by many others. Sunites pride themselves on their long-standing traditions and culture that has been unshaken since its creation, with beautiful festivals and holidays that fill the land with color. Every Sunite is an expressive soul unburdened by the shackles of judgment. This is shown in their unique abilities and traits when you choose the Sunite lineage. How about if I do this? <laughs> uh, Desertborn. The sun-bathed landscape of Suna is a harsh to most outsiders. Uh, but those who are born into it, you'll find a comfort with the sun at your back. Uh, you are acclimated to extreme heats and have advantage on saving throws against the taking fire damage. Uh, so the extreme heat is a weather condition that uh, that pretty much incurs exhaustion when you travel through it or has like a has like a building like exhaustion check. So uh, Sunai humans do not need uh do not need to make those checks if it comes to extreme heat uh fleet of foot those who call suna home find that they uh, they need to be swift when traveling beyond the garden wall evading the oh no no that's right i didn't adjust it for this one i adjusted it for the kanka one uh dancer's heart those who call suna home find that you need to be swift when traveling beyond the garden wall evading the numerous entities that prowl the wastes your movement speed is increased to 40 feet. As well, you gain proficiency in performance. Escape Artist. Elusive and nimble on their feet, the natural dexterity of Sunites shines when they're challenged by others. You have advantage on strength, athletics, or dexterity acrobatics checks to make to escape from being grappled. Uh, and finally, Neurosi Humans. To be Neurosi is to be relentless in life and fearless in death, a people whose every waking moment is threatened by the frigid peaks of the north, eager to snuff out the warmth of their soul. Neurosi are a prideful people who value strength and martial prowess above all else, seeking great honors and feats of strength and bloody raids, conquering the weak and feeble warmlanders of Adis. Every Neurosi possesses a raider within them, living to fight and fighting to live. This is shown in their unique abilities and traits when you choose the Neurosi lineage. Warrior of the Frozen North. The harsh wilds of the Frozen North make you a fierce warrior, fighting with a fury never before seen. When you take the dash, uh, you can take the dash action as a bonus action. When you do so, gain a number of temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. You can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, regaining all expended uses on a long rest. Uh, Ice Heart. Born into the wilderness is one thing, but to survive in it is another. Something seldom few can do. You are far more resilient than those uh, than those of the harsh landscape. You have resistance to cold damage and are acclimated to extreme colds. Marauder. Uh, your people are incredible smiths, capable of forging powerful weapons and armor from the weakest of metals. As well, your shallow vessels strike fear into the heart of any trader who sees their sails. You gain proficiency in blacksmith's tools and water vehicles. If you already possess proficiency in one of these skills or gain proficiency in this skill later on, you instead gain expertise. And that is the uh, the four base humans for Adis. Is Alaric Tarosi or the last one? He's a half elf, um, but he would be half Tarosi because his mother is Tarosian. His father is an elf. Mm 
Mm, I see. Very human. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm really digging the vibes of the Tarosians. Same. I made a actor to sort of test out what like a level one fighter would be as a Tarosian using standard array and uh, the bonuses that are afforded to you. So as a as a level one fighter, uh, I have 13 hit points, 16 strength, 13 dex, 16 con, 12 int, 10 wisdom, 8 charisma. Uh, he knows common and dwarvish. He has a passive perception of 12. He has an 18 armor class because of chain mail and shield. Uh, and then he has a long sword, a hand axe. He has the fighting style protection. He has leader of men and legacy of conflict. So it's a one-time use. He shouts. And uh, everybody gains five temporary hit points as an action. If somebody fails, he uses his leader of men ability. No, it's not a new NPC. <laughs> Actor as in like testing out the abilities. It's one thing to make the abilities. It's another thing to like actually test it out and see if they work. Like how it would look in combat. So I did some mock, some like mock combats with like a group of like little, like little actors versus some goblins. Uh, and the abilities proved to be pretty cool. All right, everybody's full of jokes today, I see. <laughs> Beloved Tarosian fighter NPC. <laughs> Played with the miniatures? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, so now, make the elves page. Elves. A kith. <laughs> Correct. gonna make current human variant players change to their corresponding new type i might i haven't fully considered that yet but some part of me does want to do that for the elves. Uh, tested in battle, they are bladed and deserve to be born into this world. <laughs> Eventually, we'll make a we'll make a retainer type ability type deal. Like Shane will probably get one of these abilities.
Will your elves function like the humans you did to consolidate the disparate elves? Uh, so I have my elf types. I, I was I was trying to figure out if I wanted to split them up as like Tarosian elves and Caressian elves, like break them down the same way. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them an ability that you can choose between depending on being a Caressian elf or a Tarosi elf. Uh, so like arcane studies or uh, like political mind, you know, shit like that. So far, I have high elves, wood elves, drow, and then potentially the question mark beside them as sun elves and moon elves. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the elves. No, no, no. We're not making APCs today, Legion. We're working. <laughs> we're working on. We're working on the races. Are there like wild elves? I think we're gonna I think we're gonna work on that. I think we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> By the elf father's life. We'll work we'll work on them later, Legion. We'll work on them later. I wanna work on the races. <laughs> I imagine there are probably like wild elves. Yeah.
<laughs> oh, please. <laughs> I'm partial to star elves myself. Spent a couple of thousand years hidden trapped in a different dimension. Sometimes during that, they picked up the ghost touch ability for themselves and equipment at night. Hmm. Made a very fun ghost puncher star elf monk for a, a paranormal investigation campaign. Interesting. I just got done converting celestial script to English because my DM loves hiding clues in fantasy languages in his art. That's fucking dope. That's big brain. If at least one of your elves doesn't eat bugs and lick random things, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> I'll think about it. The first creation of the Aranar, the elves of Adius have witnessed the birth and destruction of their homelands, a tragedy seldom few can relate to. Despite this, the elves of the world have found solace and, uh, and comfort in the lands around them, living across the continents and sharing their wisdom with the other creations of the Aranar. The longevity and otherworldly grace affords them knowledge of the past. Powerful wielders. Five evil current. It'll move. How many elves are there in Adis? Great question. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to figure out today. Some part of me is like, I should break it down where there's like, there's the Eastern elves and then there's the Western elves. Start at the core and work for the birds. Yeah, I feel like that's the best way to do it. I think I might do like a, a base elf and then your variant is picking high elf, drow or wood elf and shit like that. Elves have lived so long it could make sense that the culture hasn't drifted as much during the times compared to the ephemerals. Like, well, here's the thing. The, the elves of the east are very like they're my Roman analog, like they're like the emperor of the east has his legions his cohorts it there are like there are like juries and courts there's technology in the east but the elves of the west are more are more like <laughs> are more like tolkien's elves like rivendell and shit like that 
like Elrond half elven and stuff like that. Like those are the the elves of the west. The elves of the east are more are are more uh, Roman in their appearance. I would do something like that, Legion, but I've already I've already expressed that like Tarosian there are Tarosian high elves. I also don't want to name them like high elf, wood elf. I want to give them actual names. <laughs> Raised up, intoxicated of. Uh, was there an Eastern Elven equivalent to Julius Augustus Marius, some uh, significant leader that shaped them into this? Yes, very much so. Um, I don't have the analog specifically for his father, but Vathomir Aldeos is uh, Vathomir Aldeos, the Viper of Caruso, is the Emperor of the East, and he is is very much my. Uh, he is very much my <laughs> my like closest tie to like some of the conquerors of Rome. Does Aedas have Wendigos? Uh, yes. The the party fought a Wendigo once. Really testing my li my loyalties and priorities in today's stream. <laughs> Sorry, I again like I have I have my I, I have my inspiration right now. I'm trying to like focus on it. I appreciate everybody wanting to do multiple things today, but I came in with the intent of making races today. 
So I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. How about the Western and the Eastern and Western differences are in part previously existing cultural groups, religions, etc., becoming dominant? Hmm. Elves. That's right. Like perhaps the Sun Elves are the militaristic ordered ones, so now most common in the East, but they still have moon, wood, whatever. If somebody wants to play one, it would just be rare. Hmm. Okay. We could make the Eastern Elves the Sun Elves. I'd be fine with that. Hello. I'm here to lurk. I won't interrupt your creative flow. <laughs> Except for the elves. I fucking love elves. Very good. Trying to come up with names for them, because I don't want it to just be like a high elf. I want it to be like a... Like you are a, a, a blank elf. You are a, a such and such elf. Hmm... I found a lot of splits and harmonies start as a misunderstanding, but even if essentially agreeing, stubbornness causes one or both sides to basically double down against the other. Hmm. Petricorian, welcome. First time chatter, hello.
You can name them after their patron deity if they have one. Ooh. Veradosian elves. Interesting question for you. Did you have any trouble when you started building your world? Absolutely. I'm suffering a sort of creative paralysis. Yes, a thousand percent. Um, what I found is that I uh, I was trying to do too much at once. So I eventually stopped and I, I took a step back and I started picking out small things in my setting to start working on. Like, uh, I, I tried making like the world continent at like the world map at first. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> maybe maybe I start with like a town and see how like a town works and then start building a town and sort of figuring out how the town flows and then sort of building out from there. Um, I did the same thing with the gods. I sort of figured out like a theme for one god and then sort of played around that theme and then started sort of building the others off of it. So just uh, take take slow, like take it slow. Don't don't try and do everything at once. You will burn yourself out. So what kind of inspiration are you looking for for like renaming the sub races? Uh, I mean, I've stolen from Tolkien before. <laughs> <laughs> Tolkien has a great way of naming things. Like if you just want to do something different than a high elf, but still want to do it based on their general society, you could do like the Grandor elf or something like that. Hmm. Croissant. <laughs> Croissant. You remember the first thing you fully fleshed out? Uh, yes. Uh, here, hold on. It was Actually, how thick Tiamat's butt was. A Tiamat wasn't a thing back then. Back in 2016? Absolutely not. Hmm. Uh, the first thing I fully flushed out was how the world was made. <laughs> that was the first thing I dedicated all of my attention and energy to when I was trying to do too much. I just took a step back and then focused on how the world was made. After that, I made the calendar. And then after that, I made some holidays. Because I was like, I was just sort of sticking with the theme. And then when I realized that there weren't a lot of holidays or a lot of things that were unique, I was like, I need holidays for gods. And I started making my gods. So one thing at a time. God, I'm just stealing from Tolkien. I'm kind of an RR myself. <laughs> I have a word in Elvish that translates to children of deity. Hmm. You do something to about the drow and about east and west took turns bullying the cave elves. Ah! I, I've i already sort of discussed the uh, the sort of changes I'm making to the, to the drow with a player. So we're going to get that knocked out as well. Waves. Hi, it's me. I'm the player. Stabs myself. <laughs> The other thing that comes to mind for culture games is virtues, like honor of the Eastern Sun themed elves, grace of the lunar elves, that kind of thing. Hmm. Are those like titles? What do you think is the most important thing uh, is about your setting? <laughs> uh. The most important thing about my setting? Uh, you 
want me to answer from an outside perspective? Yeah, go for it. Like pulling me the most atmosphere. You have top-notch atmosphere, just like how you describe things, how you set the scene for things. It's fucking... That's more of like a DM style thing, but also like that's inherently the world around you. But like if the at like your atmosphere is mwah. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> like if a world doesn't get you immersed in it and you're not like it's it's easy to get pulled out of the game if you're not immersed or like you don't feel that atmosphere. I love it. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I, I think because I'm my own worst critic, I can't answer that question, Presper. Like, like atmosphere wasn't a thing that came to my mind at all. I was like, maybe my gods, but I was like, no, nah, not, not my gods. Uh, maybe... Maybe my magic? Nope, not my magic either. <laughs> so I think what he's what he's asking is like, what is the one thing that makes your setting your setting? Like, if you removed it, it just wouldn't feel the same. Oh. What could I take out that would setting that much? The issue is that I've I've borrowed so much from so many IPs that everything I'm like, yeah, if I take that out, uh, <laughs> it, it becomes a little less Tolkien. It becomes a little less Warhammer. It becomes a little less Darkest Dungeon. Like, even my bad guys, like the big bad guys right now, the Iron Court, are based around the cult in Darkest Dungeon. I would say the monsters are what make my setting. And if I took if I took the monsters out and just replaced them with like bog standard D&D &D monsters, the setting wouldn't be the same. You wouldn't get the same interactions that the parties had with like Onwin, the the Lady of Morning who was a banshee. You wouldn't get Loch Lyra, the Sun Killer Matriarch, who was a harpy reskin. I feel like if you took away the monsters, you would lose a lot of what gives the world its its form. His self-insert, yes. Me. <laughs> There's a certain tone I've noticed. Might just be tearless, but there is a rally against the dark sort of feel. That is very much a Tarosian thing. Is it weird that I have done that before, though? A self-insert OC in a, in a campaign? I think everybody does it at least once. I ran a one shot where it was actually uh, there was an NPC and it was actually named Summer and they were dressed in modern clothes and <laughs> they were the the only person that could see them was the party. They got to ask three meta questions and then she died. Holy shit. <laughs> like she literally exploded into viscera, but only the party could see said viscera. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> uh, it was it was fun. They got to ask three meta questions, and it was it was pretty fun. <laughs> All right, ask your questions. Oh. <laughs> I 
I said, this is it. You let to, you get to ask me these questions. You get to ask me these questions in character. But then I die. <laughs> you kill me. <laughs> I will die suddenly and violently. I have to die as dramatically as possible. <laughs> Uh, blessing of Halloween. <laughs> DM insert NPC. No, I've I've already taken enough of my like I've been inspired by my own setting, which is such like a fucking narcissistic thing to do, by the way, uh, to like make NPCs in other games and then bring them back to my setting and then make them canon. Don't go on that ego trip. I've seen it go bad. <laughs> like, Vincent is an NPC I made in Conan to run a guild as an admin. I liked him so much that I brought him back. I brought the guild over that I made and made that part of my world. That's where the Slayers come from. Hello. Howdy. I bring the cat. Your guild from what? Conan. Oh. The Slayers Guild. Yeah. Oh shit. I was fucking pong. Make a self insert, but make them absolutely terrible. Just a, a chaos goblin little guy. I've considered that as well. Like it's it's me, but I'm a I'm a decrepit old man. <laughs> Just yelling at people. I, I'm there whenever there's like a like a a break in the meta. <laughs> Goddamn young people! <laughs> I'm talking to that invisible man over there. I whack I somebody with my cane and then I disappear right afterwards. Damn it, boy. Stop talking about all these goddamn magical math rocks you're rolling. <laughs> Where's Marius in Carousel? <laughs> I'm definitely not putting Marius in my setting. That is the the most egregious, like, self-insert. But you played it in Io. Yeah, that's playing in another set. That's me being a character, like me, me being a player, not me being the DM and being like, look at my cool character. I say, holding up, holding up Marius. Look how much fucking cooler he is than the rest of you. Look at Marius. Isn't he neat? I just, character in this I just pictured, I pictured fucking you holding up Marius, like your hands <laughs> under his arms and he's just like, uh, like <laughs> a at, little chibi. <laughs> look at my little guy. I made this. I made this, like the little otter meme where they <laughs> hold up their baby. <laughs> I made this. <laughs> it's me. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. No, I'm the problem. Me. Here's the name I came up with. How many other races are you trying to knock out today? I'm gonna see how long this inspiration holds for. What do you think? If we try not to to ruin the inspiration flow, then. Good name. Although I would stick to single naming. Well, that's fine. I just wanted to have a last name. <laughs> so Lilica. Lilica, yeah. Lilica the Huntress. The slave. What you play in? Is there a Gujarak? No, I haven't put a Gujarak in the world either. We well, have Vincent. 
I do have Vincent, yes. But Vincent came with a guild. Which I have uh, used to great, like, uh, the great effectiveness in my world thus far. Mm, and it's not, not like. Much. Okay, motherfucker. We haven't yet encountered, like, an active slayer. Hopefully soon, though. Look, I'm not saying you did wrong. What Shut I'm up. saying is, Shut there's up. better. I don't want to hear it. Shut up. Oh, man, fuck you. Self inserting. Unimaginative, uninspired, insipid. Yeah, fuck. keep playing some more elves. How about that? Yeah, I was thinking about that. How about. No. <laughs> Mama, what you thinking about doing? Huh? Oh, I hey, don't know. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hello, Brett. Oh, hey, the gamer. What's up? What happened to your microphone? Wait, what? What quiet. happened to my microphone? Wait, what? It's so quiet. How am I? How am I? Oh, I am quiet. Hold up. <laughs> how am I? How did? Wait, maybe. <laughs> hold, hold up. Oh, yeah, there, there we go. go. There, there you is. go. Yeah. How that. dare you? I'm not quiet. Wait a minute. I never I lower said the mic. that. I had to lower the mic down to him so he could speak into it. I oh, never said Brett. that. That was Dang. like a new voice, and then it was Brett again. Are you fucking <laughs> streaming right now? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you? Oh, <laughs> out of gamer. He's like, listen, I got break for pipe dreamers. I'm taking a break. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got pipe dreamers in 20 minutes. I am streaming, but everything's muted. So That's like, amazing. yeah, I, yeah, I'm just. <laughs> what can I say? I'm just. Uh, Thanks for I'm, the session earlier, homie. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm a professional. What can I say? Man, take it where you can, you know, just fucking relax sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go. I'm just relaxing. Just, just wait. Understandable. Big pog to mm -hmm. to uh, white slate dragons. Oh, thank you. Big pog. Bro. Absolutely, brother. <laughs> oh I was uh, I was at the paint store, and one of the the people at the paint store near me is a huge D and D fan. I was just gushing about it. <laughs> Aww, thank you so much. <laughs> we were talking because it takes a while to mix paint, so we were just talking about D and D, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> I know somebody who made their own model." <laughs> <laughs> you say it like that, just very yeah, pretty much. I was very like, <laughs> "Well, I know someone." <laughs> in, in public, I'm either super shy and don't want to talk to anyone, don't talk to me. Or mm -hmm. we find a common ground, and I'm like, ooh, let me dump my dice on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it just roll let me everything. Throw up everything. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's still, we're doing good. We are 13 backers away from 1,000 backers, which is it's fucking great. It yep. is. It's, oh it's, my it's God. insane. But also, I told you so. Yeah. Shut up, crowd. <laughs> also, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Real and true. He did, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> "Silly, that's not. That's not. We gotta set <laughs> realistic expectations." Was it looking at five minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was four. <laughs> it, was, it was four. <laughs> it was four minutes. It, it was four. <laughs> and then, and, and then we doubled it in thirty. <laughs> so it's been. My God. I don't. I. And it was. It's very weird to me because I'm just like. You know, I'm I'm constantly in the mindset of like, yeah, like I get, I like I think I do all right, but I don't think you know I deserve that much credit. And then I see numbers like this, and I'm like, yeah, mm, that, no, you do so, deserve it. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I I see numbers like this, and I go, um, I mean, something's obviously something like my brain can't connect the two. You know? <laughs> I think one of my something's favorite wrong. things is mm. the fish dice. Oh the yeah, fishies. I'm gonna put them in my mouth, dude. Um, <laughs> not, not to, not, not trying to shill on Crown Stream, um, but if we do get to 100k, 100k, we will also be making a dice tray. Ooh. It's gonna, and it's gonna, it's a foldable dice tray, and what it's gonna be, is gonna be a, like a little, on the base, it's gonna be like a pond of water, and then surrounding it is gonna be like the, pretty much like the planes art from the sample PDF. So when you fold it up, it's like you're you're rolling into the into the pond like you're fishing with your little fish dice. So that'll be really cool. That's good as fuck. What I'm saying uh, is, if you don't douse mine in fish oil, I'm gonna be pissed when I get them. Listen, I when can't wait. 
when when I because we're probably bootstrapping all this, so I'll make sure yours is I'll I'll put I'll put a little fish oil uh in the oh, uh, case fuck itself. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna I'll, put that shit all in my mouth. Although I want probably a big D20 with like a little fish inside it and it's like filled with water and I can shake it. That's uh that's the koi dice. It's not got it's not filled with water though, but it does have a it's a koi pond dice. A big one. A big yeah, dice. And it, it, it's a big dice. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll get that. <laughs> I'm gonna put so much dice in my mouth, I'm gonna choke. Ah, on Summer, I choke on the dice. Summer, when I send yours <laughs> out, I'll just send it with a thing of fish oil because I don't know how yeah. the post office is gonna appreciate. It. Like, this is a really oily package. What's going on here? No, why is it so stinky? Oh my god! I'm just gonna shake her. That way, it rolls the dice out of her mouth. She is <laughs> oh my a god. <laughs> Like a Yahtzee cup? Yes! Girl, I'll Shit. be your Yahtzee cup. It's, so, it's fine. She's my you dice roller. You said that out loud. I just yeah. wanted Oh, did I? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, not you. I'm talking about Summer being like, I'll, yeah, I'll be yeah. your Yahtzee cup. I'm sorry. I love her. I'll do anything for her. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> That's my girl. Girl. We're gonna do hard drugs together. <laughs> Eventually. Uh huh, what? In game, in game, in game. Disclaimer. Uh huh, what? In game. What? What? Huh? Bro, just let me steal her. They don't need her. Who? Are you asking uh -huh. me? Yeah, just let Why me steal her. They don't need her. Like, you, we have a cool little bug man you can be friends with. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't believe he did that today. Did what now? What did that I do? Poor, that poor bug. <laughs> Our Wait. Bug boy. What, what did I do? Pin, Pinchy's, a, Pinchy's day out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you said take it to the ship. So Pinchy's going to take it to the ship. I rolled a fate dice, it rolled a six, which meant he was going to do the worst possible thing he could. And then he did. He absolutely, he immediately did. We sent our bug to bring a VR chair back to our ship and he killed some guards on the way. <laughs> uh -oh. Here I go killing again. Yeah. I got the, I got the chair. We did get the chair. That's pretty neat. We got VR. Uh, no, you stopped him oh, yeah. before. <laughs> before so no, you did it. He left it in the middle of the street because he's like, someone's going to steal this. Oh, That's okay, fine. I'm we coming have back. Another one. We have another one. <laughs> you just take the other VR chair. God damn. God damn. God damn. God damn. But but yes, my show, my stream is currently on pre-show and I'm currently hanging out with you guys in Crown Stream. Cause uh, I'm a baller like that. Yeah, fuck him. He's a boss ass bitch. Isn't that connect? I'm a bomb ass bitch. <laughs> Do high elves in your setting not get fey ancestry, Brett? Say, huh? What now? Do high elves in your setting not get fey ancestry? Uh, oh, they could. We just we have different elves. We have different. I know. Types I'm of looking elves. at them. Yeah. So what? yes. Are you yeah. talking about my elves? That yes. You have Dark Vision, Language of the Wind, and Deitic Attunement, and they don't have Fey Ancestry, but the Umbral Elves yes. have the equivalent yes. of it in Veiled Mind. Well, there you go. I point a gun at. Why? What do you mean? <laughs> point, what do you mean? Explain. Point? I gave you other shit. What's the problem? I didn't. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My elves are different. I don't know what you want. <laughs> Did I answer your question? That suffice for yes. you? <laughs> it wasn't even an answer, so okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was, I didn't feel like giving it to them. Oh, I just decided not to, I guess. I can make an elf just for you if you'd like. It has fey ancestry. Be boring. Damn. Damn. Wow. I can't believe that happened. Round, if you take away my fan fey ancestry, I'll scream! He <laughs> won't. He loves it. <laughs> That's what we learned today. He loves it. 
It's just such like a like a staple that I was very surprised when going through your races that only one type of elf gets it. Yeah, fuck staple. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Fair enough. Forge your own destiny. Fuck staples. But how am I gonna keep my papers together then? All right. Boo that man. Boo. Boo. Damn. Oh my gosh, Drake Bell is missing. They didn't take you two seconds, Summer. What? Drake Bell from Drake and Josh, he's missing. Oh yeah, he is missing. Oh. Yeah. What? what yeah, he's trip? missing. Yeah, he's missing. Oh no. Yeah. Um, oh my god. That's not yeah. good. Yeah, he's missing. Oh my god. Isn't he the one that was like guilty of doing bad stuff? What? Um, Fucking like, Nickelodeon so. star isn't though at this point. Yeah. I don't know. Isn't he like the one talking about Drake? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, you guys gotta pay attention to the real news. Christine Weston Chandler got bailed out of jail. I don't know Who's who that? that is. There were oh, some okay. allegations. Oh wait, Chris Chan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I did know. Yeah, we did. Out of jail. I learned that I learned that from a um from a cartoon. I was oh. making a joke about Sonic Chew, because I guess that's his like OC or something. Yeah. And like during while he was making that, he ended it with like, This isn't a joke, he's really out of jail. Like I this happened like right oh, when no. like right when I was making this cartoon. Like, what the fuck? What do we do? I don't understand. <laughs> I will be leaving here momentarily. Oh, no, fuck them. No. Sorry. No. That Are they all there? Are they all the on time? I've got a responsibility to my players. You didn't answer the question. Are they on time? We're your players. I know, <gasps> but I'm not, I'm not running a game with you right now. <gasps> you could be. <laughs> Soon. La when when, lesser, when Spire lesser when Spire of Euclid ended, it was the first time I had ever felt bad about a game ending. Because Momo really likes to twist the fucking knife when you're not DMing her anymore. I was really sad. <laughs> she... I was really sad. I couldn't slap Hayo's butt anymore. She. I was really, really sad. So we <laughs> were wrapping up, and she said, "I'm not leaving the voice call because if I leave I the voice call, it's over." And she did it. <laughs> she did. I remember. I had to go make dinner, I and I was like, "I was like, oh no." <laughs> Dude, Look, I, remember... I was disconnected. Someone disconnected me. No. No one disconnected you. That's that's bullshit. No one no, disconnected no, no, you. It's true. No, it's real. not. That sounds ah uh, lies, I'm lies saying. and slander. I can't believe you disconnected saying. her, Brett. Because I would be the only one that could disconnect her. Oh that's why I'm saying god, it's it bullshit. Was you. Wait a second. Oh my god. I think I think I might have been able to disconnect. It was you. you. I oh, choose so to blame you. Okay. You. Why would you do this, Brett? I don't know. Some say. Some I'm, say I'm she's still, still there. In there. <laughs> she's to still this there. Day, yeah. some say. Dude, I remember how you sad Naomi there. was when, like, on the on the session zero of <laughs> In the Shadows Breach, when you were like, "Yeah, Nixie's dead." She was like, "What?" <laughs> Poor like, Naomi, dude. I was. Some say I'm still in there today. I I mean I, I yeah. It was a thousand years ago. What the fuck? <laughs> what did she expect? I don't know elves. I don't know elves. I mean, I did the same thing with freaking Shadow's Breach. How are you in Shadow's Breach and in here right now? Because if I don't leave there, it's not over. <laughs> How are you in two voice channels? What do you mean? What's I've never left. I'm a figment <laughs> of your imagination. I'm here always. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm never leaving. Mm -mm -mm. Season two's coming, bud. We're gonna have a season two. It's not the end. Momo, what's your blankie at now? It's a blankie plus five. She's also and got, a I got a pillow. Yeah. And pillow? Oh my god. I know. I'm fucking bald. She comfy. 
right now. Yeah, where's my oh. pillow? Where's my? Can I wait? Can wait? 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 Can I get I gave a you, I gave you a gun. You don't get okay, anything that's else. Fair. I, have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I don't get to be comfy. I just have sorry, a gun. Summer. I'm afraid you having the ability to just end my career at a moment's notice is just all I can give you at this Gosh, moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Damn, dude, if I don't get that fish oil. If I yeah, get yeah. Fish oil, I'm coming for you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm fucking Wait, saying. God, damn, Wait here. Instead of me coming for the fish oil, you're just going to hear this in like the middle of the night. Oh, Brett. Mm hmm. Where's my like best Brett? You're gonna Where get is it? You're getting it soon. Relax. It's coming like out that. next okay. update. That's coming scary. out next update. Next update, I get Beth. I didn't hear you. She She's said. out there, dude. I was just fucking. I still like that. Is the preset on my Go XLR is Talas's voice permanently? You like to think she's still out there. I God, I hope she's not out there for the sake of other people. I hope she's not. If she heard about the Cosma baby coming back to Io. Damn, she'd be so happy right now. Yeah, it's Jesus, cause... she's partying somewhere. Hmm. All right, I gotta go. How fucking Good. dare you? Goodbye. Goodbye. Enjoy your game, homie. Thanks, Kill man. Them. Kill them today. Thanks I don't care for... what they're doing. Kill them. Thanks for inviting me over while I was sitting here <laughs> staring course. at the monitor. Always. Appreciated it. Uh... Okay, bye. 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 Who was that guy? <laughs> Who gave I that guy permission? Why do we keep letting Jesus. that raccoon in here? <laughs> who keeps letting? Who keeps leaving the doggy door open? <laughs> I want to steal. Uh, I don't know what setting it's from, but I really like the uh, the Valinar name for the the elves. What is this? What's this from? Wayfinder's guy. Oh, it's from Eberron. I want to steal the names from Eberron. Then do it. it. Do it. Yes. <laughs> Screaming at me. I heard it. <laughs> I heard the scream. Who's screaming? What? There's a bit of screaming at me. Who's screaming? Brett. Oh. Where did he scream at you at? He was yelling at me. Where? In the air. In the other Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he join the Into the Shadows Breach and yell at yeah. you? <laughs> Get out of there! Wait, how are no. you in two Discords at once? What do you mean? I never left. Oh my gosh, you were telling the truth. Stealing is bad? No, stealing is based. Stealing's only bad if you get caught. I don't know if you know this. Uh, Tay, uh, I steal a lot of things. <laughs> Behold my <laughs> my system of stolen goods. Uh oh, Tay's a snitch. Look upon the world and see fourth edition. <laughs> I don't like that. What? Don't like what? Mm -hmm. Don't like your maniacal giggling. That's right. <laughs> hun, 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 hun. I've got a paint. Ugh. I think I'm gonna finish that up tonight after I have my D and D raid. You got a what? paint? Paint. I've got to do all the trim painting. Oh, I thought you guys did that. No, we took the tape off of the top parts, like the ceiling, and I'm just gonna go in with the touch-up brush. Oh, the black paint, yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna do the green touch-up and then the white touch-up. To make all the oh. lines straight and stuff. Okay. It's just gonna be very tiring, and I'm short, so... Shorter than other people in my house, mind you. I'm not actually short. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to get the big I'll... ladder out of the fucking garage. I'll put you on my shoulders, and then we can equal the height of one normal person. I'll, I'll put you on my shoulder. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. 
she lives that way if the lines get messed up i can blame you yeah that's fair <laughs> i'd blame me too <laughs> Alright, uh, crowned. I have a question about the, un the underdark elves, or whatever you're gonna call them. Mm -hmm. Are they gonna inherently get under common, since that's the mostly spoken language down there, or is it just gonna be elvish? Uh, you can write common and elvish. Yeah, base drow don't. Uh, get under common. You have to take something else to get under common, but since it is the like common language of the Underdark, I was just wondering. I would like to learn Baybissel. What? Baybissel. No. It's like a bissel, but it like it's on a. The, the, yeah. Oh my god. What? <laughs> it's the language of the sucker bus. Yeah, what the fuck? Come on. Interesting. Undercommon has an used. elven script. Oh. This is bullshit. I'm never gonna get bitches now. Never get bitches. <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought that Undercommon originated from the Drow in some edition, but then they changed that. It's all your fault I don't get bitches. That's right. Then it's they my didn't... fault. Thank you. At least you admit it. It takes a big man. I'll uh, I'll look at it. I, I need to figure out languages in my setting anyway. So. Oh, you can feel free to like say no as well. Like it's just a uh, like a tag, and I already did stuff to get under common as him. I just want to know like as a whole if that's like a common thing that the people speak down there. Or if they would like speak Elvish more, if they would speak under common more. Hmm. Just like as a society. I have my session to run and uh, have my party to explore the Lost Temple of Stars. Wish me luck. Good luck, Skulltron. Enjoy, brother. Good luck, good luck. What do you mean, Legion? Stars? Lower Elves? Hmm. Hmm. Are you gonna come? Yeah, he just switches. It's fine. Oh yeah, the Ashari. I remember that. The Ashari. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's taken from the Ashari and Elves. It's what Mercer calls his uh, Wood oh, Elves. Oh, god damn it. He calls them the, uh, <laughs> the Ashari. Fuck! But that was to being... be fair, it's, it's Ashari is what he calls them. So Sharian. <laughs> it's still different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not creative at all! Fucking Mercer strikes again! <laughs> god damn it, Mercer! <laughs> One time! <laughs> no, that's like a keyless, like a wood elf clan. Oh, fuck. The that's Ashari. right. The Ashtar. Yeah, the Ashari or whatever. The the, the yep. elemental elves. Yep. What elven deities do you have so far? I only have one. Though they generally share a lot of the same, like similar deities, like Elowin and Sariel. Uh, but the elves have Barados, the queen of light and the mother of elves. Yeah. Cute. I'm gonna go get some mac and cheese really quick. Nice. Okay. I look, I look forward to seeing you flesh these out more because I want to know the elf lore because I'm playing a fucking <laughs> elf. <laughs> I like Sharian a lot. 
I think I'm going to keep Charian as one of them. I throw in the Halist Halisterium. It almost sounds like machinery. Yeah, I like Sharian. I'm going to keep Sharian as one of them. I like Valinar. There's something about Valinar that I like. I know it's from Eberron, but I, I still want to take it. Just There's something about Valinar that just sits well with me. The Aaron I, I'm like, hmm... I like it, but I'm not sold on it. Alisterion? Alisterion elves? Hmm. Apostrophe in there. Noldor? <laughs> Isn't that actually like just Tolkien? Noldor? <laughs> the Noldor are elves. Like a kind of elf. Mm. What kind? They were. They were the second elves that landed. Those were the skilled blacksmiths and knowledge seekers, like blacksmiths and scholars, I believe. Oh. You monkeys will type something out you like eventually, my list. <laughs> I appreciate it. I do appreciate all of the help that you guys put towards making this world. Air and I from Eberron have cool lore to steal as well. What do they like? Not above stealing. Celebrimbor? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Celebrimbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Positive energy on death nation. What? If it requires magic, is it really technology? Elnorn. Good aligned evil or good aligned elven guardian liches. Holy shit. Holy shit, apparently the Noldor were on average seven feet tall. Nice. Holy shit. On average. <laughs> yeah, on average, dude. Love that. I'm actually gonna Google this. Ooh, oh, oh Finwe was the first king of the Noldor, which is probably Fingolfin related. But yeah, he was. He was the second son of Finwe. Okay, let's see how tall this motherfucker. Oh I my God, he was huge. Raid. You have to what? I'm going to said I must away to raid. We're gonna kill a big chicken. Oh, okay, homie. Good luck. I'm gonna kill a Make big plenty of nuggies out of it. Chicken and get ahead of the curve. Nice. We got her to one point two percent on our last poll last week, so we're gonna get her to fucking dead this week. Good shit. I believe. The chicken will die. The chicken will die. 
no, we and we have... will make nuggets out of it. Hell yeah. Do you have elves of the east? Do you have elves of the west? Yes. Do you have elves of the west? No. Fuck. What do you think of me changing drow to Sharian? I like it. Uh, are you including the Shadar Kai in your setting? Oh, God. I don't know those yet. Are like, those are like the Raven Queen's elves. Yeah, I know. The Raven Queen in my was, setting has lost a lot of power, so probably not. Okay, I was just going to say, if you were going to add the Shadar Kai, I would say Sharian is a little too close to their base name. But if yeah. you're not adding them in period, then... I think I think because of her, her sort of lack of power and sort of being usurped as the God of Death or losing a lot of her power as the God of Death, um, the Shadar Kai are probably there acting as like... Acting as like defenders, pretty much. And I'll probably change the name anyway. I'm just going to be dumb though, and you're going to have to remind me that that's their, their new name because I will just keep calling them Drow because I'm stupid. That's fine. I, I imagine Sharian is what they call themselves. And then like the human sort of name for them is Drow. The Under Elves, the Elithar, no, the Unseen Ones. Sharian sounds related to the goddess of darkness from the Forgotten Realms, Shar. Hmm. Isn't she like mischief and all of that shit? Like trickery, mischief. Because doesn't the, the cleric that you meet, isn't she in, in Baldur's Gate 3, isn't she a cleric of Shar? She's a trickster domain cleric. Doesn't here, we're unseen because we're shy. Can be called Shadow Elves as an insult? Hmm. Sharians or Shadow Elves. She's Darkness, Goddess of the Night, Lady of Pain. Oh. Oh. I Bit see. Different. <laughs> it's just a little. A little different. We stand a sadist queen. Oh my god. Oh. She's just one of the first two gods along with her sister Saloon. Oh yeah, I think I borrowed stuff from Saloon for my my goddess Samira. No sun elves or snow elves in your world? Are is snow elf one of the like a, a fucking playable race? Don't believe so. What you eating, Summer? Mac and cheese. Nice. And uh, an egg salad sandwich. They might be talking about the Eladrin. Oh. Oh, the Eladrin. I had considered the Eladrin as well. I was thinking, I was... I was probably going to steal from the Eladrin and blend them across all of the elves. Do it. Because I sort of like the face step ability, but I like I like that each elf has like a different variation of the face step. I will probably make like a northern, like a wilderness elf just because I also sort of like uh, I sort of like the Bosmer and shit like that. The the motherfuckers that just eat people. <laughs> I think they're pretty neat. You could make them a combination of the elves from Divinity where when they eat flesh, they see visions and it's like haruspicy, but uh, with cannibalism. Hmm. So it's like ritualistic in some sense. It's not just mindless eating, but rather it's part of their culture, right? It's how they honor the dead and their memories and share them and whatnot. That could be fun. 
What make drow drow? Obviously, it's service to loth. It's spiders. What else? Being underground. Being one of the few races on the underground that have a kind of society, civilization. They thrive in those biomes, right? They stick to darkness. They don't come out during the day to the surface if they have to. Slavery. Hmm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Cannon Drow are. Oof. They're also very religious. A lot of slavery, a lot of uh a lot of girl power. They're a very advanced cultured and isolationist society. They're very attentive to racial hygiene as well. They hate their own men. To a degree. They don't hate their own men. They just, they have an inverse of like societal roles where men tend to do the more menial and unimportant roles. I remember them being treated as like straight up second class citizens. Like they are, the males are like treated like dirt, kind of, unless they were like specifically talented in certain things. I mean, would you say that women in our society are treated like dirt? Do you want me to answer that? <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's it comes down to perspective in a sense. With the drow, at least, right? With the drow. <laughs> so yeah, I imagine that a lot of male drow feel like they're treated like trash. And they definitely see a lot of, like, unfair treatment when compared to the women. But uh, I don't think they're second-class citizens. They just don't stand to inherit. They don't. They don't get to join the church. They even if they share, like, let's say there there's a female and a male, and they're both the same rank in the army as officers. The woman's station is still above the man's station, even if they're both sergeants. So to we're speak. we're talking about like purely canon. I swear to God, I remember reading somewhere that like they straight up said like males are treated like second class citizens. We're talking fifth edition, right? I, I believe so. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find out where I saw it because this is again this is canon lore and the canon lore sucks. Well, it's been varying from edition to edition at least. So we are. Let's see. Street under culture for fifth IE. We could split it up that way, Agatine. Where like we split it up based on court. So like you have the summer elves to the east. Hmm. Hmm. The Elves of Winter to the West or some shit. I need to look at specifically what the Eladrin. I'm going to do some shit like that. Because I, I sort of I like the idea of the like them being completely different types of elves where like the elves of the East are di wildly different from the elves of the West. Even their wood elves are different from the 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 wood elves of the West. Um, like the the high elves of the East have a lot of courts, a lot of politics, a lot of things like that. Um, and I sort of wanted to make like I, I think making the wood elves uh, over there be more like. Uh, What am I thinking of? Almost like the night elves. Make the wood elves of the east like the night elves, like the Kaldori. And then the elves of the west, the 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 western elves are more like Tolkien's elves, like the elves of Rivendell. Uh and the wood elves are more like the Bosmer.
So you may be a wood elf, but if you're a wood elf in the east, your your style of like nature and understanding of the world is completely different from a wood elf of the west. I think we're going to have a lot of elf sub races. <laughs> I think that's what's going to yeah. happen. I think we're going to have a lot of elf sub races. Hippies? Oh my god. <laughs> it's elves all the way down. Like, I'm glad we got some, some flavor to the humans. Ah. Or, like, humans are, are more than just, like, humans are broken down based on where they're from. And I sort of want to do that for the elves, but I'm like, a lot. Maybe four main region elves, then just sub races of those four elf groups. Elaborate a little further, Legion. There's a, there are a ton already. You could just have them have similar racials, but have their culture vary. I guess that's fair. That, hmm. Uh, I found a description of their gender role summer, if you want me to read it out. Also, yeah. you were right, for the most part. Uh, yeah, you just put in text chat. So, society-wise, they, uh, they have their roles, but they are treated as trash when it comes to courting and mm. meat finding. Like, men are not even supposed to refuse advances and things like that. They're like cattle. <laughs> Sorry, I'm slightly panicking because I went to a website to like try to look at a drow thing and then I clicked on the website and it tried to auto download something to my computer. Oh god. And I pressed cancel, of course, and immediately left that website and it gave me a little bit of a panic and I'm doing uh, malware searches now really quick. Understandable. Uh -oh. What if there was something in particular out east that they have colonized that area for? Something that makes the elves out there a bit different. Um, I mean, the, the, the reason that the elves, like the, there's a reason that the elves of the East own that continent. Like it is, it is predominantly where the elves were when the world shattered as well. It is where their star bus tree is, Aloween. Like the only difference is that the high elves of that, of the East eventually rose to power by being built upon the ruins of a former uh, wizard king's capital, found the magic there and began using that magic and marched upon the rest of the Eastern continent and basically subjugated it. Got so far that they were burning the Ironwoods, which is the woods that surround uh, Aloween, the Golden Flame, and made the Wood Elves bend the knee and in service to them. Um, I'd say that the Tolkien elves are the Tyrosian elves, as far as I've heard about them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they have they, they have more human-like traits of honor and things like that. And to some degree, they, they're probably traits that they themselves passed on to the humans, but now the humans being more numerous, kind of champion <laughs> in their stead, you know? they were the first, right? The elves came first. Yes, they are the first creation of the Arenar. So they probably received the teachings of them and 
those values and morals before the humans ever did. In fact, they probably shaped societies around them while the humans were still banging rocks together. You know who else comes first? Who? Don't worry about it. Is that as usual? Hey. I hear you got some gains, brother. Hey. Tell me your split, bro. Tell me your split. What? I don't do that. Tell me your it's split. Toxic. Dude, it's so toxic. I don't do barbells, bro. I just get it. Bro. <laughs> I used to do, do like hardcore routines or try to, and it would never work. I've realized that the best thing to do is just to go there, select like five machines you want to do until you're tired, and then do those and then go home. Yeah, but your muscle groups, but your split, or your timing. Yeah, you know, one day hit. I go and I'm like, man, I want to do arms, so I do the arms ones. And the next day I go, I'm like, I want to do legs, so I do the leg ones. And next day I'm like, I want to do everything in the middle and then I select usually do crunches <laughs> right get on blood hunt what <laughs> Ooh, I'll be right back uh oh okay I hope that wasn't malware the trout the drow trojan got in the trojan <laughs> if you will I heard you guys talking about elves. That's right. So they have the base. They have the base wealth, uh, West Elf ASI in general features, and they divided with the three unique features for the sub race instead of building all of them under one elf, because that makes things a hell of a lot trickier. One base elf with an eight, eight sub elf features. Mm. That's a lot of elves. I'm going to work on I'm 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 going to try and put some energy into this the Sharian elves. See if I can get like write out a little bit of the lore of like how Drow came to be. Uh and sort of go from there. Elder Scrolls Drow are the best Drow. I did consider the Dunmer. I was going to say they're not Drow at all. They have 0% Drow. They're, they're the Elder Scrolls Drow, okay? They're not even a little bit like the Drow. Not even nothing. They have nothing from the Drow except, like, a portion of their aesthetic with their skin color, I guess. And, and slavery. Even the hues are different. And okay. they worship demons. But their slavery is different. And they're racist. And the Drow and don't proud. worship demons. I mean, they technically do. Drow, Drow do technically demons. worship demons because Loth is a, a demon. Oh, okay. Never mind. You got me there. <laughs> They're uh, magically attuned. Well, that's just elves. Well, yeah, but I mean, in Elder Scrolls, that's every race. Every race thinks they're the best. I don't know. I would not see them as drow. I think there's other races within the Elder Scrolls that are more drow-like than them. I refer to them as Drow mostly because they're of, well, their aesthetic and also their environment. Because where they live is not the Underdark, but it's a very uh, exotic place like the Underdark. It's a mountainside, you know, like a volcano. I, it's, see, now you're making me upset. I am? They, they live across very many biomes. <laughs> and you're just thinking about Banderfell, and it's upsetting. Yeah. Me. I yeah. am thinking about Vanderfell, you know, yeah, where most of them live. More. That's not where most of them are. 
All right, so I realized that I want Lolf to have an Azara type aesthetic. Azara? Yes. I don't know what that is. Yes, you do. I do? You night elf lover. Oh, you mean a shower from WoW? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, so you mean like pre War of the Ancients, Night Elves, yeah. Decadent Empire? Yeah. Okay. All right. I want, so my, my envisioning right now, this, this little spark of inspiration, is that Loth, uh, pre like her kingdom that she ruled over in the south was taken over when Melor Manir and the Great Worms emerged and they stole Aeor's heart. And in doing so, basically sundered the lands that were her home, forcing her and her people to retreat into the world below, the only place that they could go. And from there, found basically like remnants of Melor Manir, found remnants of the void and began to use it. What if they used to be more moon-like? You know what I mean? Had some physical traits where maybe they thought themselves more beautiful, but then all of those traits sort of receded when they went underground. They changed, kind of mutated. Mm. As well, I want the drow in my setting to be the basically the, the main users of like glintstone magic. Freaks. They're a menace to society. Sarlacc should eat them up. Can't wait. Can't wait to go to the Underdark and see giant marble balls filled with old dudes' faces. <laughs> What's that? I mean, that is what I want, right? Like, there's floating there. I want there to be two types of drow. I want there to be like arcane drow, and I want there to be like occult drow. Like the drow that practice demonology, that sacrifice people to bring Loth back. And I want there to be the other side of the drow that practice glintstone magic. And they're not too mean to males. It'd be more like the, the Kryn dynasty from, uh, from, uh, Exandria. Where they, they practice a lot of arcane magic. They, uh, they are like, they, they work sort of hand in hand with the surface. Not always, but they are, they're more, they're more willing to work with like humans and other elves. Uh, and generally the perception of them is viewed better because they're not the ones summoning demons, right? <laughs> I think the, the matriarch society still fits, but I don't, I think it'd be two different sides where like what the, the occult side sort of treats their, uh, treats like outsiders and their like lesser classes like fodder to sacrifice and then the the arcane side sort of uh, is sort of based more on your merit and skill uh blood versus metal is there any real difference between grave and death yes uh, a big one. A huge, in fact. <laughs> Grave clerics still want you to, to come back. They're all about bringing you back. Death clerics want to fucking kill you. I'm going to put you in the ground. I'm pretty sure death clerics are the ones that focus on a lot of necrotic spells, like vampiric touch, inflict yeah. wounds. Also, from my understanding, they're not, they're not necessarily balanced because they're... They were originally more created for NPCs, for like evil, <laughs> evil uh, clerics, from my understanding. Aren't they pretty old? 
I guess as a subclass. I don't know if they're old. I feel like, didn't they come up with Tasha's? Oh, I don't know. I don't feel like they're a PHB one. Maybe I should make a death. You know, no one ever does a death clan. Actually sounds interesting. Oh, no, it's from the DMG. <laughs> yeah, okay, see? Oh, it's, a, it's yeah. a DMG subclass. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a, it's like Oathbreaker Paladins because Oathbreaker Paladins are the same exact way. They're an NPC subclass that they just eventually gave players. Yeah. I knew it. Like I have this in my mind that the the arcane drow, uh. Again, sort of practice that arcane magic. They practice glintstone magic. Uh, a lot of their things are around these these sort of crystals and everything like that. While the occult, uh, again, practice like summoning demons. Like they are probably the main proponent of why people fear the Underdark because you get caught by like the uh, oh god, what's that drow machine? The one that the the like steel predator or whatever. Where, like, its main purpose is to literally abduct spellcasters. That is probably 100% why people fear the Underdark. It's because the occult drow have those, like, those machines, those, these, these fucked up demons that capture people and destroy them. Use them to fuel these, these ancient rituals to, to free Loth from the vault. Ah, yes, I see. The Sorcerer Slap Chop. Are both of them evil? No. I wouldn't say so. I say the occult one, definitely evil. <laughs> definitely evil. Well, I'd say they're all lawful, right? I would definitely say they're lawful, yeah. Like, I cannot see a chaotic evil society surviving. Go that to the goblins. They don't have a society. Goblins have society. They had an empire, bro. They had an empire because, okay. <laughs> goblins back in the day were lawful. Goblins today are not. And it was mostly a hobgoblin empire. <laughs> oh, it was mostly the humans interceding. <laughs> Smile. How would you feel about the queen version of Loth having ended up possessed or other demon contaminator? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that something like she basically saw the the impending like I, I imagine she almost has this level of like clairvoyance, right? Which has afforded her a lot of like the power that she has. Uh, I'm, here. I'm here for drought talk. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> and I imagine a lot of that clairvoyance, she probably saw the destruction of the world. She saw the 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 wizard kings uniting the the surface against the gods saw that the world would be broken and saw the ramifications of what that meant for her people and started like started trying to amass power and in Making doing moves. so made a lot of these like sort of faustian deals and it 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 warped her and twisted her I want her to be again. I want her to be very much like a Jara, where she has. She's like probably one of the most, like aside from the Wizard King, she's probably one of the most powerful sorcerers in the world. You talking about Loth? Yeah. Ooh, she powerful sorcerer. Ooh. She learned it's how to. Enough. She learned how to quite literally control the primeval current. Mommy. I wonder how the gods feel about that. Mother. Well, that's why they locked her in the vault. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the how vault. the gods felt. Probably bad. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Can't have that. It's like the admins figuring out that a player unlocked the admin tool. <laughs> the admin channel. Where'd you get Ooh. that? The band hammer? Huh? No, no thing? Why are you in the skybox? How'd you get in here? <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to take a quick push. Uh, and then I'm going to come back and write up some more of this. Because I really like... I really like what I have so far, and I want to keep I want to keep that going. Sorry, I'm not reading chat all too much. I have like an idea in my head now, and I'm just trying to focus. Mm. The cogs are turning. His brain is going as fast as his
Yeah, I had my little panic attack. I feel better now. Oh, oh God, good. you had a panic attack? Yeah, I have a panic attack relating to anything breaking or going wrong on my computer slightly whatsoever. I'm and so when I, when I click on a website and I see that it tries to auto download something and I stop it, I my brain is like, what if we didn't stop it? <laughs> but... And here. then, and then I make uh, ma malware bytes scan five times in a row, and then I go and check my download history on Chrome and see that it's all empty. And then my brain is still like, "But what if it's still there somewhere?" Understandable. Understandable. And then my husband has to be like, "Honey, if you ran malware bytes, it's gonna pick it up. You have every, you're weird, and you have everything your Chrome downloads saved to your desktop, so you'd see it if it was downloaded by Chrome." It's very like, weird. Your husband is like, like, right and very like, weird, but kind of good. Character. Character. It's because I mainly download pictures, and it's easy for me to see them if they're on my desktop. Because then I can just organize them in, in whatever files they need to go to. I can just drag he, and drop them. He's still a good judge of character. That's still weird. <laughs> but he's like, you're fucking weird, and you save every. You have your Chrome downloads go directly to your desktop instead of your download folder. So if, it, if something, so if something was downloaded you'd see it right there and i'm like i don't see it and he's like yeah so you Please didn't download it <laughs> they're eating me I, I'm back. and then i ran malware bytes and it's like yeah malware bytes didn't see anything did it and i was like no it didn't see shit and he's like yeah because it's not there and he's like you really want to be sure check your download folder or check your downloads on chrome is it there me no it's not there okay then it's not there and i'm like but what if it still is <laughs> My anxiety relating to tech is just fucking insane. I, I have too much of it. I'm scared I'm gonna break everything all the time and... <laughs> oh, I hate it. Oh, DM's back. Hi. Hello. Hello. How was your piss? <sighs> it was loud as fuck. I loud as piss. Cool. Yo, what's oh. this? <laughs> wow. Want to see how hard I can piss? No. Can't I gotta right got maximize stream so I can read that. Uh, I read that. I when read the first that. war happened and the Aranar marched upon the veiled lands of the south, those that had previously lived in that landscape had retreated into the world below to flee from the destruction of the great worms. It is here that the queen of the kingdom, Loth, led her people deep into the world below to save them. Their lavish and brilliant homes were utterly destroyed, but retreating into the world below found new beauty in the form of strange, shimmering crystals. Through this did a new society form, free from the dangers of the surface and the threat of the Voidborn. So I can see like, why they idolized Lolf, though. Like, she literally saved them. Exactly. Damn, boy, you frying chicken in there? I think that's cool as fuck. <laughs> so did you talk about how there are going to be like two main factions of drow? She kind of sounds like um, like uh, Diablo Force Lilith, where she's responsible essentially for their creation, but she's still kind of a bitch. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm like Ajara and Lilith and I just push the two together. She does, she's definitely giving me, like, Lilith vibes, where you can kind of understand where she's coming from, uh, but she's still kind of you. What if I make the ultimate mommy? <laughs> you can understand where they're coming from and, like, why they did certain things, and there are some good intentions in there, but overall it's still kind of fucked. Yeah, she's still having people, like, you know, eat other people, right? It's, it's kind of weird. kind of fucked, but you can see, like, how she cared for her people. Like, she really did care for her people. Yeah, it just kind of went did, wrong. She did fucked up things to care for them. It kind of went wrong. Is it cent centuries is a hundred years? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. She sounds like a nice guy to me. She sounds pretty positive. Sirik five minutes later eating uh, Caleb's intestines. <laughs> I bet his intestines would be delicious. Noted. For centuries did their society flourish and thrive, led by one of the greatest sorcerers 
Yes. You say Enchantress. Enchantress has implications. People. <laughs> it's still a nice word, though. I'm fleeing like a coward. I'm here now. Are they like directly below us? Oh, they are. They were. Yeah, I fucked them up. I see. He just he just grabbed both of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's an open spellcaster. It's just a good tangle. It's a good grab ball. For centuries did their society flourish and thrive, led by one of the greatest elven spellcasters the world had seen. Her mastery over the primeval current rivaled even that of the Erinar. And she had a spider butt. She gets that. She doesn't start with it. Oh. Embrace the thorax. So was, is Loth like her actual name or is Loth the title? Ooh, I great question. Maybe we should change her name. I thought she actually did have a different name, like in the camp. Ooh, I'm getting shot. Let's give her another name. Spider bitch. <laughs> no, 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 that's a Wait, that's, still, that's still canon, fuck. Oh my god. That which lurks. You know, you I, I wanted to... Oh. I wanted <laughs> to give her like she made this Faustian deal with a sort of like Shelob esque entity. Like she saw the she saw through that clairvoyance the destruction of the realm. And mm -hmm. in that moment she was approached by like a Shelob like entity that basically was like, you and I can work together. We can save your people from the impending destruction. You need only take my blessing. Because wasn't no, she, wasn't fucked. wasn't Shelob like an another worldly entity in in the Middle Earth? I believe so. Wait, what is this word? This Shari? Ooh. No. Let's we can I like that, Vinipak. Let's let's work off of that though. I don't want it to be Shari, I want it to be something like that. Where the elves derive their name from her. Sheila was one of the things that came out of the primordial darkness. Yeah. I want something like that. I want some like eldritch like monster basically was like, hey, you've seen what I've seen. We can save your people. Make this deal with me. And together, together we can save them. And you'll become even more powerful than you already are. You control the primeval current. What if you could control the abyss? Ooh, we're going into Ungoliant uh, territory. That's exactly what I want. Ungoliant? Ungoliant yeah. is the progenitor. Yes, so that's what I want. Yeah, so it's kind of like you're talking about the primeval current. You're also talking about the primordial spider. You're talking about yeah. the first. You know what I mean? Yeah. The first yeah. of the first. I want oh, that. Yeah. How do you say this word? How do you fucking... Arania. Ooh, that's pretty. Chariot? Spider. What does? Arania. Arania. Yeah, it's technically Arani, but you can make it like Arania, and that means spider. It just straight up means spider. Post in text. Uh, this is the also my fucking malware bites just updated oh. and it scared the fuck out of me. Mongolian's <laughs> whole big thing was wanting to eat the Silmarils, so maybe the spider wants to eat the. Oh shit! Holy shit! That's what she wants. She wants to eat Aloween. Didn't Ungoliant isn't Ungoliant 
partially responsible for the destruction of the trees in uh, Lord of the Rings. Sorry, what? Oh, one sec. I'll be right back. I gotta run to my husband again. Ah! What did Ungoliant do? I thought Ungoliant was responsible because Ungoliant basically snuck um, Mordremoth basically into uh, fuck, what's the place called? Not Valheim. Uh, Valinor? Yeah, Valinor. Like, she snuck Morgoth into Valinor at one point, and they basically, they didn't... Either they steal the Silmarils, but there was also, like, a... some sort of, like, ancient tree that one of the gods made that they basically fucked up. If oh, I the lamps. Correctly. Yeah. Uh, Ungola essentially ate the trees that were the previous sun and moon. She drained them of their light. Yeah, didn't Morgoth, when he got the... Didn't he, like, eventually get the Silmarils? Like, like, stole them away? I look at Adam. I honestly don't remember. I don't think he <laughs> oh, got them all. Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I know I'm always reliable for shit like that, but... The Silmarillion, I read it a long time ago, man. <laughs> and even parts of it are unfinished as well, so... I'm sorry, I was trying to convince my husband to come hang out because he loves elven lore and shit like that. Nice. Trust me, Caleb, I wish I could say some shit and be right, but I can't do that. Not with Tolkien. <laughs> she and Morgoth fought because he wouldn't give her the Silmarils. <laughs> give me the rocks. No. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my god, Malware Bites, how many fucking updates do you need to do? It's just sitting here like, hi, I want to update again. I want to update again, again. Please, sir, can I have an update? So you want, like, their their name to be a derivative, like, derivative from her name? I, I she wanna... didn't turn. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I, I want to change her name. And I, mm -hmm. I, there is some part of me that's like, I, I like the idea that the elves are named af of, after, like, what she was. Not who she became, but what she is, or what she was. So Sharian, it could people. Oh shit. Behind the train. Maybe her name was like Lashara or something nice. like that. Ooh, Lashara. Lashara. Good. Spell that. Yeah, uh, just like L A and then. Wait, that lady. Uh, I don't know. I'm not good at spelling. Spell it I'm now. Spell it now. Spell it now. Chris, how would you how would you spell Lashara? Uh, L A S H R A. Maybe with an E if you're feeling spicy. The husband. Or Lashari. One more time. Lashari would be with an I at the end. One more time, spell it. Oh, well, hold on. Now I lost it. <laughs> uh, what's the original word? Lashara. Lashari. Lashara. Lashari. Uh, that would be L A S H A R I. I like Lashara more than I like Lashari. Okay, fair. Not right. so much like Ashara, though. And her last name could be like a rainy or something like that because that's close to like the actual uh name of spiders because uh that's what i put in the text chat is like a a rain a rainia rainy that's like how the like the technical uh species term for spiders Have her power take the extra planar entities, so having her give up her original name that derived the Sharian title and later up taking the Loth title? Mmm. Or you could just scrap the Loth title and make her a new title, too, just to make her more of your own god. True. True. Mm. 
guys, the name Loth is kind of, eh. You could do better. True. I I agree. We we can we can give her a badass name. I like Lashara. I do agree that it's very close to Ashara, but that's that's sort of the elven like conundrum. Elves I like should be like the El common name. Like, I feel like elves like ancestral names though, and sh and stuff like that. They like taking names of like people that were inspiring leaders and and important members of their culture. That's all we're saying though. I can totally agree with that, though. Ashara became Arane? Hmm. That would be neat. Hmm. Because that, that's mm -hmm. uh, when she started getting more spoodery. We'll keep Lashara for now. Don't be surprised if I change it. <laughs> because, again, it does it does pull very heavily close to Ashara. Um mm -hmm. But I do like the idea that this this incredibly powerful sorcerer saved her people, brought them down into the world below to save them from the great worms, found these ancient crystals that were part of the Earth's founding, of Adis's founding, used them. Oh, you know what the, the crystals could be? The crystals could be from the stars. Is it weird that, like, the more we're talking about her and her relation to Glenstones, I imagine her body as still being spider-ish, but I imagine her body being more of, like, a crystalline spider. Like, yeah. she's becoming made of the Glenstone. Yeah. All right, Chris, I'm going to throw this at you, then, for one last name option. Oh, uh, the elves are called Sharian Elves. Uh, they want it to be named after Loth, so we need a name that's close to Sharian, but not exactly Sharian. Sharia would be the easy one. Sharia? Yeah. Any others? Sharian, maybe with a Y. Uh, I'm feeling. You could do like a cognate, so like Ilashari or something like that. Ooh, Ilashari. Ooh, I'd like, I actually like Ilashari too. Ooh. And you just, you get to get fancy with your commas, so it's like Il, comma, Shari. Shari. This is why it's good to have multiple ZMs in the call. Mm, mm, mm. You can kiss him now. <laughs> Very him well. <laughs> Charves? Mm. Shit. Ar RNA Fair the morning. glittering weaver. RNA the skittering spell weaver. Maybe not no. skittering. RNA the brood mother. That's a like a, that's a very easy one minute back. Mm. Like just slapping brood mother onto it's very like bleh. that could be one of her titles. I love epithets and, and monikers and shit like that. So we can just slap brood mother on there. Oh God, what's the, what's the, is it, it's the primeval current, current, right? Correct. What if it was like the primeval weaver? Ooh, that's good. Primeval Since, weaver. Oh that was God. her whole thing is just manipulating it. That's how she, what she figured out to do and all that good stuff. I like that. Also fits in with the whole spider bitch thing. God, I really love the idea of like, her spider half actually being made of like crystalline glintstone now. That that's actually like sick, and it makes her so that that oh is like God. something that makes her different from other settings and shit like it's that. It's fucking spider seeth. Ooh! <laughs> uh, Holy fuck. shit! Holy shit! Wait, and then they do all kinds of packs with demons. Like maybe that could have been where your crystal tieflings come from too. Is her dealings? Giga brain. Mm -hmm. God, I love that I'm coming up with all these ideas all on my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, my it's brain a lot of is hard ginormous. Work, like, exactly. <laughs> she started doing oh, stuff with the demons down there where all the glintstones are. And so those demons were bound to stick around. So maybe that's where your crystal tieflings come from. It's just down, born down where all the glintstones are. Holy fuck. It'll land down under. 
Oh my god. Yeah, Raphael, that's nope. what we're talking about. Is that her when she becomes RNA, uh when she takes the blessing of this this the uh, this prim primordial spider who basically makes this deal with her, her body becomes warped and she becomes a drider, but because of the, the crystals, because of what's what founded her society, her her drider half is made of this this shimmering crystal. That's so sick. Would that make dryers crystalline? Some of them. Like maybe absolutely. Her, her blessed ones. Because there's there's already two forms of glintstone in Elden Ring. There's the blue glintstone, and then there's actual red glintstone. And you see it in some of the outfits that the, the more heretical casters wear. Ooh, maybe that's the difference between the two drow factions we talked about. One of them is the more, like, pure arcane blue glintstone. Yeah. And then the, oh, the more yeah. occult yeah. ones work with the red. It even makes sense because all the Lol uh, Loth drow usually have red eyes. Holy fuck. Oh my god. That means other drow could have, like, blue crystalline eyes. Real question, is she going to have a person face or a face mixed with the spider bits, like her jaw splitting in half like mandibles? I like to imagine she has multiple forms. I like to imagine the form that she takes most often is the drider. And then I imagine she has the, the like, the primordial spider that she takes. Like the full-ass, like, yeah. crystal spider. This, like, this massive amalgamation of crystal that is, like, this gargantuan beast It's she load. <laughs> True. Hey, Legion. Is Legion this your tablet? Boogaloo. So red glintstone's almost infected somehow. Yeah. Infected with the the sort of the pro. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. With yeah, yeah. mummy. Is this the situation that the heretical ones would be the arcane ones that didn't go with her to follow the spider demon? Yes. The the elves that still practice like glintstone sorceries and everything like that who didn't follow. Uh... Oh, God, what did we say her name was? RNA now. Before that. Uh, Ashara. 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 Those that didn't follow Lashara. Uh, into becoming RNA are, are considered like heretical. They're the more arcane based tribe, yeah. So the sect in Shademore would have come from. Yes. Like the Red Glintstone Mush users. No. Those are oh. the. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah, because they fled from it. Yeah, they left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would be the. They'd be former followers of RNA. Mm. God, I really yeah, love the name RNA as yes. her new name. Holy fuck, I love that. It just RNA just sounds so much better than Lolf. Maybe Lolf oh. is like the maybe Lolf is like the base common name for. Her. Like it's the peasant name. It could be one of her titles. Just like sort of the Lolf people and... sort of understand still, like who it is. Yeah. yeah. But like the people who are more familiar with her are like, oh, that's RNA. Yeah. The gods made her name Lolf so she didn't sound as cool. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't be named that. I've depicted you as the soy jack. <laughs> no. You say love all the time. Look at you, like bruh. All Father Chad. <laughs> <on the right. laughs> POV. You said Lolf in a room of drow. <laughs> Welcome back again, Legion. Were you just jumping between your computer and your tablet? The arcane ones probably say that they're being true to who she was before being corrupted. Yes. Oh, did you see when I DM'd you, uh, I named Tegan after a thing, right? Yes. Would you like to see the thing that I named him after? Absolutely. Phone and tablet. Oh, shit. Okay. It's because he forgot the password on some of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <Oof. laughs> That's uh, unfortunate. People are by me. I have uh, no gun. This is what he but was got named after. You can see why. Oh. Oh, buddy. 
Oh, there's someone near me too. I fucking love spider lilies and shit like that, so. Yeah. And that one is, that's an orchid. And it like looks gnarly as fuck. And I'm like, that's so spindly it does look, and shit. It does look pretty wild, actually. Because like, I love spider lilies as next as a, as much as the next person. But I already have a character named Lai that was named after the Lycoris flower, which is the like the botanistic term for spider lilies. And he's, mm. a, he's like a, a vampire character. And I was like, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> Understandable. I had to find another like spidery based flower. And then I found that and I was like, Oh, and it had a good name, and I was like, "Oh, that's dope." Not the reason. So I'm watching PD and world building. I'm not gonna lie; my brain is starting to get overstimulated. Understandable. That's why we got vods, brother. That's why we got vods. Uh, when the first horror happened, and the Aranar marched upon the veiled lands of the south, those that had previously lived in the landscape had retreated into the world below to flee from the destruction of the Great Horms. It is here that the Queen of the Kingdom, Lashara, led her people deep into the world below to save them. Their lavish and brilliant homes were oh. utterly destroyed, but in retreating to the world below found beautiful, uh, found new beauty in the form of strange, shimmering crystals. Through this did a new society form, free from the dangers of the surface and the threat of the Voidborn. For centuries did this society flourish and thrive, led by one of the greatest elven spellcasters the world had seen. Her mastery of the primeval current rivaled even that of the Aranar, affording her powers... Oh my god. I mean, yeah, it makes sense why the Wizard Kings were fucking terrified of her. If she was able to just use Glintstones as a battery and just be able to cast whatever she wanted. Ooh. DM. I'm gonna DM you. Okay. Also, somewhere it's because of FOMO. Yeah, I know. I got FOMO too. Don't worry. What do you have FOMO for? I uh, just get FOMO for random things. Like, I break my bedtime to watch fun people stream art late at night. Oh, no. Oh, we can stream in discords. We can do that, Sizzle. Very good. They scheming. Because of FOMO. Oh, so it's all right, Legion, brother. You don't <laughs> you got to stress yourself out just because you want to watch the stream. So are you thinking Grave Cleric or Death Cleric now, Sizzle? Death Cleric sounds pretty funny, but I'd want to take a look at it to make sure it's... I think uh... Death Clerics are like mini necromancers in general. Because mm. I like... still want to make a, um, a Night Maiden. Whether oh, or not yeah. Momo still wants to do that, I'm going to make it, and it's either going to be, if Momo doesn't do the, the, the sis, I'll just make it a backup. Yeah, like, your domain spells are animated. Like, so you're, it, you're baby necromancer, and then whenever you cast, like, a necromancy cantrip that only targets one creature, the spell can instead target two creatures. So if you, if you oh somehow got, like, a uh, chill touch you could target two people with it instead of just one. Hmm. But that would require you somehow getting Chill Touch, because I don't think Chill Touch is a cleric cantrip. It is not. Yeah. I can always take a feat for that, though, because that would be... Ooh, making it so that, like, two people can't heal during combat? Woo-wee! Protect the people in there, but it's only necromancy cantrips. Well, that's kind of the things that I don't know if oh, a night maiden yeah. would be down for necromancy. Well, it's ne necromancy cantrips. A reminder, like a, a lot of the healing spells in general are necromancy. So, like something Lucky. you could do with that 
Uh, spare okay. the dying. You could hit two people with spare the dying at the same time with that. Hmm. You could also do it with toll the dead, though. It sounds interesting, especially because night maidens are like associated with death, but they also got some hinky like blood magic shit going on. At least the Ebon Wing do. Yeah. Like they aren't traditional clerics, from my understanding. <laughs> They uh they they practice necromancy because necromancy is tied to blood magic and everything like that. They don't right. like raise dead and stuff like that is is something they can do, it's but icky. again, it's part of their like consent. Like it is oh, it okay. is it is understood that the person that they're bringing back is consenting to being brought back. Oh, which so is, they they can still animate the dead. They just have like a culture around it. Correct. Uh, okay. It's why when Lachlira killed the sages and brought their souls back that the rest of the Ebon Wings were like, holy fuck. Like <laughs> yeah. she broke like every tradition and rule that they had in that single action because oh. she basically condemned them to to sort of like no afterlife in doing that. Oh, OK, so, yeah, maybe Death Cleric would be fitting for a, a night maiden. Also. Like you, you do get really good. Death cleric has some surprisingly good abilities. Like starting at sixth level, uh, you pretty much say fuck you to anyone that has necrotic resistance, and any of your spells that deal necrotic damage ignores necrotic resistance. So That's even if good. you're even if you're fighting undead, they're gonna take a full necrotic damage from you. That actually sounds. Very nightly using necromancy to fight necromancy. Especially like, oh, because you're a cleric too and you get inflict wounds, you can just go up in there and say, fuck you, bitch. That sounds spicy. DM, I have an idea. Listen, man, I'm telling you, you fight a humanoid as a cleric. Clerics are one of the most burst damage characters when you are fighting against humanoids. You buff, get a you buff. get a whole person off. You just walk up to that bitch. You do inflict wounds, a first level inflict wounds. That's six d ten. Like clerics fighting off against humanoids are extremely busted. Yeah. Hold person inflict wounds. That motherfucker. They dead. They explode. They're gone. It wouldn't be until her powers showed her the destructive wrath of the Aranar and the destruction of the world that Lashara turned her eyes towards once again saving her people. In this moment of internal strife was Lashara approached by a strange and twisted being, an entity of immense size who proposed to the queen a pact, Damn. a mean of saving her people from the destruction of the world that was coming. That is all Lashara, by the way. All of that is Lashara. It's a, word by word. They're going to push. Fuck. Yeah, they're here now. But with her newfound power channeled through the glintstone around her, Lashara developed foresight, the ability to see the paths of possible futures. Hmm. You can go with that. I gotta go back for my back. Okay. You, I fell. And so you got her? Yeah, you got her. Yeah, she's down. Good stuff. There's another. I don't, I don't know where you're down her, so. Uh, she fell. Good stuff.
But between the lines lore I'm picturing here is that the spider entity influenced which path the Shar saw. Hmm. I know where I'm at, Sizzle. Fuck, everything I'm going to write is just going to keep going back to Azara. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, what if she channeled her power into the primeval current and pulled this primordial creature out? Nope, same thing. She reached out to the fucking... To the, uh, the Legion. <laughs> Embrace it? <laughs> I do like the idea that this entity influenced her foresight. I do like that. based on Lovecraft no matter what. Is it though? No path she saw showed any hope or safety for her people and in despair Lashara sought solitude in the darkest region. Hmm. Maybe that's it. Maybe using the primeval current she tried to find a way to save her people and was just coming up empty handed. Like that, I get seen. Chris, I had one of my genius idea moments in clarity as I walked Alrighty. away from my commute. As I walked away from my computer, it's one of my marketing ideas. You know, I like to hit you with these every once in a while. <laughs> what if you had a toilet seat that, uh -oh. when you sat on it for a certain amount of time? Like, it would set off a loud, like, siren to try to scare the shit out of you. No. <laughs> Why? That's a... What? <laughs> I Why would not buy that. To scare the shit out of you. Get it? People, missed marketing here. This is what I got my business major for. <laughs> I hate that you destroyed my time on the porcelain throne just for a pun. How would you do that? This is why I was a business major, dude. This is why. Okay, Satan, calm down. Okay, just because I got a business degree don't mean I'm Satan. I don't even know how to manage my own money. I'm just good at managing other people's. I don't even think you're good at you that. my money? What do you mean I'm not good at that? You just say spend it all on art. Yeah, but that's with my money. I do no, that. No, you tell other people to do it, too. I don't tell other people. No. I say if you if you are financially capable of it, then you should. The husband speaks the truth. Summer, I'm financially capable. What should I do with my money? 
Give it all to me. Yeah, give me your bits. Give me, give me some. Oh, right, streamer. I forgot. All right, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> oh man. Chris knows that I am clinically insane, and he still chooses to be around me. So, either that, or he's not choosing to be around me, and I'm keeping him captive. But you'll Smile. never know. You're very visible, by the way. More yeah, than I you know. think. I, I'm, <laughs> I've seen others try this. Yeah. It really only works because nobody's when people, no one's expecting it. Well, if you're doing it by a like a beaming red light, that is your trap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there they are. I got them. I'm saying invest in songs. Yep. Listen, Legion. Once upon oh. a time, I wanted to work on Wall Street, but then I realized that that would make me a hardcore criminal. What? Because everybody who works on Wall Street is a criminal. What? No. They're only a criminal if they get arrested. Talk they about should fighting all get words. arrested. They're just good at hiding the shit that they do. Well, yeah, it's government approved. Right. Sanction. Yeah. It's sanctioned, not approved. It's sanctioned. Right. sanctioned. Excuse me. So you can make a lot of money if you work on Wall Street, but oh, your your job is literally to fuck over everybody else. So. Yeah. It's like it's very uh, much a moral conundrum. If you work on Wall Street, you can make so much money. It's like crazy the amount of money you could, you ha have the possibility of making. But you'll have but... so much money, you don't need to care. Unless you do care and you realize, oh, I am fucking over how like hundreds of thousands of people. One day I will play a hardcore capitalist in D and D and. I will <laughs> let everybody know why capitalism as a whole is entirely dog shit. I have a game about capitalism for you. It's literally yeah. just stock market betting, but you're using human organs. Oh, I wait, uh, I'd love that, that. Wait. Is that um organs, whatever it's called? I'm not sure what the name is, but I've seen a lot of things and it's definitely not for me because it's very complicated. Oh. Yeah, you don't like a lot of multitasking things. I don't know. Are you crazy? Play well, fucking Rimworld. Like, I know you like Rimworld, but I feel like that stuff. Like... It's it's I, like it's just so complicated looking. It's like yeah, I'm not touching that. It's basically day trading the video game. This is the man that gave. Been this man points at him. This fucking whore right here. A good one. One of the good ones. Who would play a hedge funder in D and D? <laughs> Hello, my name is Gabriel. Who would do, who would do that? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. I'm a stockbroker. I'm also an artificer. Yeah, I put that was my first time playing an ill worker. I'll let you guess who was more evil in that camp. <laughs> oh, me? Don't worry. I've just been shorting your company for the last year. New Legion art. I sent Sizzle and Crown fan art. Oh my god. What? Me? Fan <laughs> art? <laughs> fan this art like the one for from me? Last night. What the fuck? <laughs> Why am I <laughs> wet? What's happening? You're, You're sizzling, sizzling bacon. bacon. Oh my god, I'm so <laughs> greasy. We have matching <laughs> ones now. Oh my god. I thought. Oh, that's great. I thought it was like. I looked at it and the first thing I thought was like, you know, the like rick and morty face where their like lips droop <laughs> okay legion hear me out i need you to take me from the other one you I'm do blushing. with that i need you to put me next to sizzle and i need you to have us both pointing guns at crown oh my god <laughs> then, then it's accurate <laughs> yes give the bacon hands uh made me look like a like the two fingers if they were made out of bacon oh no i hate that <laughs> with her <laughs> With her newfound power channeled through the glintstone around her, 
Uh, Lashara developed foresight, the ability to see the paths of the possible future. Through this, did she witness the destruction of the realm at the hands of the Erinar, their wrath unleashed upon all who dare challenge them in their heavenly realm. No path laid before her, for every vision ended with the destruction of her home and her people. In her despair, Lashara sought solitude in the darkest reaches, far from the light of the Erinar. In these shadows, an entity manifested, lined by unlight in a dark form of impossible size. It offered succor and sympathy, claiming its own children had been slain by the light of the Erinar, and that it, with the queen's powers, could save her people. Mm -hmm. The fool. All right, Legion, I got a very specific request. All right, mm -hmm. you know the three fingers from Elden Ring? Oh, no. All right, I want that with, like, the maddening eye in the center, but instead of three fingers, it's three strips of bacon. <laughs> That's what so I. Damn, says, well, I love your shirt, bro. Nice. Yeah, thanks, persona. thanks, bro. That's <laughs> nice my persona. Bro. Oh no. I got this from Gap. Oh, I bet. <laughs> they, they were waiting for you at the door with that shit. Uh, yep. Uh, Jace, uh, Macy's was calling me. Oh my god. Yeah. Who the fuck? Some assholes just sh fucking shoot me. It's very rude. Slightly far, so be careful. That I'm should close. be fine. They took like pot shots and then they fled. <laughs> it will be done, my lord. <laughs> very good. Thank you, Legion. You are uh, you're a true homie. What is Legion gonna do? My uh, my my OC. Oh my god! Let's go. Three fingers. <laughs> three bacon's. The three strips. The three strips and this the eye of Sora yeah, in the middle. Oh, there's another team. Hey. <clears throat> run, says the run. I'm crawling. They want my Gucci. I thought you said coochie. I'm very upset. They might want that too. No! This is masquerade, so. Fair. My nose for Rissy. My nose for Rissy. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate that. <laughs> they don't know. But he knows. Does he know? That guy knows. Oh, I might die. I would leave, bro. The longer you remain. <laughs> I'm strapped by a uh, poison. Hold on. Bottom. Boom. 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 Desperate in her want to see her people <laughs> saved, did Lashara take the, uh, the blessings of this strange entity, her body becoming warped by the very glintstone she had mastered, a crystalline spider with the upper half of the queen, her beauty and power unmatched even now. Arane would become her new name, the primeval weaver. Shit. I just need a last name for her, for her original form, at least. Unless you don't want her to have one. I like titles. We can give her one. Oh, DM, I'm gonna message you. Very well. Can you ping? So this right. isn't going to be in the... This is going to be probably on her page in Kanka. I'm just writing this now so I can get a better understanding of what the, the Sharian elves are. And then yeah. I'm going to write what Sharian elves are. So I'm writing this first, the lore, and then I'm going to write Sharian elf lore. <laughs> we got, listen, it's good god lore because you said you didn't have too much for her. 
that stuff. That's a good stuff. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, schemes, scheming. Hmm. I almost feel like. Please don't kill me. I like both. Oh, I like the second one. I'm down. I like I like the ladder here. Okay, okay. I steal oh, that. People. I steal that. I steal that. I edit my shit. What was the name of the nation she uh, ruled? If she was queen, she may have just used that. Hmm. They left. And they came back. Oh my god. I'm in a bad place, bro. She's will run, 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 run. I'm realizing now that my betrayer gods, there's maybe only two of them that were Shit. formerly Aranar. I almost I, I think the rest are all like primordial beings. His friends maybe, down. maybe that's why the Aranar were just so skeptical of them in general. Like when Maelor came and the Voidborn started being a thing, I imagine that from the void, these other entities started to emerge and unsure of really had to, to deal with them. The All Father and the other Aranar just sort of sealed them away because killing them wouldn't do anything. They would just come back from the void. So almost in like a, a, a desperation and a, a, a not really sure how to battle these things, how to end them, to seal them away. Could it have been the case where like maybe one of them didn't even do anything too wrong necessarily, but the Aranar were scared enough of them to just put them all away? Absolutely. So maybe she like didn't even do anything too heinous other than defend her people. But people were still terrified of the potential that she had. People on me. Well, are we making her a <laughs> Are we making her like a uh like a morally gray situation? Could be. That's up to you. How like how evil you want to make your betrayer gods slash if it was a situation where like maybe she didn't do anything that was necessarily evil, but they were just so fucking terrified of them that they would rather put them all away. And then that's what, you know, starts up her anger is that she got locked away for no reason. Mm. Oh, my God, it's Rasagath. <laughs> Like, she was maybe generally just like, a, I want to take care of my people, but then they locked her away, and that's when her, like, vengeance and spite starts coming out in, like, whispers and weaves to her followers. Yeah, initially she was like, I'm not going to join in the war against the gods. She probably was beseeched by the Wizard Kings. With how powerful she was, the Wizard Kings probably came to her like, hey, you should join us. We should, we can, we can become gods. And she's like, Haha, no, <laughs> uh -huh, no, no, I've, I've, I've seen what, what you've done. <laughs> I'm scared. I want to just protect my people and keep them safe. Fools. I don't want you bringing your war down here again. And then that's why we, I think that's like a, we came down here in the first place to get away from your war. I, I don't want to participate in that. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe they saw that as her, like, maybe being possibly treacherous and switching to the other side. With kin that were more similar to her and how they came to power. Like that. I also imagine it, it was sort of like a 
Like, because uh, I've already proven that the All Father and all of them aren't infallible, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, I like the idea that just out of fear, like seeing this primordial spider, the the All Father's like, oh, it's a void born, and then <laughs> like oh. grabbing it. Uh, would see that it's influenced like another and like influenced but like unaware of the dealing between them sees that Lashara is also possessing of this oh power God. this blessing it's of the prime evil Sizzle. Sizzle, turn around. and takes uh -oh. both of them and locks them away within the vault mm -hmm. just out of fear like the the void is spreading look what it's done it's already corrupted a powerful sorcerer takes both locks them away Maybe that's when she became Arana, oh, okay. Arana, is like once they were both like thrown in together. Mm. They sort of like fused into one and then whispers and her spiders like weaving their trails out through the little cracks in the void is how her followers are like finding all of this out. I like that. She adopted her new name within the vault. Mm hmm. Like that. Like that. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna copy this. I save it. <laughs> Especially gonna... like a like a Cold War scenario where like having recently fought Maelor, they basically overreacted. Hundred percent. And they're like, she's red. <laughs> I I think that's absolutely the case. Where like it would probably be like Zomarin, who's like, all father. The, the void is spreading. Look what it's done to the elves of the world below. And then the Allfather looks and sees Lashara Hi. and sees this primordial entity and is like, holy fuck, it's Maelor in another form. Grabs both, throws them within the vault. Wait, 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 wait. But yeah, because it's like the Allfather isn't without mistake. Like he can, he makes mistakes too, I feel like. And that might have been just like a, I assume this, this is this, this, and this because that void. It's so too dangerous to be let live. I think it's more of like a, it's it was fine where it was, but he was like, it could be something more. So get them out of here. Exactly. I'm scared of what it could become, but in by by doing that himself, he kind of forced it to become what he was scared it was going to be. Yeah, I like that. So, like, their relationship wasn't necessarily going to lead to her becoming, like, an evil, vengeful betrayer god. But because of what the Allfather did himself, he kind of brought that brought what he was trying to avoid on himself by doing that. He's done that uh, before as well. Yep. Where he, he could have destroyed Maelor uh, in the world below, but he didn't. He was like, oh, shit, I have done. I, I basically forced you out of your home uh, and not not seeing what the void was already doing, which was eroding the earth like but the void's presence on Adis. It was it was uh, it was already sort of like carving the world, sort of like just this natural erosion with its presence. And he didn't see it as that. He saw it as it trying to hide and make a new home, not understanding that it was inherently destructive. And was like, "Hey, for what I've done, I will offer you a, a I'll offer you a, a, a boon. I will breathe into life an effigy that you carve, you yourself carve." Uh, and he didn't see the sort of maliciousness of the void, and it presented the effigy of the great worms, and they ripped out his heart, and uh, then the first war happened. And I think in that instance is when he starts like overreacting, like it's like paranoia. Yeah, like, I can't let this happen again. It's very Odin too, like Odin. This this idea of like Odin always needing knowledge and always like now sort of focusing more on gaining this wisdom and power. I imagine because of her level of clairvoyance, the Allfather probably came to her and was like bestow it to me give me that clairvoyance so i can see the threats of the void coming and she was like no <laughs> no that would make him very odin-esque 
I can also see him, like, because of that constant pursuit of knowledge and glintstones in general being a more foreign concept, maybe even to him, that kind of scared him in a way. Like, they have access to a type of magic that he isn't as familiar with at the time. Hmm. So, like, that, this new type of magic, this strong crystal essence was, like, not a threat, but it worried him. It gave him that paranoia. Like, I don't know as much about I don't know what they can do with that. I don't know how much they can manipulate the primeval current with these things. That's terrifying. Yeah. Sounds like they'd be, like, a general mistrust of pretty much all sorcerers at the time. Yeah, I would think so. Like, he's like, I understand how magic works. And then his own creations are forming new magics. And he's like, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> he's like, I, I didn't don't teach know you that. what you can do with that. Yeah, it's like you make, like, a, a code in, like, in, like, Linux. And then it starts programming itself. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? The devil he doesn't know. Exactly. I like that a lot. It gives I've always wanted to make him more like Odin esque because I felt like he was just all the good things about Odin. But I also really like a lot of the, the evil shit Odin does. And this is one of them. It was kind of like he took a good woman who was trying or not a good woman, like a morally gray woman, but who was trying to do good by her people. And because he was just scared of what she could become, Decided to throw her away and ended up making the monster that he feared. Yeah. And antagonistic because she had visions of what uh, what was going to. Uh, oh, yeah. What he was going to do to her. Yeah, I could definitely see that where she has that clairvoyance of knowing what the all father's plans are or like not 100 percent knowing what his plans are, but knowing that there's the mistrust and the sort of fear from the all father. And that's a very like that has to be such a polarizing moment where your own creator is afraid of you. Mm-hmm. Imagine being well, essentially immortal, but imagine being birthed, <laughs> birthed from this, this, this creator and the creator comes to you and you see that they fear you. That has to be so strange. I also kind of like the story because it gives some empathy to some of the beings in the void. My dad has looked at me that way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I I like that because so far what I've seen of the void, it's like that's nasty, that's crazy. Why would anybody in their sane mind want that out? But this gives sort of like that empathy to something that's trapped in the void. Like she just wanted to do good by her people. Why was she put in there? It like that for me is a very solid reason as to why people would be more empathetic towards some creatures that got locked in there. Because when I look at the vault, I see a bunch of crazy people and I'm just like, who who would it who would want you out unless they were already a crazed like cultist and are being manipulated in some way? But her, like, story and what leads up to it, like, I can see, like, regular everyday people empathizing with that in a sort of way. So here's the other thing, is Fuck that, <laughs> is that the Aranar are really good about hiding sort of the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but, like, her people, her people would absolutely. still, like, that's, that's a reason why they care about her so much. It's probably the reason why they, they know uh, the truth. Xenophobic and generally pissed at everyone else. Because everybody's like, oh, the All Father's great! And then they're just yeah. down here like, no, they he yeah. took away our queen who was just trying to help us. God, so that even, makes sense. That makes sense absolutely why they're oh, xenophobic. Oh, it's even more perfect because I recently dropped his one of his titles by a lot of people as the father of lies. Oh yeah. Ooh, do that. Ooh. Yuri is already sympathetic towards the drow. Uh oh. Nice. Yeah, she's gonna catch a verdict on the fucking brain pan. <laughs> All right, calm down. Keep talking that dumb <laughs> shit. Oh, uh, well, come on. No. Don't you want to know lore. the truth? Good so lore, DM. <laughs> I'd like, I stay ignorant. That is what Pyrrhus makes it. I do want this <laughs> primordial entity. I, I like the idea that they shared that, like, that, that sort of feeling of, like, motherhood, of, like, wanting to protect your children. 
yeah, and like your was, families she and spider. shit. She wanted to protect her brood, so she knows that. But I also want it to be like, uh, was it Ungolian was the name? Yeah. I, I want Ungolian to like, to want to eat <laughs> Thorlin Aluin. Like, I, I find there's something about that where the void is like this, these lights, these lights are what robbed my home from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want them gone. <laughs> I mean, it makes so, sense. So she I'm got really this. Far from you. She oh, got this okay. whole society underground that her people could be safe, but they could never return to the place that they once came from. And so this maybe, okay. like, that's her revenge plan. Is like they put me in here, they pissed me off. I can't help my people anymore, so I'm gonna take out the thing that made us leave in the first place. Yeah, she's gonna yeah. come back, gonna so, come back mine, Yeah. Yeah. Hey there. So something that I've been kind of noticing for a while yeah. with everything the void has touched is that it Whip. it it seems to just bend. It doesn't break, but it bends and warps things. <laughs> well there you go. So yes. noble intentions take us take a slight and magnify it, stew on it, let it fester. So maybe initially they didn't start out bad, but look who we are now. I think the Void should have everything. It's basically the Abyss. I think it should be massive and contain actually good entities and entities that actually just want to eve. I, I do also love the idea. Like, I want Sotomor to be like a fucked up just version of like Midgar Sormer. Like, I yeah. want him to eat the fucking world. Like... <laughs> His whole thing is like, I just want to kill stuff. Like, I'm the yeah, cloaked I think... serpent. I am the destroyer of things. I want this world fucking gone. Yeah, I just think the void is, in and of itself, uh, just kind of as described, just continuously hungering for destruction with everything it touches. Every... Just... Every ambition that's skewed, every protective instinct warped, it's all towards the same end, which is, fuck you all, daddy, I'm gonna rip it all down. I mean, the Void the void basically was, like, Voidborns are birthed because of what the Allfather did. So, the what Void... Do? Huh? Create. It created. What'd it do? Oh. Yeah. The void was everything and nothing until the Allfather showed up. And when he, the first act that he did was push the void to the very edges of creation by creating stars, light. Oh, so the void is like entropy, always pushing against yep. order. And it's like, it, fuck, what's the word for that? Uh, irrefragable, I think, or like undeniable, so to speak, you know, like... There's only keeping it at bay, but never really stopping it. Not really. Indefatigable. <laughs> I mean, all those work. Sure. <laughs> yes. And I would say demons are essentially the reaction. Like the demons of the void are is the reaction to creation, where essentially it's almost like uh, the law of th thermodynamics. So, like, Aeormenir makes something, and then a demon is spawned because of it. And the demon seeks to basically make everything, uh, maximize entropy. I'm thinking yeah. almost like, yeah. what if the demons that are made seek out, like, their other, like, oh, they're, they're like a dead. half. Push up, push up. Mm -hmm. Like, a demon that's made seeks out its the half that lives to become whole once more, and then become nothing. So every demon seeks this other half. It's this hunger, this this twisted, like mockery of life that seeks its living counterpart to be made whole again. Yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, like liquids that have been separated, and they want to basically, or uh, liquids that have been mixed, and they want to separate. Hmm. Yeah. 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 
Demons have a true counterpart that if they touch will mutually annihilate. That's what I'm thinking. Like. That's kind of what I figured Maylor was to Aeor Minor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not things like Loth, because Loth is different. Loth's a, a betrayer god, so that's sort of like a creation turning on itself, but. Or maybe a demon of the opposite side touched those gods and now they are what they are. The one thing I know for certain is that uh, <laughs> oh. I double check so make sure I'm not talking out of my ass. I mean, it's creation story, so yeah, it's talking out of your ass. But yeah, I've been following that fucking lore. I'm like, oh. Fucking DOA, fuck. start. DOA, start up again soon. I want that fucking god lore. It's the first law of fucking alchemy. Equivalent exchange. Yeah. You make an angel, you get a devil. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Thinking the betrayer gods were actually just corrupted versions of the Aranor that once were. So, like, maybe. Maybe the betrayer gods are the ones who realize this sort of this truth. Maybe, but being in the vault, they've probably ultimately been turned again that uh that bit of uh of doubt just was eroded away by the void so maybe at one time they were more sympathetic they are uh, now more or less whatever new moniker they go by oh yeah that's what we're talking right. about with Lashara is that she made a deal with a not so nice boy and Odin saw that and Odin was just like yeet both of you are going in and Lashara wasn't necessarily a bad person but by throwing her in there it turned her into a very vengeful and bad person oh made a, made a deal with a naughty boy um, a little bit of a naughty boy more that like, she had like kinship with more like it sounds like she was uh in the process of negotiating deciding if they wanted to be with the naughty boy and then was just thrown in before she could say yes or no it's the That's fact that she even considered this uh, we can't take any chances correct me if I'm wrong into the naughty box <laughs> Do you? I can't seem to find it in my own notes. Do you remember what Ember's name was before he became Ember? Galadir. Galadir, thank you. Uh, that's something Oberon has very much. I have a list of questions, sir. Galadir. I have a list. DM, I have a list. <laughs> I have a list of all of you. All of you. That is something that he is uh, vehemently looking into ever since the word fell out of his mouth. Galadir the Firstborn, the, the first of uh, Aormanir's children, uh, is one of the, like, is one of the Betrayer Gods, who, in my mind, is one of those that has seen the writing on the wall, has seen that the Allfather is not infallible, and that through the Allfather's actions has spurred the, the creation of the Voidborns, and that everything he does, the Voidborn reacts to. And had he not done what he did, had he not done this selfish act of, of not wanting to be alone, that none of this would have happened. The destruction that followed, the pain, the agony. And I think that's what turned him to Melor's side.
certainly if the spider referred to herself as the All Mother, Odin would need a moment. <laughs> Maybe. We're getting shot. But yeah, it's just. Uh... Can I ask for a sort of star map outside of the world of Adis? How expansive is the scope of things? What do you mean? You got other planets in the solar system, homie? Oh my god. Uh, yeah, but. <laughs> but no. That's yes, the sci fi but... setting. <laughs> Yes, but uh, don't go there. Also, Legion, that has something, that's been something I've been looking into. Uh, your first inquiry there. I guess Aegis, the center of the universe? Technically, yes. It was the first creation. That's kind of pretentious. They're hurt. The pretentious is saying that a person is the center of the universe. It's not pretentious to be a planet the center of the universe. Yeah, that's kind of like how people on Earth say that Earth is the center of the universe. It's still pretentious. It's not yeah, pretentious if it's true. Oh, it is? Yes. This is still pretentious. Like whole, this is like the whole fucking the shirt that I want to buy, which is, I'm not gaslighting you if I'm right. <laughs> gaslighting you if I'm right. <laughs> it's not gaslighting if I'm right. Maybe Galadir and Lashara had corrupted love in the vault? Mm. Ooh, sizzle. Mm, mm. Galadir as Enbrir is sort of, he's sort of known as like, he is the betrayer god. He is the god of betrayal. It would like last. <laughs> he probably had a hand in corrupting every other one as well. Yep. I don't like it here anymore. I imagine he was the initial one whispering in ears, and as kind of the older brother, a lot of the others... They're coming for us, you better get the fuck out. A lot of the others probably followed. I'm trying to see if Adis is like a pebble in the Earth's ocean. Um, Adis isn't the only planet. I have tons of planets in other solar systems, like... I'm gonna try to find food. I have a lot. When it comes to the sci-fi setting, Legion, you will be... Your hands will be full. We're just not there yet. <laughs> yeah, in just... In just the... The Atriel system, the Galactic Centrum, there is Prithos, Raelir, Adis, Zepha, Orias, Vesper, Sangala, Isanad, and Zera. There are nine planets, and that's just in the the Atriel system. Oh, this is old Imperium of Man shit. Correct. They exist prior to the Allfather birthing everything? Nope. <laughs> How many sessions do you think before Adis reaches the Space Age? A while. A long, long time, I'm afraid. At least two campaigns. <laughs> At least 40 years old, me. <laughs> as much as I love space, I also just like the classic fantasy. It's nice. I like space because I can do a lot with space. Like, I like guns. I like future tech. I really love future tech. Uh, but also, like, there isn't... There isn't, like, any real, like, there's no. Go on. Go on. I don't know. Sci-fi just doesn't have really the same feel in a, in a TTRPG. I think it can. It just has to have the, like, right concept behind it. There's a lot of sci-fi um, like campaigns that I see, which are very like, you can do anything in a sandbox world. And most people are just like, I just want to do a specific thing in a sandbox world. <laughs> True. Like, I appreciate more sci-fi settings, but it's also one of those things where like, you play in a sci-fi setting for a year, 
you're gonna want to go back to a fantasy setting. I think it's just taste for me, I guess. Yeah, you've always been biased. For like, I love Breath to Death, but playing in a high, like a high Magitech world made me really just want to go back to a traditional fantasy with no tech. Hey, I have something like that myself, but with fantasy, I like to go to like low fantasy games when I play in high fantasy for a while. I think it's just, yeah, I think it's just like, that's the player mentality of you want to mix yeah. it up. Like if you're playing five sci-fi games, oh, they if, got you third really, party. if you really like sci-fi, good for you. But I, I wouldn't be able nah, to do fuck. five sci-fi games. I, I need like variety. I need like a, okay, this is my high really like sci-fi Magitech campaign. This is my super, super fantasy. And then this is my post-apocalyptic campaign. Yeah, like, um. With some IRL friends and I, like, we had alternating Monday games, and one was, you know, typical D&D, &D, fantastical setting, and then other days it was going to be Star Wars. So you could just really bounce between those, and it was kind of nice. Different flavor each week. That's why, like, I'm in my happiest place I can be right now, because I'm more, I have more of, like, a Magitech sci-fi-ish with Brett's game. Your game has been like pure good fantasy, and then Chris is doing a post-apocalyptic game, and I'm like, so I'm I'm hitting all three of my <laughs> nice. niches with three different games right now, and I'm just I'm in my happy zone. Don't I get all get three of my favorites. Don't let me get in my zone. I'm in my zone. It's too late. They can't take me out of the zone now. And then I also will, um, if I ever want like really, really grunge fantasy from time to time, I also have like an occasional uh, Age of Sigmar West Marches I'm in. Oh my god. In case I ever want that like really, really grungy fantasy. That's where uh, Tegan actually or originally comes from. Hmm. You're in a I, Age I, of I, play, I play him in an Age of Sigmar West Marches. Hmm. How is that TTRPG, by the way? Isn't that one Love of the new ones? It's it's really overshadowed by a lot of the other 40k stuff. Yeah. Uh and a lot of people like just don't know about it. It's it's pretty solid though. Like I there's a lot of there's a lot of mechanical things that so we're playing 5th edition in Sigmar. Oh, okay. Because the the base core of it is very rough. Jesus but Christ. the but the world and the lore and the races and interactions and stuff like that those are all very fun. So I don't recommend playing Age of Sigmar for the class system. I recommend playing Age of Sigmar for the setting. Interesting. Last I heard of Age of Sigmar, which was a while ago, it was it's, it honestly sounded a little confusing. Yeah, because they why... sort of they sort of split the races in like these different pocket dimension things. Mm -hmm. But there are still places where they all come together and stuff like that. Okay. And those are like big cities where they come together. But it's fun. Again, the system itself is eh. Eh. Mm. The system itself is eh. You're better off using like 5e mechanics and just yep. taking Sigmar as the setting. What is the system? It's a it's a Warhammer system and and Sigmar is their their fantasy Warhammer system and it's just generally <laughs> Is it TTRPG? Is it like a D6? It's TTRPG, it, yeah. Or is it like a war gaming thing? It's it's a TTRPG. It's just overly complicated in many aspects from the little of it that I've seen because again the whole West Marches we just decided hey we're just playing 5e characters in the setting it's a it's a lot to keep track of it's very overly complicated and underpowered at the same time it's very weird it's but the the setting itself though is very like very gritty and i appreciate that yeah i've played a little bit of the 40k ttrpgs um what is it uh, only war and dark heresy being the main ones mm -hmm. um and the general idea is that all of the races fit 
on the same sort of decimal based system. So it is a decimal based system, zero to a hundred. So in only war, you're playing a, a guardsman. Uh, so you have very low stats, generally speaking, because you're using the same sort of scope as a space marine might. Um, they're also seem they are also much more reliant, I think, on gear, like war gear, uh, boosts your stuff a lot. Your score. Yeah. And yeah, generally it, it is a lot more complicated because there's a lot more things. Like the injury system is completely different. Uh, you have like wounds on different body parts instead of just yeah an HP pool. That, that was um, the weirdest part was the wounds on the body parts, yeah. Yeah. That's and, old dungeon crawler actually. Yeah. If you hit zero, you're not even dying necessarily. You're then basically rolling... Like injury past that, where you run the risk of rolling on the like permanent injury table, which can be anything from you recover to um, you lose that limb. In old dungeon crawling, losing limbs was super normal because you get many ways to replace them, or even replace them with like the limb of a different race or yeah, slime-like structure and shit like that. That's old mm. school stuff. Yeah, forty k is the same way. Like you can losing a limb just usually means cybernetics if you can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> Unless uh, it's like your neck, and then you just fucking die. Prior to the All Fathers birthing literally everything, were there things existing in the inky black void, or was Melur Manir uh, just the void's reaction to the All Fathers meddling? Was the All Dark Void the original state of things and completely bereft of literally anything else? Uh, yes. Uh, there was nothing. <laughs> there was quite literally nothing. It was it was bereft of everything. There was no light. There was no cold. There was no heat. It was non-existence until Aeor came. It's not. It's never revealed how Aeor came to be. Just that from this nothingness, something emerged, and it desperate to no longer be alone as it wandered the void seeking others like itself it it sort of drew upon itself it sort of pulled this these other senses from it it pulled heat and cold and it made the first stars and when it made the stars it pushed the void back it basically oh, obliterated the void and pushed it to the very edges of creation and in response Melormanir was born, this this void-born entity that basically acted in response to Aormanir's presence, much like white blood cells. So ultimately, what the Allfather did was, yes, selfish, but from that creation, so selfish. not necessarily evil. That ain't selfish, what the hell? My I man mean, got a little, it, like, jar of plasticine and made some shit up, and then he left. It's like the I mean, sort of bearing we'd have on, like, a fucking colony of ants. I mean, he did it for himself. It wasn't like, ah, yes, I will create things because that's a moral good. It's, I will create things because I'm lonely. Correct. So no Eldritch Entity lurking just deep in the darker? Well... There are things lurking deep within the void, things that have existed beyond and before time. And that's explained in that when the Allfather made the stars and plucked two of the oldest to give them to humanity, uh, to give them to elf and man, that from those wounds in the cosmos, from the, the wounds that were formed when he tore the, the stars from the sky, Entities emerged from them, things that are older than time, and they are referred to as the Blood Star and the Black Star. Yeah, well, Lorman here is the equal and opposite reaction to reality. Correct. <laughs> to creation, essentially. He sounds like a good lad to me. Y'all just haters. I mean, really, if, if you're before time in reality, what is good and or evil? My man was alone. He didn't know consequence. Consequence was yet to be invented. True. 
that there was something in the void prior to first creation? Absolutely. It just, it, it wasn't there. Like, there was always something. And that's, that's sort of like the idea that there was always something. You just, it was there and not there at the same time. It just wasn't given, like, I feel like it just became a coherent body once there was something to react to. I mean, I it see was always it just kind of floating around. It's essentially just ether, where it, you're basically in a non-discriminate thing. The Blood Star and the Black Star sound super friendly. I mean, eh. The Schrodinger's entity, that's perfect. Yeah, Schrodinger's entity. It was there and not there at the same time. person. So while the Allfather and created everything, he may not be, have been the first creator, and this may not be the first everything. That's a good way to look at it. Because who created him? That is the question. Who created the Allfather? Uh, Shari and elves are split between their worship of the same entity, though their practices vary wildly. They're known for their arcane prowess and abilities, as well as their occult fanaticism to their imprisoned queen. When picking this lineage, you'll decide from which society you come from. Those who worship Lashara are masters of glintstone sorceries and the arcane, while worshippers of RNA are masters of occult sorceries and demonic rituals. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Sizzle. How are you tonight? Hello. Very good. It's me, I'm Arcane Archer, I'm a good boy. Ooh, there's people. Oh shit, so there's a lot of people. Yeah, I'm out of here. Do you think prayers from the well, different drow factions me. tug, uh, Le Charnay? <laughs> Great. Uh, in different directions? Absolutely. Like, I imagine that the, 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 the Sharian elves that practice, like, Glintstone sorcery still worship Lashara. They still, they still worship her Don't shoot me. as, like, a savior. And as a result, it still feeds her power, as as all faith does. But like the worship and the the sort of prayers and seeking succor that comes from them is very wildly different from the those that worship her as RNA, who worship her as like the uh, the imprisoned queen. I really do love these new names. They're good as fuck. Goaded. With the souls. I like that the names line up that way. Lasharne is a good name for the two visage goddess. I imagine that's probably like a scholar name. Like, Lasharne is probably probably some scholar's explanation of the same entity. There's no stimulus, so no reflection, no need to respond, no need to be, just unaltered emptiness. Then came the Allfather. That's probably Matt, like Maylor's pitch. <laughs> and that son of a bitch created <laughs> my this landfill. I feel like Lasharne is a name that somebody would call her while trying to be respectful to both sides mm. of her face. So, like, if you're just, like, a scholar looking from the outside at these two different types of faith, they would refer to her as Lasharne. That's good. The neutral side. Yeah, it's just, like, the, the neutral middle. Like, I see both your perspectives. I'm trying to be respectful to both sides. Pick a so side! I say Lasharne. <laughs> and then, then they're just, like, <laughs> they put their knives up. Pick a side, you whore! I'm just a scholar. I'm just trying to understand the truth of the yeah. matter. Ooh. But I feel like yeah, they, it's our truth. If you're a human that like stumbled down there somehow and you hear about the two faces, it's just like, oh, I'm not a part of either of these faces, <laughs> so it's Lasharne. Fringe groups so of Sharian elves that worship both halves equally. Hmm. I want to give them, uh, so like how there's the three abilities, I want to give them the two choices for each. So for one ability, you, you choose either arcane focus or occult focus for another ability, arcane or occult and shit like that. So if you pick one, you're going to get the arcane side. If you pick the other, you're going to get the occult side. Ooh. 
I need to know these things. No, you don't. I do. I'm playing one. No, I need don't. to know. You don't need to know that. I do, though. No, you don't. I think both drive sure, things are like their superior dark vision, right? Oh, yeah. The superior dark vision is like their thing. They see hella far just because they live underground. We give both. A hundred and twenty dark vision, baby. I see forever. That's nice. Ow. Especially when our uh, view is gonna get nerfed while we test out the vision. I'm excited for that. I like realistic dark vision. Oh, that they can hit me through the wall. Please don't get your ass here. I was kind of pinned. They're gonna shoot me. She's arriving, Punch. her friend. Punches Chris. Are you still playing Ooh. League? No. Or have you made better choices? I didn't make better choices, but I'm not playing League. Oh. What choices have you made instead? It's a first step. Then it just a choice to not play League. <laughs> First step. It's usually the hardest. Hmm. Recognizing so, you have a problem. Chris, when is our party gonna not get a cursed item? I mean when we stop taking cursed items from dead bodies. Effectively. <laughs> but they're fun! The crown is a fun time. It's just all the boys in the party touch the crown. That's what makes it fun. This man fucking gave us the crown from Risk of Rain, and anyone who touched, <laughs> anyone who touched uh -oh. it got, like, charmed by it. Uh-oh. And all three of our the boys in our party have a grabby hands, so all three of them touched it, and they got into a very big fight about who got to wear it, and eventually just one of them just put it on their head. They Is weren't this... even fighting because they were charmed. They were just fighting because they were all greedy. Is this the, is this the crown that like, the more damage you do, the more money you get, but I when you take damage, the, you lose it all. I think that's the mechanics. That one, yeah. I used the design of it and then made up my own <laughs> rules. Oh, okay. Uh, blessing of the Shara. Despite the fact that Aelowene still stands, the Sharian elves derive their blessed sight from the crystal light of their queen. Depending on your worship, uh, Lashara worshippers have bright blue eyes, while RNA worshippers have bright red eyes. You have superior vision in dark and dim conditions. You can see in dim light within 120 feet of you as if you were in bright light, and in darkness as if you were in dim light. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wait, DM, can I message you something about that? Let's go for it. Da -da 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 -da. I got hold up my shit. Oh, where is this idiot? Oh, don't call him that. He's my fucking boy. That's why don't I get call him that. Idiot. I don't think he's in yet. How do you feel about giving the occultists some kind of protective fury flavored ability over their children slash allies? Uh, elaborate further, Agatine. Explain. Consolidate all children birth from creation against those who existed prior to it. All the Underdark Underground is kind of an understatement. Yes, that's why it's called the World Below. I sent you a DM about the eyeball thingy. If that's like fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. There really should be like. It is sort of derived from your worship, so. Mm. Less worship means less representation in your eyes. It also makes mm. it pretty apparent in that culture that you're not worshiping. <laughs> you're yeah. worshiping the wrong god. I wonder if races ever go on strike, like out with the gods, in with the jobs, you know? Ooh, wait. Also, idea. We did that already. Where? <laughs> 
The Age of Woe. Oh man, those were the cool guys. Those yeah, were the yeah. days. I don't know, Frank. Sounds like you kind of missed us. No, I'm just saying. Those were the days. <laughs> man, those guys were so cool. God Slayers and shit. Damn, bruh. Second. Well, over here, Goody Two Shoes boys <laughs> worshiping Yo, and being. Yo, third by. age campaign. When? What the fuck? You set me out to kill the fucking gods today. Chant me to the trenches now. Me lose. Finally, the occultists that they follow the queen, desperate to save her, and the mother furious to avenge her children. So having something work along, with, we could do something like that. I like a. Uh, I'm probably gonna steal from Brett because Brett's Rift Elves have some pretty cool abilities. So uh -oh. might do something like that. Odin. Uh, I'll be right back. My water's out, and I got a piss. Oh, okay. He's making piss. Piss too. I like how he always just lets the audience know that he has to go urinate. It's important to dictate what you're doing when you know when you're a streamer. Yeah, but you'd think you'd be like, hey, buy a break. No, I got a piss. I've got to unleash urine from my urethra. I have to go spread the yellow curse. I love that about my king. <laughs> Very well, very good. <laughs> the Gathian knows what's up. I mean, that really doesn't tell you if you're hydrating him enough. What you should do is ask him what color his pee was when he gets back. And that way you know. Yo, watch this. That's how you really show you care. Water the streamer. <laughs> me harasses the DM and his DMs. You can't escape me. Oh. He did. By taking a piss. Fuck! He, He's he making did. piss. He is making piss. He can't talk right now. Hats my own back, burps myself. Nice. Good job, Summer. A fellow. Chris, Chris taught me that. I get a little burpy stuck in my back, so he's like, "Burp yourself." What? Literally just smash your lungs and it'll come out. <laughs> I never thought to do that. He was like, he was like, just pound your chest one day. And I just had a burp, burp come out. And I'm like, wow, burping oh yourself God, how as long an adult been in still works. <laughs> burping yourself as an adult is still worse. Amazing. Yes, because it's not socially acceptable to throw up on yourself at that age. Really? No. I always throw up. I throw up cutely. <laughs> I don't make it dribble. It just come out. <laughs> Slash me pukes cutely. <laughs> me pukes cutely. <laughs> Slash me it shits on your porch cutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I fucking do when I like raid people on Twitch that I'm friends with, and my raid messages will be like stupid shit like farts cutely. Nice. Why am I cringe, dude? Because you are free. I'm cringe, and that's based. <laughs> Slash me eats booger cutely. So what's he doing with the drow vision? 
120. Yeah, let's... I was gonna say... I mean, yeah, that's drow. That's standard Eight. drow, yeah. It's just because they literally live in the dark. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you keep your superior... Like, you can see in the dark... Well, yeah, but we're also doing the nerfed darkness rules, so instead of 120, right. it'll be 60 for me. Okay. Oh, yikes. What's going to be the new vision rules? I don't know about those. It's essentially our dark vision's going to be halved, essentially, for what it actually is. Yeesh. So if you have 60-foot dark vision, you'll probably only be able to see 30. <laughs> Looks at Pim. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you have no dark vision, then it's just, ooh, we you really ain't seeing anything. I got light cancer. That's what I got. Darkness. Pim, my beloved. My teeth can see shit. Darkness. It's, like, it's kind of like the character I'm making now is just the exact opposite of Honey. Bow. In a way. Honey I'm back. couldn't see for shit in me. Hold I can back. see everything. Hold DM, back. I harassed you with a DM idea. Not again. I remember when I used to harass the DM with funny ideas. Oh yeah, you've been demoted to second citizen status, yeah. Yep. Yeah, It's yeah. true. It happened. I'm yeah. the old horse. First time, smiley face. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Sick! Understood! Uh -oh. I'm, just, I'm just a sneaky boy. I'm just a sneaky, sneaky trickster boy. Does that mean between the two of us, we are just going to take everything that isn't nailed down? I don't think he's a klepto. He's just a sneaky boy. Oh. We are going to have three rogues, it looks like, though. Oh, Jesus. If Naomi, Blast cannon party. If Naomi's still playing Avael. Well, because mm -hmm. Snapjaw has some levels in Rogue. I have three levels in Rogue, but I'm I'm not doing any more into Rogue. I'm stopping at three levels. The rest are going to be into Fighter. Um, and then Avael is full Arcane Trickster. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How's the grass taste, little man? Whichever rogue is best at dodging, that's going to be the new tank. <laughs> Unless one of our night maidens decides to be a fucking badass frontline tanker. I mean, the death domain cleric does get martial weapon proficiency. So that's pretty neat. Is that one of the ones that also gets heavy armor proficiency, or is that only, no. like, a uh, life domain? I think it's the only one that gets martial weapon proficiency, but not heavy armor. Uh-oh. I mean, it makes sense, though, like, you as a fucking knight maiden True. generally get <laughs> martial weapons. True. I feel like they deserve that. Yeah, you gain proficiency with martial weapons. Interesting. I'm surprised that you also don't get heavy armor. Yeah, de death clerics are more of the I cause death. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's also because your uh, your DMG ability was melee damage for divine strike. So yeah, you're... Mm. when they were making cleric. They they revised this since Tasha's, but when they were making clerics, they set in mind which clerics they wanted to be melee clerics and which clerics they wanted to be ranged clerics, and that's how Divine Strike acted differently, because every cleric gets Divine Strike, but some of them specifically say can trip, and some of them specifically yep. say weapon strikes. Yep. That's since been yeah. adjusted in Tasha's, so you can yeah. pick either or, but their base one was Divine Strike, so they wanted Death Clerics to be more melee based. Yep, because uh, for Pym, for Peace Clerics, at that level 8 feature, which is standard, is potent spellcasting, which gives the wisdom modifier to your cantrips. But it can also be replaced with Blessed Strikes, which gives you a d8 uh, to either 
cantrips, or weapon attacks. Yep, and then Divine Strike was just... It's essentially I mean, that, but necrotic. It's on each of your turns, if you hit something with a weapon attack, you can deal an extra D8 of necrotic damage. And then once you hit 14th level, it becomes a smite, so you get 2D8. Yep. Uh, yeah, Death Clerics were kind of made to be like, hoo-hoo, I'm going to give you the, uh, the bad touch, here's Inflict Wounds. Oh yeah, they were definitely the melee spellcasting and melee bonky bonky. It Death clerics are like, I'm going to touch you with inflict wounds all the time. That is what I do. Hey, you know, about time someone actually it actually made sense for someone to have inflict wounds, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so funny to me that Yorin, the life cleric, has inflict wounds. Or at least the ability. Anytime he wants to just sit be like, you know that whole peace thing? Yeah, I'm done with that. I need to roll something. Can I use dice rolls in here? What's the command slash roll? Uh, there should be a bot at the top of the Discord that you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think Cause... of, uh, Glintstone Barrier? I gotta read it. <sighs> Your oh. have mastered the art of Glintstone sorceries, something taught to all Sharian children. While you aren't wearing armor, you can calculate your armor class to 13 plus your dex. You can use a shield and still gain this benefit. Oh, so it's just like free mage armor. That's pretty fucking good. I like that a lot. Ah, uh, yes. Join me, Drow, in fighting naked. <laughs> Sorry, what? Huh? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> what did I used to do damage-wise on... Leesk for fucking return to goblins. So it's 1d10 for every additional slot. So that was a fourth level would be plus three. So it'd be 6d10, which turns into 12d10. Rolling 12d10. I mean, 49 damage. Ooh, just... That's four ones? What the fuck? Oof. One lucky. I'm this rolling it again. This does explain why Drow would like to fight in like bikini armor. Rude. Those, <laughs> Finally. those like glam metal hair, yeah. you know, exactly. 80s covered. Quote, priestess garb, unquote. <laughs> yeah, fucking the one two cleric boogaloo is just hold person a humanoid. You walk up to them, you touch them with inflict wounds, massive damage. Huge. I mean, yeah, you do that. First level, first level inflict wounds. On an, a creature that's held person, that's sixty ten already, which is ridiculous. Indeed, indeed, cultists beware. Clerics are strong. Clerics are strong. Like one of the strongest in PvP settings, in my opinion. Surprisingly, they get a lot of spells. They let it get a lot of good spells, and they can just switch out, you know, for whatever the mm. occasion suits them. Because God. Well, like, if you're playing a life cleric, not only do you heal extra, yeah. you get you get that heavy armor. You True. hold person somebody, and you can walk up to them, and you can still do that inflict wounds damage, and you're gonna be hard to hit because you can hold a shield and wear heavy armor. You want to hear something crazy? Hmm. Yorin specifically, because he's a dragonborn noble, has proficiency in martial weapons, too. Oh! <laughs> because he's quirky. We love dragon dad. <laughs> we love dragon. <laughs> the party just- a party of, like, children just look at him and go, that's a whole dad right there. Yeah, he's definitely got dad vibes. So, when you pick Drow, do you just pick one side and then you get all of the boons from that one side? Yeah. Or can you pick and choose? No, you get it from one side. Okay. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. The question is... 
What kind of night making do I want? Thinking. Do I want to be really cheesy and be a raven? Smile. Full camp. I love the Raven Queen. The Raven Queen. I love the Raven Queen. I was gonna base it off of like whatever bird had the largest wingspan and be like a really big night maiden, and then I realized it was the albatross. And I was like, mm. I don't know about that one. I love the idea of you guys playing Night Maidens. Thanks. And I naturally will play a Crystal Tiefling. Oh, oh my god. Of course. Oh my god. I've yet to tell DM. But it's pretty much a done deal. <laughs> Wasn't the Scribe Wizard also a done deal? That well, yeah, but not for this game. I'm going to keep him for a flagship campaign. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is that why you- wait, so are you a wizard or a sorcerer now? He's a uh, sorcerer. sorcerer. Okay. What type of sorcerer again? A dragon- draconic thing. Oh! Draconic bloodline. Rude. It is a Zig classic, and we are in Tiros. Everybody loves dragons and heroes. I hate dragons. Except for the fucking chromies. I hate dragons. <laughs> Every so single Tarotium within a 30 mile radius. Who said that? I'm just so sick of them. They're everywhere. I'm so sick of these fucking dragons everywhere, dude. There's too many dragons in There's my dungeons too and many dragons. Fucking dragons. How dare there be this many dragons in my Dungeons and Dragons, well, you motherfucker! Go up, act smug, steal my coin, and then leave. So, Fuck what I'm going way. for is he'll have, like, sort of dragonborn-like traits to his tieflingness as part of his uh, ancestry. What? So instead of, like, entirely being white, white-skinned, They'll have, like, some protrusions of scales as they level up and further progress into the draconic ancestry of a subclass. He wants to be a crystal tiefling. Oh, that was a joke. <laughs> oh, that was I'm... a joke? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is your I keyboard doing? I don't know your sarcasm yet. Okay, I don't know it. I thought you were serious, to be fair. I thought you were serious as well. Because you said it's a done deal, so I'm like, it, oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, but I, b before that I said I haven't even brought it up to the DM, but it's pretty much a done deal. Like, <laughs> that's, come on. <laughs> uh, which type of tiefling did, did you settle on? Because out of the fucking 14 different types. That's the thing. I wanted to go for an Asmodeus tiefling, but then I, I thought, oh, there was only four. No, no, there's <laughs> more. <laughs> So you, fool. you fucking fool. Uh, there's you a fucking lot. Cool. There's I one for like this. every arch devil ever. So hey, but it's so cool that they give you innate spell casting because that means I'll have more shit to do, and I won't run out of resources as fast. That is true. The innate spell casting is very very nice on some yeah. of them. Like yeah. the, I think it's the the Levistus gets like Ray of Frost. And they get armor of Agathus, and they get darkness, which is darkness is just great for getting away. Like you yeah. ever need to get it's... away from a situation, you cast darkness on yourself, and you just dip the other way. Yeah, that's that's your squidding tactic. Like, nope. Starlight. But... Uh, Sharians possess a unique variant of the face step ability Starlight. that most elves have. As a bonus action, you can magically teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. You can use this trait a number of times, equal to your proficiency bonus, you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. When you reach third level, your Starlight gains an additional effect. This effect requires a saving throw. The DC equals 8 plus proficiency bonus plus int, wisdom, or charisma. You choose one when you select the race. 
Brilliant Starlight is your improved version. When you use your Starlight ability, one creature you can see within five feet of you before you teleport must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be dazed. This effect lasts until the end of your next turn. How do you get Brilliant Starlight? Uh, it's by reaching level three. Okay. As a, uh, a Lashara worshiper. Mm. Okay. Now I gotta go make piss again. Damn you, tiny bladder! <laughs> punch yourself. In the bladder. P-check punches your kidney. <laughs> I'm just Ooh, sitting red now. so happy my testing's over. You shouldn't be. Nice. It means there's real responsibilities now. I can deal with, like, taking calls and stuff like that. I get terrible test anxiety, bro. If and after the DM does define those crystal tieflings, I, I might make one. I don't know. Depends on what happens next. I want to give them proficiency in Arcana and Relic. I would say maybe give the choice between either or. Because not a lot of races get... Well... That have a lot of like shit like that get two free skills. Sizzle, there's a question from the Legion for you. <laughs> well, Legion, think of it like a hand with three fingers. So there's sort of like this palm thing in the middle that connects three of them. With a, with a yellow maddening eye in the middle. There you go. Oh, a maddening eye in the center of your bacon. Yeah, you know, yep.
for their I'm connection. Just, I'm just your humble moth person. Who is apparently also a witch. Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds about accurate. I know those moths are up to something. Legion, let me put it this way. The more cursed it looks, the better. Are cat-like eyes feasible on tieflings? Yes. What about scaly skin? Brother, we're talking about tieflings. What about like a sort of lingering smell of like sulfur or brimstone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all normal. That's tiefling like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, very good. So we can start with scales. Very good. Kind of like um, you played World of Warcraft, yeah? I have, have you? Uh, like the, you know, kind of like the demon hunters, how they kind of have that like one skin you can choose where there's like those kind of like thick scaled like hide portions. I like to think of it like that. Scheming bacon. Legion, have you have you seen the three fingers from Elden Ring? <laughs> I can give you a reference picture <laughs> if you want it. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 make it organic. Organic bacon? Yes. Yeah. Second whisper at the table today, my god. Oh. Watching the crit rolls. There's been two private whispers. Gasp. A gasp. Secrets. Scheming. I love secrets. I wanna find them all and then keep them. Look at them like my collection of shinies and baubles. I got brownies. I feel better about myself now. Meh. Oh. Brownies are good. Are a good vehicle for self-esteem. Oh fuck! These are bomb. Ooh. Are they regular? Do they have stuff with them or? Oh, they're just really good brownies I got from the meat market. Nice. I guess the place you get. Brownies from the meat market. They have a little bakery as like a side Indeed. thing that the wife who owns it makes. It's a wife and her husband's like meat market. And she likes to bake and he does all the meat stuff. The meat's more popular, but her baked goods are still nice. You see her go back and chop the brownies with a oh. butcher's knife? 
<laughs> Good fucking brownies. I have my jerky now too, Chris. I'm so happy. You're are you out of jerky again? Yes. Either that or I have like a couple pieces left. Go get your jerky fill up. <laughs> Trapper drown. Jesus. Cause you ain't getting any of my jerky. Oh, that reminds me, DM. I do need another character sheet so I can make Tegan. I know. Thank you. I mean, a chocolate brownie and a meatloaf are not that different. True. <laughs> I was sad, though. I, I was going to buy uh, ribs while I was there today, but... I mean, what were... if... What if the baker's wife uses the blood as an egg substitute? I'd be proud of her. Yes. Maybe that's why they're so good. Mm, it's so blood sad, brownie. Though, because it's it's really, really warm here this week. Like but like a comfortable warm. So we've been grilling the past two days and I was like, okay, if they have ribs at the meat market, <laughs> I'm gonna get ribs. And we got there ten minutes after opening. Ribs were already all sold out. No. That's how fucking popular this meat market is. We were we were 10 minutes late since it's opening. All the ribs gone. The giant and the dragon have a child? I don't see why not. They'd be an interesting looking fella. They'd get be each a other. big dragon. <laughs> have you seen the sorrowfish swarm? Uh, no, but I know what a sorrowfish is. Uh, I believe a cat eyed tiefling was suggested they're descended from a Rakshasa. That would make sense. Uh, Arcane Studies. The studious nature of your people affords them greater understanding of the primeval current and all its shapes and facets. You gain proficiency in Arcana. If you're already proficient in Arcana, or gain proficiency again in Arcana later on, you instead gain expertise. Ooh. Holy shit. So, so far, the Lashar worshippers have Glintstone Barrier, Brilliant Starlight, and Arcane Studies. So they get a they get a scope proficiency, they get natural armor, and they get their their teleport ability does a daze effect. Mm -hmm. Neato neato. Usually elves like the elves also get like weapon proficiencies, like each individual race generally gets like a weapon proficiency. So I was sort of torn on that as well. I don't know if I still want to do the whole like. I don't know if it would be too much giving them their innate spell casting as well, as well as the teleport. That seems like it could be a bit much. Yeah. I think the spell casting ones would be more for the occult side anyways. I love weapon proficiencies on race. Um... I mean, they're ultimately weapon proficiencies are cool, but they're ultimately null and void. Yeah. In most instances. But you can what? still get away with some good shit. You know what I mean? What do drow get? They get rapier, short swords, and hand crossbows. Which the only thing that might be like rare in that is like the hand crossbows. Which can be useful if you're like a drow sorcerer to have that, because hand crossbows are pretty neat. You have a glenstone <laughs> weapon? I plan on making some. Hee <laughs> hee. 
What if I... I teehee excitedly. I give them... A unique spell that's only for this. So I give, like, Briars of Sin to the occult. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I give a Glintstone Shard to the Shard Worshipper. Just like... Would make it, like, a weaker version of magic. Because, let's be real, Glintstone, Pebble, and shit like that is just magic missile. It really do be. So you could make like maybe a cantrip version of ma like a, a smaller damaged magic missile. Hmm. Maybe like a instead of three d four plus three, maybe it's like a two like a one d six force damage like cantrip. Is there a cantrip that does force damage? Or I don't believe so. Other than Eldritch Blast, I'm not sure. I must say. Oh my god. Jose. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, I say, Raiders. I love you. Oh I god. Love you. Oh That's lord. Rough. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for the raid and thank you for trusting me with your community. That's incredibly kind of you. Um, we are currently working on the elves in my setting. So. Uh, welcome. You're you're gonna hear a lot of theory crafting and a lot of lore. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, you had a good stream. What'd you guys stream? Hashtag I forgot. Uh oh. Point to say that's my wife. Mario Kart. I tilted. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Did you tilt while playing with tilt controls? But I'm using tilt controls. I'm 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 using tilt controls. I'm using tilt controls. Good luck. <laughs> Sword burst does force. Mm. Does it? Oh uh, yeah, it might. Well, I like yeah. never see people use sword burst, so I'm not surprised. Honestly. Yeah, one d six force damage, and oh, AOE. Like the, yeah, it's like just unfriendly. That's the only one that I can think that actually does force damage, though. Force is a pretty rare uh, Ah, damage. you know what? You know what? We are going to give them a 1d6 cantrip, because I'm then going to give the Briar of Sins to the occult one, which is an AoE 1d6. <clears throat> yeah. Do birds exist in Adis? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> As government I was drones. reading a question from Legion. <laughs> Legion, don't do that. Don't do that to Masay. That's just rude. I love Masay. Dead Deadbeats are forever infecting your chat, frowned. That's what you get. Oh we're, my God. We're, we're becoming one. You guys need to chill out. Fuck yeah, so we'll yeah. do we'll do Glintstone Shard is their ability. Oh, Chris, you should probably ping the group chat see if we're good for tomorrow. I mean, I did a couple of days ago, didn't I? Oh no, it was Masay that did. I just like to do a little poke in there. I just like a little poke the day before, just in case. Well, I don't, I don't see the briar, the briar doing force damage. I see it doing like necrotic damage. Yeah, or bleed. You have bleeding mechanics. No, you do have bleeding yes. mechanics. <laughs> yes, we do. I, I just didn't have. I just, I remembered them, but I didn't have to deal with them because I was playing a construct. <laughs> that is very true. Uh oh, <laughs> looks you. down at mortal flesh. So I forgot about them because I was like, wait, I don't have to deal I with forgore. that construct. <laughs> I, I remember now. I remember now. You do have bleeding DM stuff. pulling out his barbed knife. I hope you're ready. You have flesh now. I can kill you. Pulls out 
other hand has like a so smelly right. sock. I hope you're ready for blight as well. Oh. Boodle, boodle. oh no, my bones! I don't, get the, I don't get affected by the spells that, like, constructs have disadvantage on the save thing anymore, though. There are a few of those. Like, yeah, think... like, constructs and undead. Yeah. Sometimes have something where it's like, well, if you're one of these, uh, go fuck yourself. Wasn't that Apparently. one of the ones with Shatter? I think Shatter was Shatter. one of them. <laughs> like, constructs have disadvantage on the spell save. Creatures made yeah. of inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal has disadvantage on the saving throw. So yeah, constructs. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Just to be certain, the birds aren't just constructs made by the Alpha, they just survey all of Adis's inhabitants, as you know, Odin and the I don't think Odin made all the birds. I definitely know that, like, if you saw a raven, don't be surprised if Odin was watching you through type deal. Oh, yeah. I, I think so the night mains are working for the feds. So, what's up with ravens and the like? Odin's ravens and the Raven Queen. Do they have like beef? Yes. Do they co-parent <laughs> ravens? Oh, you just see two ravens duking it out. Oh, that's weird. Uh, I don't know what they're fighting about? There's a there's there's something to be said about like the Night Maidens, which are a form of Valkyrie, but serve the Raven Queen. And then there are the All Fathers Valkyries. Um. And there's this, there's this like understanding that it's it's generally easier to tell when it is an all father's raven because of the like the numerous markings that it'll have. Oh, and those probably haven't been seen in a long time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell if they work for Saren by the fact that they exist. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> You can tell that they work for Saren by the fact that they're not already plucking your fucking eyes out. <sighs> That's no, no. It still fucks me up that her name is Saren. Why? <laughs> because I was like my one of my most popular D and D characters' and names. Oh, nice. Action, Saren. So every time I hear it, I just get caught a little bit off guard, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready for me to screw it up and call her Sharon by accident? Sharon! 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 The Queen of Death, Sharon! <laughs> That's your fucking Night Maiden's accent, Sharon! Sharon! <laughs> we worship the Raven Queen, Sharon. I love you, Sharon! The masked one, <laughs> the Reaper, the end. Imagine you're fucking praying to her and you just go, I love you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Sharon, bless me. Bless this night, maiden. Bless this mess, yeah. Sharon. Coo-hoo. <laughs> Time to go looking for art references. Fuck me. Yeah, all right. Dude, I love glintstone magic. Let's fucking go. I love re magic rock. I love magic pebble. I love you, tiny, funny pebble thing. <laughs> I'd kill okay. for you. I lied. Maybe... Maybe... Glintstone Pebble isn't Magic Missile, but it definitely is Magic Stone. <laughs> uh. The cantrip. This this uh, suggests that the Drow on both sides have um, old stone geezers who like mine for them. Yeah, and are really <laughs> slow, but also can't be stunned in any way, and. Will pummel you if they you can only their hurt them. On you. you can only hurt them with bludgeoning damage. <laughs> they, if they get their hand really on you. They slow. will mine your chest they, open. They have like a fifteen move speed, but if they grapple you, they just do like two d ten damage as they slam the shit, <laughs> as they s <laughs> brutalize you. Also, I know this was a conversation from a few hours ago, but it's been like stuck in my head. 
Um, when we were talking out. about when we were talking about the snow elves, all Snows. I could think about are the uh, not the frost lords, but the the frost. Oh God, what the fuck are the characters? They're in Elden Ring. They're in the frost area. They they all like wander around. They're really tall. They uh, have an hop arcs? around really gracefully. Gracefully, are they the the ice albinorics? Maybe. The 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 sort of the the women that sort of have to like lay down and they ride on the back of wolves and stuff. No, I will show you the ones I mean. Oh, fucking Elden Ring Ice Area enemies because I can't run it. Remember the name of the fucking. Of course, I have to go to Extra Life. Me 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 me. me. Stabs Fextra Life, the website. Oh my, god. oh my god. I don't like the people who make it it's stupid. They're stupid, they're stupid, and I hate them. For a hot minute, minute, I thought you didn't say Fextra Life. I thought you said something else. Oh. <laughs> I was like, why are you going there? Oh. Never mind. I'm stupid. What's the name? What's the fucking name? I'll get there eventually. Name a woman. <laughs> Name, a, Name woman. a woman. Any woman. Name For a, a dog. woman. Come on. Where are you? And I'm so sore. Oh my god, you really don't realize how many enemies are in Elden Ring until you have to find a very specific one. Needle meat haystack. Like, I'll know it as soon as I see it. It's just fucking getting there. That's them. Sort of. Should it be a 1d6? Like, Firebolt's a 1d10. Eldritch Blast yeah. is a 1d10. Yeah, so I was that. I was saying 1d6 before because it was force damage, and force damage is inherently strong. Because there are very, very few things that ever have resistance to force damage, but there are lots of things that have resistance to fire damage. Mm. How so about the reason I make it a 1d8? 1D that's fair. If it only does damage, 1d8 seems fair. Curveball 2d4? Mmm. It... Oh shit. Mm. Oh my god, that's Two twice as many bad. dice. I was gonna say, that's powerful than some normal cantrips, though. Oh my uh, god. These are the ones that I was talking about. The Knights of Zamor. I'm putting them... Ooh, I don't want to put them in TOS talks. I want to put them in text chat. <laughs> these ones that, like, oh. jump around and they, like, spray ice around. at you. Those freaks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The war, the the warriors. The, that's what when you were describing what you might make ice elves, I was like thinking of those. Oh. Your setting needs a flavor of Leonin. Yes, I am well aware, and we're we'll be working on them because Leonin play a big part in Tyros. There's a, literally a high lord that is uh, a Leonin. He's a Valagar black mane. More like a high lug. All right. <laughs> yes, I have talks. Hey, it's a stick up. Pulls out what? Pulls, god, he's back. Pulls out gun, points at everyone. Oh my god! What do you want? Slash Don't me. Throw shit in the, the end. Slash me. Panics. Put 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 the money in the in the basket. Slash me overturns tables. Put, put the money in the basket right right over there. I don't have any money. All I have is homebrew. Oh, just kidding. I'm just, I'm giving you guys finger guns. See? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, I committed uh, vandalism for nothing. I fooled everyone. Chris, hide me from this man. Hide me. A true illusionist. <laughs> Summer, I can't see you. You're already hiding. Why do you say that? Because I'm so short. <laughs> I mean, aside from minimum damage. <laughs> Nice try, Bart. But 1d8 is... and 2d4. Like, minimum damage being 2 versus the 1. Mm. Uh, 
No, Summer, because we're online and I can't see you. You thought I was going to make a short joke? You should have. Should no, have. No. It's the okay. No, short. he's right. If, if my husband says you should have, it probably should have. I deserve it. What the <laughs> fuck? But it's fine. You were just proving that you were the bigger man, Wink. <laughs> and that's why I married him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we're married. Woo! I cute. hate him! <clears throat> Ground, how, how Ground, how, how are you this focused? What do you mean? <laughs> like, I would be hearing all of this and just being like, I'm, I'm done working. Like, I can't do it anymore. How are you so centered right now? You're rolling dice. You're making calculations. Everyone's talking in your ear. How are you? In his lane, focused? thriving. I, I think he's. Yeah. I'm he's also a, listening to music right thriving. now. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I don't know. I think I used the chaos. Oh. He zones out. I think it's. I think it's really nice because I can tune in sometimes and listen to what you guys are saying, and then listen to. Uh, this is a stick up. Give me all your money, and then I I tune back out. I'm like, all right, one d eight or two d four. Listen, he's, just, he's used to being surrounded by people with raving ADHD. He's learned to just tune it out. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't do it. I get because douched. we're the ones with ADHD. <laughs> we're those Not people. Nodders. Yeah, we are the ones. Oh, if. Sorry. If it were to do something else, yeah, what else should Glintstone do? The shard, at least. If we were to say lower it to D6, what effect be, should it have? Do you want to be uh, funny? Uh, yes. It should, uh, when it hit, if it hits someone, they glow in a five foot radius and can't go invisible. <laughs> oh, Easy. hear me out. That's good. Hear me out. Piercing in a line. Isn't shard stone just magic stone? No. Kind of. Uh, no. <laughs> if you want to make it like special, though, you could have it like one target piercing. Well, that would have to be like a different like spell, right? Because the we're glint stone. To... Hmm? We're trying to make like a cantrip from scratch. Oh, I have a system for that. Yeah. Do you, do you want it? Yes. All right. Let me give you the deck. Oh shit! The deck. He came in here to rob us, but now he's giving us stuff. Uh, yeah, I did a cantrip creation. I actually did a cantrip creation in a system in like the beginning of phase two. Oh shit. It's where the Mordove was born. It was where the Mordove was born. <laughs> I fear it every day. But that was also a specialized uh, card they assembled as part of the spell. Uh, oh, you said they get Rao get Fairy Fire? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And they get Darkness, and then they what get... What if we blend that into the light. cantrip, where you need to make a save or get... Rich. DM, that's just what I should put chance here. Like they just can't go invisible. I, w I would take away the advantage part of it for sure. Cause that seems a little strong. Well, it's save or get the effect. So you would hit, you deal the damage. They need to make a save. If they fail the save, next attack against them is at advantage. Just the next attack, so like a guiding bolt thing. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So like a guiding. So bolt one attack. Thing. Mm -hmm. So a really good true strike. A really good true strike. Ooh, I would love a really good true strike. It'd be a oh. it'd be a one d six that scales, so like two d six at level five, blah blah blah. And they need to make a save. And if they fail that save, the next attack against them will have advantage. That's cute. I would Wait, say. I said just for your vision. What did you say? I would say nerf the damage then. We did from a D8 what? to a D6. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I still had one D8 on the brain. Oh. Yeah, I'm down to I'm down to make it a D6, but it has the the sort of guiding bolt or the true strike effect. What's the is range? It, that is the it, question. 
It feels like we're making a silvery barbs adjacent. Here you go, Crown. I dropped a zip file on your lap. Hey. It's a virus. Enjoy. It's a virus. Like the one I got earlier. Yep. Yeah. So, things. let me know when you're looking at that deck, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's up. And how it oh, works. Oh, yeah, I am looking at it. This, pretty, this looks pretty cool. Yeah. So... Uh, if I remember correctly, it was simple enough. Um, you should see, you should have a damage type, elemental type, uh, or element type, modifier type, uh, range type. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, it, yeah, it's it's those four. Uh, your spell is required to have uh, all those four. Or sorry, it's supposed to do... Yeah, you can only do one of each card is what it was. Um, so you can't have like multiple types. You can't have multiple damage types. You can't have multiple modifiers. You have to choose at least one of each. And you have 10 points uh, to create a cantrip. Oh. So you choose one of each type card. The total number has to equal 10. You could only have one of each type. So you could have a card that just deals damage and that's it. And then that'll be the formula for it. Let's see. Okay. Right. Your system is a D20 damage cantrip. Yes. That was a, an additional bonus effect that a spell caster um, discovered. And it was one of a kind. And it specifically uh, was meant to be a bit more powerful than normal cantrips because it was history was being built that day. And so now the Mordo of Handshake is known far and wide in IO, so. But the the deck of cards I gave you doesn't have any of those bonus cards, so it is, it is meant to be balanced. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Just in case you wanted some help with uh, building cantrips. Because, yeah, a bunch of people have built their own cantrips with that. Round with... an another question while you're thinking about it. Yeah. What's going to be their inherent uh, spellcasting uh, ability for this? For the uh... arcane, would you make it int? You'll probably you'll probably pick it just like you will starlight. So into wisdom or charisma. Okay. Is this when you select the race? Okay. Not int. Interesting. Interesting. What's great is I'm gonna make this, and then we're gonna come back to my magic system, and I'm gonna immediately destroy this and have to redo it again. <laughs> Welcome. Super yes. Not if I not if I start playing it first. Fuck you. I'm a drow this I'm a drow. You think I'm that stopped him? You think that stops him? Fuck you, DM. I'm playing a drow. It's too late. I'm already taking all the abilities. No, I mean like changing Glintstone. Like oh. we've already broken the magic down into the four groups: arcane, occult, primal, and divine. So figuring out where it sits in those how players can gain it. Where do they gain it from? Is it a unique thing that only certain races get? Like how Silvery Barbs is an arcane specific spell and you have to go to college to get it type deal? Oleg. Well, maybe like Glenstone could be something like it's less like raw magic itself and more so something that increases your magic once channeled through it. I so it could it could apply to like all of the schools in a way with this new cantrip system you can't trip stop your your scrumptious rating is going down second <laughs> by second good night cosmos rest well oh i literally thought you were like saying good night to the <laughs> person who made the bad joke i was like god damn that's <laughs> it <laughs> Holy shit. Go back. <laughs> get out. Oh, it's gone. Good <laughs> night. It deserves to be banned, but... <laughs> Good night. You're like, yeah. what the Good. fuck? And for what? that, you're tonight's biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs>
As someone playing a wizard slash cleric in your system, I can't wait to see this new magic system. Me either. This sounds yeah. exciting. What is void damaging? Oh, yeah, that's... um. Well, that's not a, so much a thing anymore in Phase 3, but it was in Phase 2. Oh, he sees you? Yeah. Slorps. Oh, you, you you just assumed you thought you were a god of old world void? Well, no, I just had the void spells from last phase, and it's like, no, they don't deal void damage anymore. <laughs> nope. Mr. DM, did you look at that quote-unquote prestige class? Because I would be able to take it next level. Yo, you got you got prestige classes? I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 I asked for Mystic Third, Brett. Oh. Oh the oh the Mystic Therouge from Third Edition, or is there mm -hmm. one in Fifth Edition? There is somebody uh, souped it up to Fifth Edition, and I asked for it. Oh. Hey, Crown, what do you think about that? Puts microphone up your nose. Yeah, while well, you're busy working on other stuff. Oh, Adds a second <laughs> mic. <laughs> you're not busy writing or anything, right? You're not busy. Or it shoves microphones straight up your <laughs> mustache. Just push it up your nostrils. Rubs it around in your caterpillar. Rubs it around. The people want to know. Come on. S circles. Yeah, I'll get back to you. Spills. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So oh calm gosh. under pressure. Well, I'm I'm spent. I, there's nothing I can do here. I'm using your system. Uh, this <laughs> this uh, this cantrip would work. It's nine points. Yep. And it works surprisingly well, doesn't it? Yeah, I was actually like going through, and I was like, "Oh shit, okay, this is <laughs> <laughs> <ain't> too bad." <laughs> it's pretty balanced. Flintstone shard. Flintstone shard. I love him. I eat the glintstone. No, get out of your mouth. No, Plus I one. got glintstones Whoa. on my bow. I have glintstone on my bow. Let me eat it. Yep. <laughs> it's mine. Summer, if I'm sending you these dice, I swear to God, if what? I find out you choked on the dice, I'm gonna, you know, as soon as I get them, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna put them in my mouth. It's just the way of it. It's how you christen the dice. I must use all six senses. Must know. It's not even, I don't even do it on purpose. It just kind of happens. Okay? Oh my God, they just ended I, up in the mouth. No, I like to, I, I have oral, I have oral asphyxiation. And so I like to put things in my mouth and I have my dice on my desk. So sometimes when I'm just rolling them in my hand, they'll end up in my mouth. And... Summer, <laughs> these are sharp edged resin dice. They will yeah, slash you. Yeah, and so you. is this one. I have oh. a sharp edged resin one right here. And oh. put it in my mouth. That's why. That's uh, and, uh, and that's and that's that's what I, you got me for our anniversary. Wow. Yeah, you got the chew toys, right? Yeah, that man right there, he bought me two toys, and I don't That's chew smart. on them. And, and one of them's like a nipple, and I pop it instead because it makes a poppy sound. Isn't that just a pacifier? No, it's not a pacifier. It's hard to explain, but it has like a little... It's like uh, those those little rubble or rubber half circles that you flip, and then you put them on the ground, and then they'll pop eventually really high in the air. Oh! It has like one of those in the middle, so I just like... Pressing down on it. It's like an yeah, ADHD it, toy, kind of. Is it, oh, isn't that like a bottle top? Kind of. Okay, oh. see, I said I said I don't put it in my mouth, but I just put it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what I mean. I'm just kind of sitting here and stuff will go in my mouth. Do you, like, press really... it against the inside of your cheek? No, I just see like... See if I just, no, I just like to bite things. That's okay, bud. We all got our thing. I just like to bite things, Things will go feral. We all got our thing. It's just why I'm a VTuber, so people can't see me biting random things in my office. Crown, Cr what's your thing? Shoves microphones straight Ooh. up your mouth. <laughs> uh, combing my mustache. True. <laughs> True. This motherfucker has two combs. Which he uses at the same time. I, I, I brush my beard. I get it. I sometimes have to stop what I'm doing just to, just to comb my mustache. <laughs> that, that makes sense. 
gotta keep it in pristine condition. That's I how we first met in person. I don't know what my thing is. I think I'm just perfect. God, I hate you. Uh, I think I'm. I like tacos a lot. Is that he's can just, that be a thing? He's just simply no. built different. I'm definitely built different. <laughs> I'm built by tacos. It's not a good thing. I bet your thing is that you talk to yourself. What the fuck? I feel I like that's, that's all it. DMs. All hey, DMs that's like why. talk to themselves it's... and practice voices. <laughs> I was it's like, pretty safe. Yeah, I was like, no, no oh shit. <laughs> you gotta talk to yourself. You gotta, you gotta figure out some, some stuff. Make the DM RP with himself. It's funny. Uh, Do play with your dolls. Glintstone Shard. The Glintstone serves as a conduit, launching swift magical projectiles at foes. Make a ranged spell attack against the target on a hit. The target takes 1d6 force damage. A creature hit by the spell must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or become illuminated by shard light. This effect lasts until the start of your next turn, ending up the creature if they're not hit. The spell's damage increases by 1d6 when you reach 5th level, 11th level, and 17th level. So they're just illuminated by the light and you don't get the advantage on the next attack? I forgot to write that. Okay. Oh, you are doing that. Oh, shit. Yeah, because it fits within the, the 10 points. God damn. It's just a less strong guiding bolt, kind of. Yeah. It's like a baby guiding bolt. Baby bolt. Actually, All right, I'm going to go that. I'm gonna go look for some dinner and let my brain die because I'm I did D&D &D all day. So. Hell yeah, brother. Thank you again for the session earlier. Did you have fun, Sumner? I did. I had a lot of fun wasting all my third level spells trying to get our bug to come home. <laughs> oh, my bug son, he's out there killing guards. <laughs> no, come Hello. home. Hello. <laughs> Is this a collect call? I, I saved my fourth level, though. That's what I'm happy with. Just wild session. All right, bye, guys. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Who was that guy? How did the raccoons keep getting in here? I don't know. It's just so weird. More people. That's it. I'm calling an exterminator. Doggy door open. Sorry. Gotta stop leaving the doggy door open, man. I just want friends. That's why you have the dog. Yeah, that's why you got the dog. The dog loves you unconditionally. There's no way to talk to Zebus. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Excuse you, rat. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Excuse me. You broke a secret rule. You burped on stream. Now you must die. No, I just don't burp on my own stream. I don't burp on other people's. That's backwards. I just forget sometimes. Well, it's like how I'm not allowed to be funny on my own stream, so, so I have oh. to get all my feral energy out on other people. I don't know why, but when I'm the one streaming, I feel like I have to be proper and more, like, serious. But then as soon as I'm on somebody Ew. else's stream, I'm like, Hey, you hear about this dick and ball joke? Yet you are never proper or serious on your own stream. What do you mean? Jesus. <laughs> I mattered the illusion. Please just let me have the illusion of it, Chris. Fucking Please, counter spell, bro. I mean, you can you can dream anything you want to. Yeah. Don't make it true. Please, he's bullying no. me. DM, make him stop. <laughs> I can't take it to alimony. DM, make up. DM, make out with him so he shuts the fuck up. <laughs> Stick your tongue in his mouth now. Please. Oh my god. <laughs> he has rim world items. He has rim world items. Oh my god. <laughs> Is this too much? Yes. I mean, it depends on how much you soup up the cultists or the occult ones. Give it to me instead. Is it too much for a race. You should see the shit that race is getting Pathfinder. Brown this is get. not Very too dark, much compared dark. to them. I mean, it's a different system, though. They need all that stuff. <laughs> That's ominous. We're also fucking... Okay. Edis goes hard. Edis like to hurt us. I'm talking about the Pathfinder stuff, though. 
Yeah, but I look Pathfinder like hits hard. That's true. Good. We're also fourth edition fans in this house. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> You're gonna hurt my feelings. He loves fourth edition, Chris. You gotta be kind to him. All of my magic items are from fourth edition. Be rooting, be tooting, but most of all, be kind. I get a racial based feat. Eh. 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 I'd still rather take Elven Accuracy. True. So they're not getting Dancing Light, Fairy Fires, and Darkness. They're also not getting their proficiencies. What they're getting is a Teleport. And they're getting a Cantrip. And one proficiency in uh, Arcana. I'd say that's fair because Rao get proficiency in perception. So you're just kind of changing that. Do they still have the sunlight sensitivity? Well, oh yeah, deer drow? Are they going to have sunlight sensitivity? Great question. Don't say next question. Don't do it. Because that's supposed to be one of the reasons why they're super, like, kitted out, is because yeah. sunlight sensitivity is a big negative at times. You know, when it's daytime. You know, when it's daytime and you're traveling and anything attacks you or you have to interact with anyone. Can't you just negate it in 5th edition? Uh, I mean, that's up to DMs. I don't think there's like an official rule. Yeah, I don't think there is like official rule or and or way. Like, so if, if like you said, like, hey, DM, I'm wearing this really expensive cloak I bought. Could that negate my sunlight sensitivity like that? Maybe. But I, I would say no, because you're still trying to look into bright light. True. Like I, you... I, I'm playing a drow with the full knowledge of like we're a dungeon delving campaign for the most part, so I expect us to be in like a dungeon a lot of the time. So that's why the sunlight sensitivity thing didn't bug me too much. But, like, that is supposed to be the big downside of Drow in general, is their sunlight sensitivity. That's why they're kitted out with the spells and such. doing the thong to me sunlight sensitivity makes sense if you can see in the dark like normal essentially like you could see essentially colors because you're going to be in the dark all the time can't discern colors in darkness only shades of gray so they don't see color in the darkness right but yeah that's also why their dark vision is so long though is because they're used to the darkness yeah. And so it makes sense, like, to give them that sunlight sensitivity. Because it's like, they're used to being in pitch black. That's why their dark vision is so long. <laughs> I've sort of already done away with that, though. With their society being built around these brilliant, shining crystals and shit. True. Maybe only the occult has the dark vision? It could also be stated that they do live underground. They have lights, but it's the same sort of thing where, like, your light, or your eyes won't work very good if you're just sitting around with, like, night lights on in your room all day. Yeah, and you So they to have go, to adapt. They also have to, like, go out to forage and hunt. Like, they're not going to be in the crystals all the time. You could do a thing, though, where, like, maybe you give the... 
the more arcane one's regular elf vision and no uh, sunlight sensitivity, and then the occult ones, because they're dealing more with darker things, maybe they hide in the shadows more, so they get the extended dark vision, but they also get the sunlight sensitivity that comes with it. I'd be down for something like that. Guardian Elves get dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. Uh, RNA worshippers get dark vision out to 120 feet, but have sunlight sensitivity. It makes sense for just like their different practices. Like I can see the occult members being more in the darkness, dealing with the darkness. Whereas the arcane ones are going to be around their glowy, glowy crystals way more often. Alternatively. Instead of increasing their dark vision, they could have like tremor sense and some light sensitivity. I liked 120 dark vision. Like that makes sense for them though, because of how much they're in the dark. Tremor sense feels much more like a honestly, tremor sense feels more like a Dwarven thing. And or uh, like Earth Genasi. Yeah. Because the whole point of dwarves is like they're stone workers, so they're more akin to like how the earth around them feels. Yeah. And then same thing with Earth Genasi is they're they're literally fucking rock people, so. I'm I'm more surprised that Earth Genasi base don't have tremor sense. I think that's because it's one of those <laughs> things. They, they're really hesitant of giving anything other than dark vision out. Mm. I think it fucks with their balance. I feel like Genasis just don't get too much love from Watsi in general. They're just like, yeah, they're they're kind of genies, kind of not. That's it. I mean, that could also be true, you know? Maybe Crawford doesn't play Genasi. Mm -hmm. Tremor Sense is also really, really strong. Yeah, I just like the idea of creatures that spend all their time in the Underdark having... basically navigating with senses other than their eyeballs. What would make sense, I think, more or to give Drow especially uh fucking what's that one fighter subclass blind fighting go on <laughs> it's a, blind fighting is atasha's fighting style it's you have blind sight to a range of 10 feet Within that range, you can effectively see anything that isn't behind total cover, even if you're blinded or in darkness. Moreover, you can see an invisible creature within that range unless the creature successfully hides from you. So it's essentially like Tremor Sense, but just 10 feet around you. Like, even if you are in, like, total darkness or, like, magical darkness. I guess, though, their whole thing is vision-based, so maybe not. It's like seeing, whereas uh, blind fighting style might be for... Maybe for something else. I don't know, I still think the idea of like giving the, uh, the arcane ones regular elf vision and then giving the other ones the extended long vi or the extended dark vision
higher change in starlight. Oh, it's blood step? Oh, Jesus. Blood. When you use your starlight ability, each creature of your choice with, that you can see within five feet of you takes necrotic damage equal to your proficiency bonus. And then mm. starlight is still just like the face step? Yeah, still the teleport. So you get the regular teleport, and then when you reach level three, you start dealing necrotic damage when you teleport. Oh, wait. And then get the extended dark vision. Nice noise. Sunlight sensitivity noise. And what you gonna do instead of glintstone shard? Bloody thorns. Ooh. Mm. RNA worshippers have leaned away from their studies of glintstone and have adopted twisted practices that warp glintstone into more occult uses. You gain the use, uh, you gain the bloody thorns cantrip. I gotta make that. How do you feel about giving the occultists the ability to speak with spiders? <gasps> That'd be sick. I'm fine with that. Like, the Lashar worshippers have a uh, glintstone barrier. They get the ability to daze a creature with a wisdom save. They get proficiency in Arcana, and then they get the Glintstone Shard. The RNA worshippers get the Blessing of RNA. They get Sunlight Sensitivity. They get their Blood Step ability. They get Bloody Thorns. But they don't get a proficiency in a skill, but I am down to give them the ability to speak with animals. Yeah, like just mm. it's it can be kind of like the one t thing where one t can they have speak with animals but it's only for serpents you could just do that except for it's like only with spiders or arachnids of sorts no you know folks good night homie good night, good night bye so long and we're playing a new character for tos yes uh, do cultists have spider climb? Probably I wouldn't not. give them spider climb. That's Probably a bit not, strong. No. That would also make like dampier and vampires feel. It would, it would be like reaching over into that stuff because I know, uh, I think you gave dampier spider climb, right? Yeah, they have it. Uh, is spider climb an ability or a spell? That's a spell. It's a spell Why not? It's like a spell that they innately get. Why not spider climb once per day? Restores at long rest. Gives an option. I still think it'd be more fun to talk to spiders because this oh, is yeah. supposed to be like... A, of a that, that's more fun. A, this is supposed to be like changing or like exchanging out for a proficiency bonus type thing. I feel like talking mm, I to see, spiders... I feel like talking to spiders is more the equivalent of a proficiency. I did not know the content. Then the ability to cast a spell. Yeah. Hey, Grun Grun. Turning my boots upon your halls once more, I lay the iron hammer down onto the floor, ready for service. I need to apologize, homie. Is that Chris Fox, the kissable man? <laughs> what? Everybody wants oh. to kiss my husband, and honestly, I'm okay with it. 
Meanwhile, I'm crying because I want to get a thing for DMing, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> what do you want? It's a map builder. It uses AI to generate maps for you. Oh. Mr. Byte used it. It's sick. Hmm. How much? A lot. <laughs> How much? DM me. Let me sugar, mama, you. Tell me how much. I say knowing full well that- Oh, he did! He did do it! He do. Oh, that's not that much. We ain't gonna get much. <laughs> Don't be a bitch. I just also know how much you fucking hate making maps, so... <laughs> Really mad. And also, it makes you less stressed out on your session prep. So, anything that would make you less stressed on your session prep, I will do. I'm no near, nowhere near ready. Tee hee. You ready for tomorrow? Uh, just like I got there just now. Oh no. Then again, you guys go slow sometimes, so I never know. Just give him another. Just give us another cursed item to fight over. Can't keep doing it. <laughs> or can you? But it's funny. There you go. <laughs> That's adorable, Legion. Uh oh. What did he? What did <laughs> Legion do? Ah, yes, perfect. <laughs> oh, God, I hate the three-finger fucking bacon. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, oh no. my God, it That's is perfect. cursed. That's cursed as fuck. Oh, my God, you know, I didn't expect to be like Looney Tunes El Elden Ring, but that's amazing. Thank you, Legion. It's adorable. I've considered it my birthday present from you. That really was the fucking three of us just kept DMing you like, hey, DM, hey, DM, hey, DM. In 3.5, there was a thing called the Drow House Insignia, which nobles carried and usually had some minor spells uh, a couple of times a day in them. Uh, I'm fine with giving them animal friendship an unlimited number of times. With the straight, you can ca uh, you can only target spiders with it. Wait, animal friendship, but you can't talk to them? You can only target spiders. Well, I can't talk to them. Or can you talk to them with animal friendship? I just, you said I the Yon so. thing. That's what the Yon thing does. Oh, I thought the Yon could actually talk to, like, snakes. Or am I misremembering? They get the poison spray cantrip you can cast animal friendship an unlimited number of times with this trait but you can only target snakes and starting at third level you can cast suggestion oh i swear to god they had something that was just like you can talk to snakes just like straight up i'm i guess i'm misremembering you're thinking of harry potter shut the fuck up parcel tongue damn also, can we talk about just the fact that Wan T are kind of OP with their natural magic resistance, but still nobody plays them? I think that's because most teams don't allow them. Fair. They're also they're, sneaky. They're very specific. And usually evil. Just no snakes. I think animal friendship is good, though. It's cooler to be able to talk to them, in my opinion. But animal friendship works. I guess. <laughs> I guess I'll let them kill my enemies. Whatever. 
Nein. Oh. oh, it's so fucking weird. <laughs> this... What? So I'm using this obviously for the maps we make or that I use in our sessions, but uh, this does 3D maps as well. Oh. So you can look in the, the Z dimension. Weird. The Very Z weird dimension. Fuck did this thing work. Fuck. Sometimes you just gotta scheme by pointing a gun at your DM and saying, I want to do this now. Oh. That explains the gun. Yeah. Well, we all got guns. <laughs> yeah, we do. DM, blink twice if you're in danger. We can't see his eyes. They're covered by the hood. He's fine. This fucking the three piece bacon is just so unsettling. <laughs> so, you know, I really, I, f I feel like I should just take that and make that my Discord profile picture. Just Eldritch bacon. The three fucking finger strips. Three finger strips. <laughs> So scary. So greasy. <laughs> so drippy. Be not Ripping. afraid. <laughs> Would you like some grapes? Sir, this is the most delicious moment of my life. <laughs> I want you to drip all your bacon fat right into my mouth. <laughs> oh, no, right I don't think I've mouth. everyone. I don't think I've ever had anyone proposition to me like that before. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know how to react. <laughs> Guys, what do I do? They want the grease. And cast the spell. <laughs> We love casting spells. True. At a wizard money gang, we love casting spells. Be careful, you have to wee a week before you can get it back. I'm still listening to that fucking anime OP. It's so good. She do go hard. Uh oh. I infected Dodger with it earlier today. I sent it to her and Masay, and they were like, damn, this does bop. <laughs> Feel free to screenshot. How do I screenshot sound? <laughs> with your mind, man. Deepest, tell me your deepest, darkest secret right now. Hmm. 
Which one? Any of them. Just think of one. It could be anything as much as you hate potatoes. You live a very serene life. That's your deepest, darkest secret. <laughs> Don't judge See. someone. See, you were saying, how do I take a screenshot of audio? This is how. You live a very serene life. That's your deepest, darkest secret. It's not actually a rat. Shh, quiet. <laughs> they can't know now. I lost my other fucking soundboard clips of you, Sizzle, I'm sad. Ouch. No, not the yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true! Actually, wait, I might still have them. I have to go to my sample folder. Uh, heretical in the eyes of Lashara worshippers, you have warped glintstone magic into powerful occult sorceries. Uh, you create a momentary circle of sharp briar that sweeps around you. All creatures within five feet must succeed on dexterity saving throw or take 1d10 Hot. necrotic damage. Hot. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, was just, what? <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I'm sorry, I was testing something. <laughs> it happened to be, it happened to be your voice. <laughs> That was an old recording I used of you to test my GoXLR, and it was still there. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good, though. <laughs> oh, one sec, I'll test it while my mic's muted this time. <laughs> you were saying to you? That was it, that was a cantrip. Oh. Hold on, let me read. I found them. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Oh boy. Sizzled, you got a tiny dick. Yeah, that's true. Damn. <laughs> It's it's back now. He said it. It's not true. I've seen it. Oh. Oh no. Oh, no. You think I, I didn't prepare for this, you fool, you fucking pleb? I got a witness. When did he see your dick? When he visited the first time. Oh my god. Ashley saw Rosie's. I... Yep. Whose was bigger? That's not a very appropriate question. I'm just like, no. Who pinned that? <laughs> Where? What the fuck did he pin? Small PP gang oppressed. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I'm not going to brag or anything, but when DM saw my schlong, he immediately made the uh, Rocketeer Morling. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you just say? Huh? You're overselling it now. <laughs> You're overselling it now. So as an RNA worshiper, you get <laughs> the blessings of RNA, which gives you improved dark vision. You also get... Uh, sunlight sensitivity. Your starlight becomes blood step, and you get bloody thorns, and then you also get arachnid favor. Uh, you can cast animal friendships in a limited number of times with this trait, but only target spiders as well. You gain the inherent ability to speak to spiders. I love it. Now, are sunglasses invented in your world? Yet? I knew you were going to fucking ask. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Can I, I assume sunglasses are akin to a magical item? You can get it made. I can commission one. Yeah. Sick. You'll need money. Yeah, I need money. I'm broke right now. Can, can you cast the darkness spell on these lenses? used to be able to cast darkness, but then the DM changed the race. Correct. 
You guys, uh, Draw don't have their fairy fire, dancing lights, or darkness anymore. Instead, every elf has a variation of the face step ability that does certain things. So for the Lashar worshippers, it dazes a creature. Uh, and for the RNA worshippers, it deals necrotic damage. Uh, you don't get your spells. Instead, you get a cantrip that scales with your levels. So Lashar worshippers get Glintstone Shard. Uh, RNA worshippers get Bloody Thorns. That would be nice. So like if I ever run out of ammunition, at least I have can trips and a rapier or a, or a, a fucking scimitar to fall back on. Uh, I feel like Lashar worshippers sort of get a little bit more because of Glenstone Barrier, but... What would you give them instead? Like, what would you want to give the occult worshippers? Because you're pretty much giving one a free mage armor. I am. And dark vision doesn't really do anything. I mean, dark vision's pretty good. I bet you just dark vision. Like, it's not like it's true sight or anything like that. You still mm -hmm. see in gray and dark in total darkness. The only difference mm -hmm. is that you can see 120 feet versus 60 feet. That's what if you made it so that they could also th see through magical darkness? I feel like that would be I feel like that would be a good balancing out for it. Why not give them an ar armor of Agathis, but it's blood? How long does armor of Agathis last for? Armor of Agathis. Concentration, one hour. Compared to a permanent mage armor. Which I would assume Armor of Agathis would be a once a day use. God, what could you give them? Hey, Rat Stealer, hello! I just dropped in on this conversation? Oh, yes, the earlier conversation. What a great time to join. <laughs> what could you give them that could equal a mage armor? Oh, you know, in times like this, and it's a cult, we look oh, at eldritch God. invocations. That's what we do. Leadon added an addendum to his little scheme. Because art. free, free mage armor is an invocation. So, what is a good invocation that is? A zebus. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Is that Zebus? <laughs> Tiny little boy. Oh. Mm. What about couch? I'm tempted to give them a power from fourth edition. Not fourth edition. Channeling my inner force. Mm. Do I'm it, do it. <laughs> I'm looking at like eldritch invocations Ooh. that you might because the free uh, free mage armor is like an eldritch invocation, and because they're a cult, maybe there's like an eldritch invocation that fits with this. Hmm. I need to come back tomorrow and listen through all this because I've uh, been on and off all stream. It's all right, it's a fan. No issues. All of them kind of shock for a ground. Hmm. Uh, packed in a blade that requires packed in a blade. No. Your next 
turn. That's yeah, that's not worth it. Ooh. Could give him eyes of the rune keeper. Is what? You can just read all writing. Mm. But that would be like gifted because of occult stuff. Uh, Eldritch Mind. Eldritch Mind, I feel like, would be too good, though. They're already kind of getting Devil Sight, minus the Magical Darkness. There you go, see, uh, Legion. I've become the meme. Look at your fourth edition stuff. I have another suggestion, but I should also look at fourth edition stuff. The only other, uh, like, low level invocation. Actually, wait, let me read this. No, that sucks. No, that sucks. Oh, you could give them one with shadows, maybe. What's that? Uh, when you are in an area of dim light or darkness, you can use your action to become an invisible until you move or take an action or a reaction. So essentially, you're just really, really good at hiding. Hmm. We do something like that. Maybe a limited amount of webcastings? Eh. Web sucks. True. Looking at the Dry Warlock variant for 3.5 Poisonous Blood could work. What's that, Agatine? Post the, the full thing somewhere. Uh, yes, this would be stealing from an Eldritch Invocation. Let me grab it. I'm just going to copy paste. Beloved ah, rat, Ratkin Warp Stone Keeper. Looks good as fuck. I very much like it. It does. Leaving. Guilty. I can give them witch fire. It's a witch fire. From the mystic energy, uh, obviously I'll have to change all the wording, but from the mystic energy of the Feywild, you draw a brilliant white flame and set it on your enemy's mind and body. Rivulets of argent fire steam up of the air from their eyes, mouth, and hands. Agony disrupts his every thought. Uh, it is a, you make a charisma roll versus a creature versus their, uh, versus their dexterity. Uh, you deal 2d6 plus your charisma modifier and fire damage, and the target takes a minus two penalty to all attack rolls until the end of your next turn. That's pretty good. You can combo that with like the rest of your parties, like doing like spell saves against it and shit like that. It's definitely something to like help combo the rest of your party off. It's just, oh, is it, is it good as permanent mage armor? That, that's the question it comes down to at the end of the day. Probably not. <laughs> no. Uh, may I ask for a boon later? Yeah, what's up? Right, God, maybe we'll steal something from Brett. could just give them both mage armor except like a different kind 
Like, maybe it has, like, an alternate effect or something on it. Like, maybe the arcane ones, they, you can do something like a blade singer, where it's, like, instead of 13 plus their dex, it's 13 plus their int mod. Steal from Brett. <laughs> what could be as good as permanent mage armor? It might, ju yeah, it might just be that it's too strong, and we might have to tone yeah. back the Lashara worshippers. No, my build. <laughs> the permanent mage armor does seem more like a um a class feature. I mean, it is. That's like a warlock thing. Oh yeah. Hmm. That's why I was looking at other warlock evocations to see if there's anything that like this would is the, be as good. This is the other the arcane uh, drow, right? Yeah, the Lashara worshippers get the uh, the Glenstone Barrier. How about instead of it being instead of it being a permanent barrier, they just get the cast shield as an innate ability. How many times? Once. Once. And then what would you do for the other one then? You get to cast shield too. Like, you could keep their their innate mage armor, but to show that they're still worshippers of the same god, you could give it to both of them and have maybe the arcane ones be based off of the mental stats and have the occult ones be based off the physical stats. So like you pick a stat that it would be so instead of uh it being uh, just straight up 13 plus your dex mod, you would get to pick into wisdom or charisma for the arcane, and then for the occultist, you would get to pick strength, dex, or con. That could work. What if the other one could cast, uh, detect magic a certain number of times? The occult? Yeah. I still don't think that's good as permanent mage armor. His mm. mage armor is better than like it's a mage armor is equivalent to like plus one studded leather, I believe. If you had like, no, it's just equivalent to straight up plus one studded leather, I believe. Like it's really good. Permanent mage armor is very good. <laughs> Plus one studded leather ain't ain't nothing to scoff at, especially early game when you have nothing. Every time very well. Remind me which set of drow get the uh, the major. That's the uh, arcane one. Yeah, the arcane ones. Oh, okay. Or uh, what if the occultist ones are You mentioned having like what animal friendship? Yeah, they get animal friendship and they can talk to spiders. What about the ability to have a permanent spider companion? Like a spider familiar. Is that still as good as mage armor permanently though? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, uh, it depends on what class you're playing, I'd say. It gives a lot of classes that normally would never have a familiar or familiar. 
through. Uh, how about reworking the mage armor to being using a glintstone focus? You gain a glimpse of future dangers. Next time you are attacked, you have a plus three bonus to AC. For a full round, this is a full round action. Only use once. I, I feel like it's kind of... Take care, Rat Sailor. Hopefully we'll see you around in the future. I don't want to say lazy, but I will, for lack of a better word. To just have them two different types of just AC. Doesn't seem very flavorful. Because now they're in direct competition with each other. And it's just going to be like, okay, well, which one provides me AC more consistently? Which is going to be the mage armor. That's what I'm saying. Like, what if they both got the mage armor, but it just was like different stats? Like the occult ones who are more like fighty fighty could be all the physical stats and the ones that are more arcane castery they're all of the mental stats and they base their mage armor off of whichever of those physical slash mental stats best suit them probably legion if i'm free how about temporary hit points for the occult I like the idea of the cult having something aggressive. The occult can commit violence. I'm gonna go carry my tiny, tiny doggy upstairs. I'll be back. Oh my god. Okay. Could be more than just a familiar. It could be like an actual like dire spider, like a ranger companion. Soul reaving aura. What's that? That sounds very cool. Holy shit! I'll take a piece of your soul now. <laughs> it's just who I am. Normal effect of this is any creature within 10 feet of you dies, you gain temporary hit points equal to its hit dice, maximum 10 for one Ooh. round. That's pretty cool. I like that. See, it's aggressive. I protect myself through violence. So you kill a creature, it dies, it has a 1d4 hit die. You gain 1d4 temporary hit. You kill something that has big hit die, like 1d12, you gain 1d12 temporary hit point. It's a upgraded Hexblade's curse. But with just the healing part. Actually, is it upgraded? I like that. We can give them Soul Reaver's Aura. Also a sick-ass name. Bro. <laughs> Oh, it's number of hit dice. How many times can they do it? Or is it just... It's as long as anything dies within 10 feet of you. Oh. The temporary hit points only last for a round, though. Ah, okay. That's neat. I, I sort of just like it being an aura. 
Like, they just have this innate thing about them. Is it as powerful as a mage armor? Probably not, just because it's not as consistent. But it's sick. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Welcome I'm back. back. We figured it out. We don't need you anymore. What? Uh, I'm contemplating <laughs> giving them something called Soul Reaving Aura. Uh, dead. Basically, within 10 feet around you, anytime you, anytime a creature dies within that 10 feet, you gain temporary hit points equal to that creature's hit die uh, that lasts oh. for a round. Oh. So if things are it dying was... around you, you're just gaining temporary hit points that last for a round. That's sexy. And it's, it's constantly... Nice. Was it? I think. Well, that's what Agatian said, was that it was number of hit die. Yeah, but I want it to be the actual hit die. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn, I can't believe that boss had a hit die of 200. Oh, my God. Oh, 2-1-D-100. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's oh not my. how hit die work, you freaks. Oh, shit. <laughs> I know. Sad. Like, even, I think even Cloud Giants are, yeah, it's a D12. So it's a, a permanent aura that's around you in 10 feet. Oh, shit. You just go through minions, stacking, <laughs> just eat them up. Oh yeah, is it stacking 10 HP? Because normally 10 HP doesn't stack. Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. Agatine? 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 Answer. Explain. You use the highest value. Fine with that? Highest hit die is 12. Correct, I think. So I think the most temp HP you're ever going to get at one time is 12. So I mean, eh. Eh. I think it's okay to stay. 12 ain't nothing, yeah. I think it's okay to stack because you only get it for one round. So if you somehow manage to get like a hundred temp HP, you're basically immune for. Eight. I'm a fucking jank. Just run in, steal, wind, strike all of the enemies that are super low HP. Yeah. Like, I don't mind. Actually, I don't mind it stacking. Because I'm like, what's the what's the like you kill a bunch of minions, yeah, but those yeah. minions are generally like one hit point, five hit points, shit like that, right? So yeah. like at higher levels, sure, but even then at higher levels, like temp HP just goes away really fast. So, You're fighting creatures that are dealing 40 points of damage. I love temp HP. Like I <laughs> I have for all of the reasons I love temp HP are actually because of Tegan. So the West Marches I played him in, uh, his bow used blood ammunition. So he would give up one temp, he would give up one HP. And then if he was able to hit his target, he would gain two temp HP. And that's how it was for every shot. He would lose one real HP, gain temp HP. Because whenever his bow shot, it would always take from the real HP. It would never take from the temp. And then he had a certain amount of times where he could convert all of his temp HP into extra damage on one shot. Hmm. But it, but those mechanics allowed him to stack his temp HP, and it was it was a really fun build because it was like I had to manage my own health while also being like, okay, do I need this temp HP? Do I think I'm gonna get hit, or do I want to waste all this temp HP on a big hit? It was a it was a really fun mechanic to play with. You're a fun mechanic to play with. Fuck you. So, fun, funnily enough, this character, when I played him in that West Marches, made me fall in love with temp HP. But then I realized, oh yeah, it doesn't stack in regular 5e, so fuck me. What do you mean doesn't stack? Uh, temp HP doesn't stack. You always just take the highest. I'm still so not understanding. 
All right, so you if you have an ability that gives you five temp HP, right, and then you you have a friend that casts uh, a spell on you that gives you six temp HP, it wouldn't go up to eleven temp HP. It would just be the six. Yeah, fuck that rule. I wouldn't use that. You get to stack that temp HP. What's the point? Make that cannon and fucking... Gladly. Like, our, our, our vampire game, I'll fucking kiss you so hard. Oh my god. That's just like common sense. Like, just give people the stuff that they can use. Goddamn. Just means you gotta make the enemies stronger. Instead of one gloom, I send three at you. Well, that's what I always like to say. If you want to, like, soup up your characters and make them OP, cool, do it. Just make your enemies OP, too. If you're fucking... If your players are walking all over your enemies, just make OP bosses for OP characters. Ancient flaw. I miss your gloom fights. Your worship of RNA fills you with vengeance that needs to be answered, often through violence upon others. You have a permanent aura out to a range of 10 feet. If a creature drops to zero hit points while in your aura, you gain temporary hit points equal to their hit dice. You can gain multiple hit dice worth of temporary hit points. This effect, this lasts for one round and ends at the start of your next turn. Wow. Nice. I keep burping. I'm so yeah. sorry. I don't believe you are. I'm so fucking rude. Either, yeah. Little yikes. <laughs> kind of problematic. So my leash about the Tarosian fight. The, <laughs> the guy I made to test the abilities, he doesn't even have a name. <laughs> He's just a test dummy. He's, he's just, just a, a dude. Naked, he's just a naked Barbie doll, <laughs> Legion. It's okay. He's I'd just a him. little dude. It's that eight charisma that you really like, isn't it? It's that he has an eight in his stat. He's so flawed. I love him. The <laughs> pleading face. <laughs> He's more sure. to me. <laughs> oh my Legion, god. He, Legion, he doesn't even have an icon. <laughs> He's literally a naked he Ken doll. Can I, stay, can I stay over at your house tonight, Barbie? And do what? I don't know. Boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. I want to see the Barbie movies so bad. Name oh, shit. Price. Eddie Price. Oh my god, cat. Where's my daughter? Let her me right let here. me speak to her. Speak? She's here. Let her talk to me. I want to I want to hear her purrs and screams of hatred. Oh. <laughs> what is she doing to the mic? Oh my god. Kitty. She's dying. What the hell? <laughs> Can't, is that even the cat, or is it just Chris? No, that's the cat. <laughs> oh my god. She's just an angry lady. Oh I'm gonna get rid of... So ah. They get a lot. <laughs> Drows do get a lot. They're just better than you. What can I say? I think the sunlight sensitivity and all of that just has a lot of wording, so it looks like a lot. When it's really just like you get to 120 feet of dark vision and you get fucked in if you're in the sunlight. I think it just looks like more because that's very wordy. I think it's also this ability, the starlight stuff. Mm hmm. I don't know. There's just something that I like about like sort of every elf having like a variant of the face step. I like it. It's, a, it's good because like elves don't get face step anymore. 
But that was like one of their old classic things. Don't think I don't see that L factor too. <laughs> Guys, Legion, they're they're meant to test the abilities. They're meant to make sure that the abilities aren't like insane. This is what a level one fighter would look like. <laughs> how about how about on a stream where we make NPCs, I'm down to make them into retainers. But make my mom. We can make them retainers. But right now I want to focus on the races. I'm down to give you them and make them into retainers for you. Just not today. Legion just wants more NPCs so bad. I just think they're neat. So at most you're teleporting, you can cause six creature like seven creatures to gain, but take six necrotic damage. That's crazy. You teleport up to another six times. Uh, your Wait, aura. How many times? It's based off your proficiency bonus, so at max six. Oh, okay. And... Is that what it was in other editions? They do necrotic damage, they get the temp HP from their aura, they get arachnid favor, which isn't anything insane, so literally only for spiders, so it's not even really a benefit. More flavor. Mm -hmm. Flavor. It's just like... If I want to har harass a Cirque and I see a spider and be like, I want to be friends. <laughs> and then Cirque hates me for the rest of the campaign. Real. I think our Sharian elves are in a good place. I think there's a, a very big difference with similarities between them that make them recognizable. <laughs> I, I feel like there's a good difference between them. Yeah, and the beta testers deserve to get recognized and acknowledged. Legion, we're the beta testers! Yeah. What the Not heck? these naked Barbie dolls. We're the ones that are actually getting hurt. We're on the front lines, bleeding. We're bleeding. We're bleeding. We're bleeding so that CTF can have better mechanics. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, but you get to play them both. Fuck you. I mean, you can play CTF. You just gotta you abandon your just... husband. How can you call them just naked Barbie dolls? Because they are. They don't even got an icon. How could you be so rude? What if the Allfather created the phobias of spiders to weaken the primordial spider god lady? What? <laughs> that's 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 <laughs> real fucking bad. <laughs> yeah. What? The... Behold, well, phobia. You know, <laughs> imagine creating something and then making a fear of it just because. You decided you didn't like it rather than just getting I think, rid of them. I think people already would just naturally have fears of spiders because IRL, people have fears of spiders and we don't have magic spiders, but in D&D &D, there are things like face spiders which makes, them, which makes them even more scary. Imagine the worst thing in the world and then imagine it behind you. <laughs> and then imagine you can't see it anymore and imagine it reappearing in front of you. I'm like, I'll be right back. Also, leg is for, fucking killing me. For a moment, I was very offended at this program. I was like, okay, I'm done with my map. I'm gonna export it so I can import it into my thing. It saved as a text file, and I'm like, excuse me. I can't oh, use no. that. It it also generates a JPEG, but I'm like, I cannot use a text file. I don't know what you're thinking. The dot JPEG. Ew. 
burping, sneezing. Shut the hell up. What the fuck? Today's tomorrow, it's Friday, it's my day of rest. I get to sleep in. Oh. Oh. I get to sleep in. Do Yay. Bitch. What do you? Legion, we already had to deal with a lot of liches and Chris's old campaigns. I think. How many liches did we deal with? No clue. Well, because... I don't even remember them. Well, Garrett, what was Garrett's character? What was his actual name? Uh, Garrett? that is... Zarius? Zer Zarius, that's the one. Zarius was a lich. Jack was a lich. Fucking... What was our old dude Our old dude's name? Oh god, why am I forgetting his name? Escher? Escher was a lich. Uh, Karist became a lich. That's four right there. I think we got sick of liches. Well, I'm not sick of liches, but the, the the brass tacks of it is that there were vampires as the apocalypse were going was going on. A lot of them survived the horrible apocalypse that occurred, and that suddenly put them at the top of the food chain. They're like, yo, we're really strong, and nobody else is. We should do something about that. And they did, which was enslave everyone. I was talking to Crown about how you you still use the rules of, like, vampires need to be led into houses. But to circumvent that, because they're the entire government, they just made a law that they're allowed to It's fucking in ingenious! House. Why it's wouldn't funny. they do that? It's just funny to me. It's like, yes, we use that stigmatism. They have to be invited in houses. So they made it a law that they're allowed in every house. Like, like think of it. It's like, uh, I was thinking, I think I thought, oh my god, my words. I think I was talking to HB about it. And I'm like, think of it like Nazi Germany. Like, you could not tell the SS not to enter your house. You would just straight up get, like, disappeared. Because it's not really a stigma, it's more of, like, a rule. Like, that's just a rule of their race. They have to ask permission. So, since they have all the power, remove that worry. Oh, yeah. Do your vampires make vampire babies or do they make dampiers? No. They, they are can... effectively infertile. They can have yeah. as much delicious sex as they want. So they can only... They only make more vampires by turning others. Yes. But that makes them kind of horrible in that way 
because since they have so much power, they kind of just turn people for funsies. So it's why you get, like, basically dolls. So they're, like, vampire children. They were just converted when they were, like, seven years old and they'll never age again. Oh, that's fucked. That's fucked right? up. Right? That's fucked up. But there's also lots of people who want to be turned because it means you get a good life unless you get thrown into the brigade. It gives you social status, and also you don't die. Wait, can't the- they can't get in if they're not for give, for given permission from the get-go, no? They made it a law so that they are literally, like, it is written law that they are allowed in every building so well, that they can get around that. They, they can't do that. They can't just, like, make up a law and then it works. The way they do it is, let's say, you, as a peasant, you're like, I have a business idea. I'm going to open a tavern. So you open your tavern, you get it built with the community, and it's going to be this great place. Day one of tavern opening, the vampires come to the front door. Hey, uh, we noticed you don't have a plaque giving us entrance to your space. Uh, so you have two options. You can take this plaque, give us uh, permission to enter, hang it up right in front of the doorway, and then we can come anytime we want. Otherwise, we'll burn the entire house down with you in it. Your choice. It's great. I love the vampires. They took my wife. <laughs> my wife is gone. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, they will target any... If they see a new building they're going to see if they can get into it. And if they can't get into it, then someone immediately just got on their hit list. And you don't want to be on their hit list because they have an army and you have fists. Well, uh, unironically, Thex, uh, there is, uh, I took a lot of inspiration uh, from True Blood. The, uh, the vampires, when they get staked and die, they explode in, like, gore. Is a castle a house? A castle is a building, and they target any building. Because that is the way their stipulation works. The stipulation is they can't enter a building without permission. Thus, every building must give permission. You have to leave your house sometime. See, Ingley, the issue with that is there are not a whole lot of clerics because uh, a god war just happened, so people aren't super faithful right now. So it's uh, kind of hard to get a hold of holy water. They would also, like, obviously restrict lots of, like, creation of that things. For instance, the crew uh, just went to a large town where there's actually, like, an operating temple. And they talk to the person, like, hey, do you happen to have any holy water? And he was, like, real sus about it. He's just like, you know, we need it for our operations here, but oops, I kind of lost some for my inventory, winky face. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, because those were the, the Trist clerics that we traded the really expensive wine to because Trist clerics are whores. But it, it's mostly because, like, they can't just start, like, producing and giving out holy water, but they need it for the rituals. Like, it's just a necessity of running a temple or a shrine. So it gets produced. They just don't produce a lot of it because they don't want the, the vampires getting angry at them. But everyone's gonna do something illegal, so, wink. And then again, we're at, like, a point where not too many people are faithful in the gods still, because the gods are kind of the reason the apocalypse started, because when the god war happened, it fucked up the earth below it. Uh, so. for Legion's statement, I don't know how specific or, like, how granular it gets. I would imagine, and this is just, like, me ruling off the spot, if a building had a hole in it, so, like, Let's say they threw a boulder into the roof and it made a giant hole. They could now enter the building because it has, like, broken the, like, rule. But it's a lot harder to throw a giant boulder on a thing and break open a hole than it is to just get permission. Uh, 
uh, the trick with holy water is only someone with the who can cast the spell of ceremony can actually make it. And mm -hmm. that's why Scraw is about to be our MVP. Scraw coming in clutch with the fucking cleric dip. Oh, don't worry, Inkle. I made that joke uh, in my last session that someone should drink the... A.K. is someone's bathwater. Oh, yeah, it was Pride's bathwater. Oh, fucking... He's already done that kind of before. Uh, in one of his last phases, or his last campaign, I I was a cleric of the party god, who's also Triss. He's still a god that's around now. He's the god of, like, love and parties and shit. Uh, I met him because we were fucking around with god stuff, and I was like, Hey, you're, you're like the god of party. Can you bless my wine? And he was like, Oh, sure, yeah, because he's the he's like a really chilled, laid back god. Like, he's he's super chill. He just vibes. He's like, Oh, yeah, dude, I can totally bless your wine. He uncorked it, spit in it, recorked it, and handed it back to me. And he said, Yeah, it's blessed now. And I was like, You fucking what? I'm back. Hello? Hi, I was just talking about how God spit in my wine once, and that's how he blessed it. Nice. Okay. Delicious, nutritious. What god? Uh, it was the god of, like, partying and love in Chris's world, and I was like, hey, can you, can you bless this wine? Because we were fucking around and we actually met him. And he was like, yeah, I can bless your wine. He uncorked it, spit in it, recorked it, and then handed it back to me. Based. And I was like, I was like, what the fuck? He's like, I'm the god of wine and partying, baby. What do you expect? <laughs> See, you get you get hung up on like him spitting in the wine, which is weird, but cool too. Yeah. I find it more impressive that he recorks a bottle of wine. Like, pure yeah. corked. Like that you just gotta pop it back out again. Mind you. That was the same wine that I gave Bryden to infuse with drugs, and then we got really tripped on that shit at my wedding. I don't think it was at the wedding, but I did think you got really I'm, tripped out. I'm pretty... No, wait, no. It was when we had our crossover that we got fucked up on it. Yeah. That makes more sense. We put, like, nectar and bliss and shit in that. We, we had a really... We were crossfaded as fuck. We had we just got two of the parties that were running at the same time together in one room and we all just started tripping on alcohol that we spiked with drugs. And Chris was like, Why are you guys doing this? This is your crossover session. Don't you wanna like tell each other cool things? And we were like, No, we just wanna get fucking high and smashed. Sex, thank you very much for the four months, brother. Incredibly kind of you. Thanks for sticking around for so goddamn long. Yep. Um, can you send me all of these drow abilities though when you get the chance? I already oh, think wow. I. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, never mind. You'll get them when you get them. I just. I, I already think I know which one I'm going to be, but I just wanted to be able to reread them later. I like all the cool lore, though, that we got for new Loth Mommy, TM. She's just a good lady. Indeed, indeed. You should use a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus to regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. <laughs> Thanks, Gren. That is he. So it's a level one uh, uh, Sharian Shara worshiper. You get two uses of Starlight. 
you get glintstone barrier and if you've built a semi-decent caster like the wizard i made with a 16 int um not counting your level one feet or anything like that you start with an armor class of 16 which is really good for a wizard yeah um get expertise in arcana Then you know the glintstone shard cantrip. Also pretty Gucci. Okay, the more I'm like, God, it looks like so much. And then I put it on a character sheet. I'm like, oh, it's actually not that much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. We'll be back. All right. Okay. Like your, uh, I like it, Greg. Right? I like it. He's just a slut. See, I make a lot of slut characters, and when I play them, they don't actually end up being like super slutty. You get too shy. I get too shy. Except on Corva. I was okay being slutty mm, on Corva. Mm, wimpy. Could yeah, have been I was, better. Could have been better, but most of my flirting was with you, so that's why I was a little bit more comfortable with it. Yeah, you also didn't have a good flirting partner. Yeah. Yeah. All you had to do was win him over once, and you already did. Yeah. He was hard to flirt with because he was like, why are you talking like that? Then again, there was Lacey. To be fair, she would yeah. accept every flirt you gave. Yeah, but also, he was only using her for her status. You could be like, you have, um, nice toes? And she'd be like, oh, thank you, oh my god. My actual, my actual husband that I ended up marrying, if I went up to him and flirted with him, and I was like, honey, your eyes are just sparkling today. And he would just be like, they look like this every day. I'd be like, okay, I just, I was just trying to flirt with you. <laughs> Don't just hold my hand or something. <laughs> he would get. I would try to flirt, and he would just be like, "Stop that!" <laughs> like, okay, okay, I'm fine. I'll stop. <laughs> when some rogues could be dangerous. Not sure how. Yeah, what does that mean? Dangerous can mean so many things. I think they just mean that because they're getting the free mage armor, probably. Ah, that would be a thing. Because, because again, uh, mage armor is equivalent to plus one studded leather. Hmm. So that that's why I kept saying that it's really good that they get that permanently because that's that studded leather, baby, that your rogue doesn't need to buy. Well, all elves are Agatine. All elves in my set area are gonna have the teleport. Oh yeah, the teleports. Are we, gr are we gonna be gross and fun? I wear this for clout. <laughs> what do you mean? What does that even mean? Or with the Blade Singer Wizard, it's also good. It's just the Eladrin ability, Legion. I've gotten rid of Eladrins and I've given their ability to, uh, to all the elves. It's just your your ability changes when you reach level three. So for the RNA worshippers, they deal necrotic damage, and for the Lashara worshippers, they daze a creature. Every elf gets it, yeah, because every elf has fey ancestry. So it's part of the uh, the image in my head that I have about elves. God, they really do all get fey step, don't they? Mm -hmm. I wait. I just noticed something. Are you having it refresh on a short or long rest? Long rest. Okay, good. Yeah, long rest. I think the the only issue is that. Phase step, I think, 
is you only get it once. And you're having it, it can be up to your proficiency mod. No, Ladrons get it. That's where I got it from. It is yeah, up to your proficiency bonus. As a bonus action, you can magically teleport. You can, once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. I don't see anything about you get it multiple times. You can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. It comes from Order Kind of Presents Monsters of the Multiverse. There you go. Oh, I'm looking at the Toma Foes one. That's why. Oh, oh that's the that's the weird Andor. Is that even like real? Isn't that like third party? Tomophos? I don't remember. Mordenkind and Tomophos. Oh, that's old. Not. That's a, that's been eroded. Yeah, they replaced Wait, that with uh, Mordenkind presents Monsters of the Multiverse. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they they really buffed that then. <laughs> Grunt fucking dies. <laughs> They, like, they really fucking buffed that. Holy shit. And yeah, they buffed a lot of the races with Modern Kynan Presents. Modern Kynan Presents. Your mother getting fucked. Ah. <laughs> I swear to God, if I fail Wordle today, I'm going to get pissed. Wordle. It's not Wordle time yet. Wordle time. It's not! Shut up! <coughs> oh, yeah, wow. I'm so pissed that I lost yesterday because I mistyped and pressed enter too fast. Skill Ugh. issue. I knew what it was, too. Do you have half elves? Absolutely. We have half elves, half orcs, and half giants. They weaken Yanti, though? I mean, Yanti still get their magic resistance. I don't know if you know this. It's fucking huge. <laughs> A race that gets magic resistance is ridiculous. Like, my oh, players that. get pissed when my monsters have magic resistance. So... Must be are, nice. <laughs> what are the elves of the East and West like, though? I want, I think I'm not going to do it like that. Uh, hmm. I was thinking about this. I want my high elves to be like the high elves from Warhammer. Very like martial and sword oriented. That's where mm -hmm. the teeth of the dragon come from is mm -hmm. high elf smiths made them. Ooh. So are you going to, so which elves are you trying to hit? Are you going to like hit wood elves, high elves or any of the other types? I think it's going to be High Elves, Wood Elves. Wow. Then, if I'm feeling like it later on, mm -hmm. I may do an explanation of, like, other types of elves, like Sun and Moon. What about C? I have never you... once met a person unironically say they want to play a Sea Elf. Right? Miss Lee was a Sea Elf. Fuck you. That's how she had elven accuracy. I think I'm going to keep them with the goddess of the, the sea, just like the you Shatter can't... Kai, and you don't get to play one. Yeah, or you could just merge them into Triton and just make them the same thing as Triton if you ever make them as a race. Hmm. They are practically the same thing as Triton, just a little different. Honestly, it's the same thing as, like, Water Genasi. I can see Water Genasi, Triton, and uh, Sea Elves, like, all turned into the same race. True. How about a Snow slash Ice Elf? Uh, maybe. I do like the the idea of, like, a wild elf, like, that lives in the wilderness with the Neurosi, but... Oh. Hmm. I feel like it's also, I feel like sun, moon, and ice are all, like, incredibly niche. Super niche. Yeah, it's like, also, if your campaigns are never taking place in the north, like, you're never gonna see them. Yeah, it's not that it's not good to, like, make it, but is it a valuable use of your time? The Teeth of the Dragon. 
Legendary elven blades crafted during the Age of Woe, when man and elf struggled against the ancient evils of the Betrayer Gods, when all of their hope was channeled into these ancient blades. Crafted for the greatest elven swordmasters and imbued with magics into the into the meteorites from which they were crafted from, these beautiful weapons uh, show no time or wear. They inspire their wielders into great acts of heroism for the greater good. These weapons have had their legends twisted and lost with time, with humans claiming dominion over them. But elven lore smiths know the truth and their true potential. Others may wield the blade, but it is only elves or those chosen by the blade who may unlock its truest potential. It is rumored that there are only six blades, but it is, it is unclear if there is more. Dedemir, the Sword of Dreams, Runatar, the Sword of Fate, Arcturus, the Sword of Stars, Golanir, the Sword of Truth, Orlon, the Master Sword, and Nar Uldur, the Sword of Darkness. I like the last one. <laughs> I like Darkness. I'm not a high elf, though. I'm a I'm a underlander. I'm a I'm from Australia. Wouldn't that Crocking. be horrible if I gave him an Australian accent? Wouldn't that be fucking terrible? I, I am not convinced you can do an Australian accent. I'm from Down Under. I just gotta start yeah. watching Daisy stream more, and then I'll pick it up. Uh... That was like discount generalized UK accent. Saw a tree elf race once with cool wooden antlers. That'd be neat. I love that shit. Uh, you can combine them a bit, like moon elves also being the sea elves and or wild elves or winter elves being wild, actually. I mean, that's stuff to work on later. I want to get, like, my mm. staples done, right? Like... Things that you'll see regularly. Yeah, like things that the I know the party's going to interact. Like elves, 100%. Uh, humans, 100%. Uh, dwarves, absolutely. And then start working on to like the sort of like half races, like half elves, half orcs, half giants. Uh, and then go on to like tieflings, ASMR, stuff like that. What's next is figuring out the names. Are you an East Coast elf or a West Coast elf? Blood oh. of Crips, motherfucker. Oh, damn. <laughs> Baby. Time. Wordle. It's Wordle time. We're old. Ignore us. Don and Dust. I ain't old. Fuck you. I I sort of like again, I, I sort of like having taken the names from Eberron, like Valinar and Erinai. I sort of like that. They sort of fit with the Sharian. Like Valinar, Aranai, and Sharian. Those feel very fantasy altogether. Three cream? No. <laughs> Nobody's meeting those things. <laughs> oh, easy word. Do the, do the elves and dwarves hate each other? No, not like not inherently like it's not like a race thing. Right. But like the elves of Katarina greatly dislike the dwarves of Tharkin's Deep because the dwarves of Tharkin's Deep keep trying to mine and like harvest one of their their like sanctuary islands. I have a minor distracting question from for you. Missing. As a drow in Sunfall, where would I have actually surfaced from? The from the, the mountain range. You'd have surfaced uh this pull up my big map. When you eventually get to tieflings, maybe instead of being demon devil based, uh, you could just be people who made deals with upper beings. I considered that. I also sort of like there being like what one D&D did with like abyssal, uh, abyssal, uh, 
like Eldritch and then Devil. I really like that. Uh, you'd have surfaced in these mountains, probably right here, because this is an actual noted entrance to the Underdark. Okay, and then I just kind of... You'd have wandered your way through the cold. You'd have actually probably found yourself in Iridel. Oh. Which is the, the, the high elven town. And then I was just like, hey, looking for work. And then they probably sent me off to Sunfall. Yeah, like the Lord Regent probably was like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> we don't see any of you <laughs> ever. <laughs> My God, what are you doing up here? <laughs> I'm looking for work. I, I got a little bored down. What downstairs. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> Yeah. Are you sure you shouldn't be down there? Yeah. Listen, I, I got a little bored. Like, you know where I can get work. I imagine Lord, the Lord Regent, who is like used to dealing with like Valinor elves, sees a Sharian elf and he's like, huh? Huh? What, what are you doing? Here? I have a job for you, weird guy. Why don't you go meet the Baron? <laughs> I think Why he'll is... like your eccentricities. Oh no, that doesn't sound great. There was nothing easy about that word. <laughs> what do you mean there's nothing easy about that word? It was very easy. And are an ASMR or when they have actual coitus of the unicorn with a regular mortal race, an upper beings race? Huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? Why is the ASMR having sex with a unicorn? Those parts don't mix. I do believe that. What's the test? What's the like monster fucker test? For like sapience and sentience and shit like that. Oh, please, can, don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. Yeah, no, but monster fucker at heart. True. The Harkness test. Thank you. Thank you, Agatine. Thank you, Inkley. <laughs> I hate that they knew that. They answered very fast. They're like, I'm familiar. I it's been hard up in the past. Slander. I, slander slander I didn't slander you. No, I think Lee just saying I slandered. Oh. <laughs> I, was just, I was trying to understand what you said because you said coitus. To be fair, you did. To be fair, you did say coitus. You did say coitus. <laughs> I know you're saying union now, but you did say coitus. Does it have human intelligence? Can it talk or otherwise communicate with language? Is it of sexual maturity for its species? The you, unicorn you know is all what of those coitus things. Means? I see I'm just in time for the sex ed. The monster is sex. Educate me. Yeah, we're talking about unicorns fucking people. I see. The old wang. <laughs> oh, they didn't say unicorn. Oh, is that what oh, I misread? Union. Oh my god, why oh, did I read unicorn? I read ah! unicorn. Oh, are, are, are all y'all stupid? I heard you I'm say not. unicorn, and I was like, unicorn? Gotcha. I saw Union. Unicorn. To be fair, unicorns are also celestial beings, so... They're, they're, they also passed the Harkness test, unironically. High five, high five crowned in our bad eyes. Let's go. <laughs> I no. looked at that and I said, uh, that's a, there's a C in there somewhere. <laughs> to be fair, I have a... I have a medical reason as to why I physically can't read because my doctor took my glasses. I don't believe you. I got glasses. Uh, they you don't, don't really even help. wear your glasses. I do wear my glasses at my test. I don't believe you. What the fuck? <laughs> no, Inkle, what you're so... saying is that everyone is secretly a brony. I can't see. First the turtle. I thought you said unicorn legion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, legion. I love you. I don't make me give you more money. It's an apology. You were questioning legions like literacy when you're the illiterate one. I thought it said unicorn. Ma'am, Zebus read what you posted and died. 
Oh my god. Unicorns just want to be friends because friends with benefits is magic. <laughs> Dude, I'd love to see like a... Oh, I've actually never seen this, I think. Is a fey warlock with a unicorn as a patron? That'd Ooh, be that cute would, as fuck. That would be possible. Given that so I basic, but no one does it. It's like very obscure. It's no, it's like you would think that that would be like a go. That'd be the obvious, yeah. But no, I've never seen anyone do it. Well, is Fey Warlock any good or interesting it's, at all? It, eh, it depends. Yeah, on, that's why. Yeah, I mean, Fey <laughs> Warlock isn't the best in general, but it's fun if you want to do like that flavor. If you want to have like a Fey <laughs> Trixie kind of flavor? It's great for that. That would be amazing if anyone played it. <laughs> I still I... Oh. Hot take. I do not care for the Fey. <laughs> what? I... Just because you hate Olwen. That's not even why. Why do I, why would I hate Olwen? Uh, you know damn well why you hate Olwen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do have a really cute idea for... Uh, a fake character that I want to play one day, but I need to find like a setting that's good for it. I I want to play a fairy cavalier. Interesting. Uh, I want it to be riding what? Uh, a fairy that essentially lost their wings, so they ride a bird, and their bird is their mount. And because the fairy like weighs them down, it makes it like gives a mechanical reason for why the bird like can't fly too high. I just want a little fairy that like lost his wings because they got damaged or they got taken from them in some way and they ride a little bird and that's their mount. It reminds me. I think me. it's cute. I think they it's really cute. A... Go they ahead. should do a, a hummingbird so they can uh, oh, Hell rotate. yeah. That's and epic be... the movie. I got the idea from the, uh, the old Thumbelina movie, Legion. It reminds me of an offshoot of that character that Lily Peach used to play. Oh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Like, ultra buff fairy? Yeah, he heard fairy barbarian. Fairy gunslinger on a oh my God. massive hummingbird. You're now on a, an attack helicopter. <laughs> well, howdy, partners! Flap, flap. I just like the idea of a tiny, of a tiny man on a bird. Okay? It's cute. Mm. I like the idea of a, just a tiny man with no wings on a bird. Small man. I think man. it's adorable. I just like, it's tiny man! You just want someone who's your height. Yeah, you got that when you're suck a dick. <laughs> oh, oh wait, you already did. <laughs> and? Oh no, man, was it tasty? It's never. Maybe. Hmm. Tell me about the high elves of Warhammer. Now. They're cunts. Nice. Their politics are so intrinsic, you'll never understand them with your pea brain human mind, and they will get offended if you fuck up. Wars have been fought for less. They live infinitely, almost, they're almost essentially immortal. They'll live way longer than like D&D elves. They live like fucking Lord of the Rings elves, so. Perfect. People fucking disappear, and they're like, who, Omega Law? That's why they don't really associate with humans, because humans are so short-lasting. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about the High Elves or the... the High Elves, the, As the Asur or whatever. I'm just gonna get a wiki page. I'm too tired to come up with shit. Yeah, I love them, Legion. I love them. Uh, b -b 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 who said it before, before the whole debacle? Oh, I will accept that the leader of the East can be the Dawn King. Uh, well, he's an emperor. Uh, and he, his name is Vathomir Aldeos, and he is known as the Viper of Caruso. <clears throat> the High Elves, who call themselves the Azur, are one of the major powers of the Warhammer world. Their homeland is the ring-shaped island of Uthwan, located in the great ocean between the Old World, the Empire, and Nagaron. The High Elves have fought against the spread of chaos since its first appearance in the world, but their most bitter struggle is against their, old, their own kin, the Dark Elves. While not hostile to their parent civilization, the Wood Elves are the descendants of the High Elf colonists who declared their own independence and remained in the Old World. 
High Elves were the first to explore the seas and shores of the entire world, and their achievements are without parallel. They are usually seen as being arrogant, aloof, and overly concerned with beauty and art, a reputation which is not completely unfounded. They generally view themselves as being superior to other races. Despite the glory of the High Elf civilization, their power is slowly fading, only to be replaced by the populous and vigorous race of man. The main reason for this development is the failing birth rate, the cause of which is unknown. Wow. The sovereigns of the High Elves are the Phoenix King and the Ever Queen, who reside in separate courts. The current Phoenix King is Finubar, and the current Ever Queen is Al Alario. Why do they sleep in separate beds? Elf stuff. Huh. The Phoenix King holds political and military authority, while the Ever Queen's influence is of a more cultural and spiritual nature. The next tier of the aristocracy is occupied by an unknown number of princes. Hey, Chris. Is the Jasmine? is the high elf magic thing you made canon, or is that something you just made up? I'm making it up as I go and making it up as it is, but it is also canon. You should tell Crown about that, because I think he would enjoy it. It's high elf magic. It was from, I think, 3rd edition. It's neat. I adjust my glasses. Go on. Do I get a link? I don't know. Just tell him what you um, uh, turned it into. But basically, um, High Elven Magic is a special type of arcane magic that only elves can cast because elves are so hot diggity. Uh, in my world, it is a effectively a power that, because only elves can cast it, uh, they can kind of do anything they want in the world should they put enough energy, time, and effort into the task. Um, it can be as interesting as, like, creating a fancy item, or could be as disastrous as creating a necrophage. Just depends on who's casting the spells. Uh, mechanically, though, it allows for casting above ninth level. Oh, oh my god. But that like is also his, canon. For yes. his elves, though, like, you have to, like, when elves do this, they are, like, almost sacrificing, like, they're sacrificing a lot to do this, sometimes even each other in the process. That's only for the largest spells. Yes, yeah, it's it's really neat, though. We I've seen him do high, high elven magic a few times. It's really fun and cool. Do you win? Uh, we have, I, well, I know lore about the thing that they did to the orcs in your right. world, and then also the items that we got with the flowers. Right. That's, a, the, the flowers are baby shit. Yeah. But I've seen how fucked up your elven magic can get. That shit can be used for evil, but it can also be neato. Said it incorrectly, not necrophage, but genophage. That's yeah. what I meant. Equally as horrifying. Mm hmm. His elves went on a hardcore war with the orcs. And Other so... way around. Other way around. Okay, Let's be sorry. clear. The orcs went on a hardcore war with the elves, and so the elves decided to use a lot of high elven magic to fuck them over entirely by, by sacrificing a lot of elves, too. I'm pretty sure a lot of the elves died during that, right? Yes. Explain what they did. <laughs> Uh, so they used a very, 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 very high level spell. It killed a lot of their, like, most intelligent, like, most skilled casters in the entire planet, but all of the elves kind of, like, worked together across the planet to make this happen because it was a problem for all of them. When the spell went off, it effectively sterilized all the orcs. All of them. And it was fucked real My God. bad. If you've and played so Mass Effect, that story will sound similar to something you've heard before. I haven't played Mass Effect, but I know that's something that they did to the Krogans or whatever. Yeah, so the whole idea was in that world, the Krogans were extremely hardy, very violent, like their whole culture was war, and they kind they could overwhelm everyone, mostly because they bred really fast. They can have a billion kids ultra fast. That sounds like the orcs. So that was the problem for the elves as well, because the elves breed very slow. 
And if you have to have one elf for every 50 orcs, then that's a problem. <laughs> and it led to a bunch of cool lore with the orcs. Like, the orcs have their own patron god now, and she's known as, like, the mother bear, and she's the goddess of fertility. Holy shit. And she, and she like, protects over all of her orcs now. And me as the god of reincarnation, I have her knocking at my door every few days being like, reincarnate my fucking orcs, you whore. <laughs> but uh, she's she's also a really sick god. That's like their patron god now ever since that that big spell went off and it led to, led to a lot of interesting things. But everybody's fucking terrified of the elves now and Chris is said it. No, everyone loves them. They love them, but they're also fucking ruling everything now. Yeah, but it's the glorious days. Like, you won't get better than this. This is it. This is peak humanity. Peak humanity where the elves are just like, we're the best. Fuck everything else. The problem is, they are the best, and they can prove it, and no one else can prove them otherwise. It becomes problematic when one race can do literally everything they want. You know what? I think I might... I've always struggled with this. I think I might make it that elves... They don't... Like, there's not a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I think that's been my biggest struggle. It's like, how the fuck do I write elves in my setting? So... I think I want it to be sort of like there's not a lot of them, but they live for fucking ever. That's where I went with it. I, Chris, give your thing because I was just about to talk about the reverie and all that. Talk so, about your finite elf thing. So basically, and this is partially canon, I twisted it and I don't know which parts I twisted. So I'm just going to tell you, tell what I know. Um, effectively, elves, when they die, they are reincarnated effectively into a new body of an elf. So whenever like one elf is about to die... There's, like, a pregnant elf somewhere else, and that elf is going to get, like, transited into that baby body. And that's why when elves have their reverie, they can see in their childhood form visions of their, like, past life, of it, like, as a warrior or adventurer or whatever. They're always having that because it's a cyclical thing for elves because they're constantly, like, being reincarnated into more elves. But because of that, elves have, like, a finite number of elves that can exist at any one time just because that's just the rule. That's just how it is for their race. But that also means when a lot of elves die, or a lot, or rather a lot of elves are being born, that means a lot of elves somewhere else are going to die very soon. Hmm. So it's essentially like elves can only be reincarnated into other elves. And that's like a part of their culture because they go through the reverie as a child. Uh, they're still like different people. So, like, their personalities can be completely different, but they get, like, some experience and, like, they learn important lessons during their reverie from their past lives. It's, it's like those stories when, like, you hear, like, a six-year-old says, like, I was a pirate once, and it's like, what the fuck, kid? It's that, but real. I did that with the orcs in my setting. Oh. The, the orcs in my setting have a sort of tradition that they they sort of it's sort of understand or understood that like when a, a warrior or somebody dies within their clan that when another baby is born you can look into the baby's eyes and discern who it is who it like who it was that's um, fun so like one of the characters call uh he is like it's that same tradition it's that same practice where he is the the, the resurrected soul of like a great orc warrior, like this, this uh, very like samurai esque warrior who basically defied these evil clans, and the clans learned that he was basically like the, the that he was seen again through the eyes of this child. They kidnapped him, and basically enslaved him to ensure that he could never grow up to be that warrior again. Reminds me of like some like various SCPs where it's like, we can't let him out. <laughs> it was basically like, we know that this guy is the doom of our clan because every time this motherfucker comes back, he wipes the floor with us. So we're going to get the jump on him this time. And we can't just kill him because he'll come back. But if we keep him enslaved forever, then we'll win.
It's interesting, but I don't know if I would want if I'd want that force on the entirety of elves. Which part, Momo? No, he wasn't getting trained. He was like, he was pushing the wheel of pain type deal. It's kind of like taking like from Avatar, the last airbender. It's like making sure that if ever he reincarnates, he just can't like learn all his shit. He's just stuck with whatever bending he's got and that's it. So maybe he's a small threat, but never the big threat. And Indeed. that's what they're trying to prevent. He didn't have the clan to teach him how to fight or anything like that. He knew like grueling slave labor. He was fed just enough to stay alive, but never to grow. The finite number of elves thing. Hmm. Well, it's For... like you can still have you can still have kids. It's just like. It's it's more like a spiritual thing, I guess. That I but I remember it being like, it's like they were they were rare. They're a rare. Well, they come from a weird history in Chris's world that I'm not allowed to talk about because he'll hit me. Um, but they were made and born differently than regular mortals, so that's why there's a finite number of them, at least in his setting. Yeah, elves are not like other mortal races. They're just built different. That's just how they are. Uh, but because they are built different, they have a different method of death and rebirth that others don't. Because like a human, human's going to live, they're going to be short-lived, and then they're going to die, and that's just it. An elf has this beauty of reincarnation. It's something special that they get. But... Some people don't want to be reincarnated. Some people like don't like the idea of being reincarnated, but it's just their race. They can't argue against it. But also, they're not the same person. It's like they won't remember their past self beyond like some visions. They might like have like fond memories of those visions, but otherwise it's like It's more so like during their reverie, they get visions of like this was an important lesson I learned in my past life, and it'll show them, like, an experience where they learned, like, an important lesson of, like, oh, you, like, lost, like, just losing a lover and learning to move on. It's just, like, short little lessons like that, but you're a completely different person. It's just more so giving you that reverie of, like, oh, this is, this is a lesson I learned in my past life that my reverie wants to pass on to me, in a sense. I don't know how to say his name, but Agatian? Question mark? Regardless. Uh, they could have, uh, hypothetically, a mother elf could have, like, eight kids. But if that's eight kids she's having by herself, that means most likely that either those eight kids are needed for a war in the future, or eight kids died somewhere in the past. Or eight adults died somewhere in the past. Every kid is someone else's adult. Every father is someone else's son, in that effect. It's just, yeah, but just in Chris's setting, they were just, they were born slash made in a very particular way where there's only so many of them. And so that's why they take wars very seriously because, and they especially take soul magic very seriously because of an elf soul gets destroyed and obliterated that's that's out of the finite pool that's gone that's removed there that that is one elf that will never ever come back so that's why elves in his setting especially take like soul magic and like the taking or trapping of souls especially of their own kind of elves as very seriously it, it should be noted as well the elven reincarnation is brand new to them it hasn't happened for like 10,000 years, they finally got it back. So they're very happy that it exists. Because before, when an elf died, they died, and that's it. Being a necromancer would be scary for an elf, only if you were able to corrupt an elven soul, basically. Because once a necromancer corrupts the soul, like, by making the elf undead, 
they are removed from the timeline of reincarnation. The caveat to that is, hypothetically, a cleric could fix that. So if a very high-level cleric found a necromancy elf in whatever undead form they had, they could hypothetically perform a ritual to restore their soul and let it pass on. So, becoming undead isn't necessarily, like, the end of the road. But that's also the problem, because your road was supposed to end at some time. I like elves. They're just cool. You can do lots of fun, funky things with them. But, like, circling back to what Ground was saying earlier, I enjoy where my elves are now, because they are very strong because they are very long-lived. And they have lots of magic that other races don't. But they are extremely fragile. So one little small error, like an elf like walking on a path and then he falls off the cliff and dies. He's dead. And that's 200 years wasted. <laughs> that guy just like, there it is. What are you going to do when your kid who's 200 years old dies? Have another? Good luck. That's 200 more years to like get ready for that. Because 100 years is, like, base adulthood. That's 18 years of a human life. 100 years for an elf? That's a long time. Yeah, it's like, I do like the idea for elves, like, it, it takes them a long time to have kids because of their very long lifespans. They think of it also in the, like, perspective of, like, adult lives. Because, like, the adults are the ones who get shit done. Like, if you're going to send someone off to war, they need to at least be 100 years old. Because they won't know how to do anything if they're not. It'd be like sending, like, a 12-year-old off to war. Good luck, kid. You're not gonna make it. And since they have such long lifespans, like, sending someone who's super young off to war would be a huge waste. Because they could accomplish so more if they could just live a little longer. But a little longer means a couple centuries. Yeah, a little bit for an elf is not a little bit for, like, any of the other races. Especially if, like, orcs can take over the entire, like, continent in a year. And one elf soldier needs at least, like, 150 years of prep. Maybe elf gestation time? I think it's, like, I think it's the same as humans. And then, like, once an elf child is born, it, like basically compounds in the length of their aging. So, like, I'd have to read the book again. But I think it's, like, once they get to, like, teenage years, that's when, like, their aging starts to slow. So, basically, like, a 13-year-old human and a 13-year-old elf are basically similar. But then it starts slowing down dramatically. So, like, a 15-year-old human is equivalent to a 13-year-old elf. And then an 18-year-old human is equivalent to a 14-year-old elf, and it, like, scales from there. So what are you thinking for high elves, my dude? Just a amazing blacksmiths, in a sense? I, I've, I've always liked the idea of... Not, not blacksmiths specifically, but lore hmm. smiths. Like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like they are, they are capable of. They're capable of like blacksmithing. Obviously, they, 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 their creations are amazing. But they are able to like pick up a weapon and discern uh, things about it just by touching it. Oh, so the very Lord of the Ring elves, like that is they're the blade artisans. that the, that is the blade that killed so and so on this moon. Indeed. Artisans, yes. Ah. Uh, like, there's there's something super fascinating to me of, like, oh, I can identify this item, but if you really want this item identified, you'll go to Nelanor, and you'll meet the lore smiths in Nelanor, and they'll tell you yeah. everything about this item. I was, I was gonna say, they're almost, like, historians, in a way, that they're, like, they're artisans, but they're also, like, deeply in... in Oh god, I don't know how to put this to words. No, directly. there's a word for that. It's called antiquarian. Yeah. They're they take pride in the things that they make. And so when they see a named weapon that has done battle and such like that, they're like, that is something you remember. That is something you honor. 
There's this there's this image in my head of like the party finding an elven weapon and bringing it to the lore smiths and Eleanor and being like, what is this item? And this the, the person there is like, ah, I remember this item when it was made. I was there when the forges were stoked like this weapon has served in many hands of many princes and has found its way to you. But so would that make it so that either the elves have a very, very good memory or it only so many weapons of great honor are truly like able to be used? Like maybe they spend their whole lives making three weapons that are like the the best and like the best of their capabilities. And those are like those are their pieces and those are the pieces that go on to be famous and like have legends about them or is their memory just so grand that they can recall things like that from many many items because hmm. either they're giga brains or maybe one high elf spends their whole life making one truly grandiose piece like they train and they train and they train and then they make that one <laughs> not exactly god slayer but to make it grandiose that one god slayer weapon which goes on to have a legacy of its own i just had an idea and i like it. yeah bitch yeah You provided me a thread that I didn't know existed. And oh, DM, I have two DMs stealing from me today. What the fuck? I mean, you're given. It's not stealing. Ooh. I just have to figure out where to write it down before I forget it. Like, I like the idea if the if the high elves are being like the the historians of that. Like, they could either just be like the true lore keepers, and they have like these high intelligent people that like split second like photographic memory they're like oh yeah i remember that or it comes down to their smiths like they work day and night on the one perfect piece and that is their that is their shining glory see my hmm hmm I want there to be artisans like that within. I don't want the whole society to be that, but mm -hmm. I want I want there to be artisans within like a Calibrimbor. Like mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> I want there yeah. to be a Calibrimbor within their society that is known for making these iconic things. Yeah. And then there is like there is Elrond who is who wields one of the rings, who is like a an amazing fighter. He's lived for countless centuries. And he, he, he like touches a weapon and he's like, I know what this is. This does this, this, and this. So this was wielded by the last elven prince of this lineage. You hold within your hands a relic. Like, I didn't make it. I just know about it. Maybe. I drink it. I know things. Maybe the high elves have like a certain. I don't want to say like maybe they put their soul into what they make, but they put a piece of them into what they make. And the high elves are specifically like in tune with unlocking like this, like memory of what the weapons have been through. Like they put some form of magic in the weapons that give it like this ability to remember their greatest fights and their greatest achievements. And that's something that the elves are able to then read from these weapons. Hmm. I almost want to give them an ability that is like a personal identify. Mm -hmm. You what? can make it for like, uh, how do I say it? What's the right words? I like what Legion said. It's like maybe just like an inherent like legend lore, but specifically for weapons. Mm. That seems fine. Like for for crafted items, but crafted by elves. 
specifically Elvin, yeah, Elvin Smithing, you have like a little legend lore ability to tell you like Yeah, sort of like exactly this Dwarven stone. stone cunning. Yeah. Cunning, yeah. Elvin Smith cunning. But it's just like the sort of thing where like if they come like if you find if they find a regular sword, it's just a sword. But if they find that special one, it like almost vibrates in their presence. They're like, oh, I see that. Oh, look, look, look. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It's like Wait. there's a million bridges, but there's a Golden Gate Bridge, and you know the difference. The master craftsmen who create an absolute work of art then move on to a new craft? Mm. It's just for the lore masters, right? So I want. Uh, I want the Valinar to, I want that to be sort of their things with the Valinar is that they are, they're responsible for making the teeth of the dragon, right? The, the teeth of the dragon are the Valinar's creation. Uh, and it's, it was their sword masters who wielded the, the teeth of the dragon against the darkness. So I guess that's a blend. I guess it's a blend of like Warhammer, High Elves, and, uh, and, and Tolkien elves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warhammer elves are very traditional. They are elegant and cunning, but also extremely arrogant and have a very structured uh, society. And uh, departing that sort of expectation uh, is considered shameful. Mm. They are uh, Imagine if like Victorian England had uh, had people that lived a thousand years and so they had uh, you know that long to basically structure their society. They are rigidly bound by convention and precedent, ritual and ceremony. However, they are also masters of magic. Masters of uh, war, masters of the sea, and masters of air. They are one of the few, probably the, yeah, one of the few races that can actually tame, uh, that can actually tame, communicate, and train dragons. Oh, shit. Yeah. And the dragons in Warhammer are not the dragons in, in, uh, in d d They are actually immortal. They are the oldest race. They are uh, not based on color, and there is no such thing as like, I'm a good dragon, I'm a bad dragon. All dragons have their own agenda and will eat your ass if you do the wrong thing. Hmm. The face of Elrond was ageless, neither old nor young, though in it was written the memory of many things, both glad and sorrowful. His hair was dark as the shadows of twilight, and upon it sat a circlet of silver. His eyes were gray as clear evening, and in them was a light like the light of the stars. Venerable he seemed, as a king crowned with many winters, and yet hale as a tried warrior in the fullness of his strength. He was the lord of Rivendell and mighty among both wolves and men. Wow. Wow. Ooh, poetry. Go bed. What? You sound tired. Go bed. I'm not working tomorrow. I get to stay up nice. late. Is there anything in particular you want to know about Warhammer Isles? I need to figure out how I'm going to weave in. Because I, I have the High Elves in Valheim. Or in Vinheim that are... Uh, that are like the dragon sorcerers. They're they're sort of ones that run the the Collegium here in Tiros. You said dragon sorcerers? Yeah. Do they ride dragons? Maybe question mark. No, there's a certain noble line in both one that is essentially the last dragon riders. Uh where are they? It's like Caligar. Deer. Not. What the fuck, dude? Uh, the High Elves also went to war with the Dwarfs, and both civilizations are in decline because of how apocalyptic it was. Oh my god. 
Yeah, uh, because it's one highly structured civilization and another highly structured and traditional organization that basically miscommunicated. And uh, one grudge and led to another. That's more sad than my war. I think they, uh, I think the elves shaved a diplomat's beard of Ooh. a dwarf and sent him back as a joke. And this started literally, essentially, Warhammer's, like, one of the worst wars in Warhammer. See, like, dwarves actually make for a good competition, though, against the elves, because dwarves do live yeah. about as, like, half as long as elves do. They don't live quite as long as elves, but half as long. Yeah. So, they're actually good competition, and also because dwarves are, dwarves, just like the elves, are very impressive smiths. Just in different ways. Yes. That that was something I wanted to, dis to make the, as a distinction as well, is that, like, they may both use mithril, but you can easily tell the difference between elven mithril and dwarven mithril. And, like, elven mithril is almost glass. I feel like elven weapons are, like, elegant. They, like, dance through the air. They they cut seamlessly. They're, they glide. Whereas dwarven weapons, they're going to be heavier, and they're going to like they're going to make bigger impacts, and they're going to shake the ground. Yup. They can still be made of the same material, but one is much, just much more elegant in a way than the other. But the other's more. One's one's meant for clean cuts, while the other's meant for harsh bashing. <laughs> The, the dwarves in my setting are also known for being, like, rune lords. Like, Ooh. a lot of their stuff is the the sort of enhancement or the improvement and carving these powerful runes, these, these words of magic into their items. Uh, so, like, a rune lord, like a, an actual, like, rune lord warrior is a dude who's, like, head to toe in, in etched armor. You can't see his face. You can't see like any like distinguishing features about this guy. And when he fucking hits you, he hits you. So are your dwarves like closely entwined with giants per se? Oh, I still need to figure out the giants too. Cause I, I love the, I love <laughs> shit like the ordering. So, uh, -oh. uh, I'm, I'm just saying this because of the, the Rune Knight class. The Rune Knight class, because in base D&D, runes come from the giants. Like, runes originally come from the giants and giantkin. So, like, r when you, when you take levels into Rune Knight, you learn giant. Like, that's just something you learn because you need to learn giant to be able to read the runes that you have on you. Hmm. So maybe, like... The dwarves ran into the giants in the mountains where they lived, and they kind of learned from each other. It would make sense. Uh, oh, maybe I'll have to reword some things. But basically, the, the giants come about from previously being servitors. They were the creations of the wizard kings, and they made... Oh. They made numerous of them, and the whole purpose of them was to operate things within their various cities. So there were servitors that their whole purpose was to pull, like, chains to open gates, to clean the bases of towers, to, like, to basically uh, do a lot of, like, the manual labor, these giant servitors. Um, Poor guys. And Morin, the Ruiner, the, the, the mother of beastmen, basically cursed the servitors she bestowed upon them the curse of flesh and turned them into living breathing entities uh and the servitors rebelled they became giants and the giants basically fled the uh the various capitals and it didn't help that like immediately after the age of woe happened uh so it was like this this uh problem upon problem upon problem where like the the high the wizard kings are marching upon the gods and at the same time the servitors are becoming real and then uh Aormenir smites the world and breaks the continents um and the giants are split and they've basically like 
because of their because of the abundance of magic and everything like that they basically became imbued with these various elements so there are storm uh fire ice stone shit like that um and they they basically waged war against humanity like the the etnmore is the site of the last giant king who basically like rallied armies uh, armies of giants and led them against the fledgling humans and he ruled for like thousands of years oh, in the right. age of law it was and then it's the champion not yeah. from sunbell yeah, yeah, yeah. or was it from sunbell yeah he was one of them was the uh the one that killed him and that was the war that happened between katarina and tyros that happened right there right uh Over in I remembered! Yay! Brain! The brain. I mean, you can always change it, too, so that, like, if somebody ever wants to play a rune knight, instead of learning giant, they learn dwarvish instead, if you want the dwarves to be the rune lords. Uh, Luther Kron, the giant's bane, was the chosen yeah. of House Ashford, a towering man known to fight with a spiked maul and shield, said to be able to bring a giant to their knees with only one swing of his mighty hammer. Haldor Rolash, the Sunborn, was the chosen of Kaladir, an elegant half-elven man known for his incredible speed and dexterity, believed to be a descendant of Ebor, the Morning Lord. What happens when you put two Giga Chads up against each other? They make peace. They make a draw. They make peace. <laughs> they make a draw because they thought it was stupid. It's that one gif from uh, Full Metal Alchemist where the two strong guys are doing like an arm wrestling match. <laughs> They're like, this is dumb. But yeah, if you want to keep uh, dwarves as like your, your rune boys, if dwarves. anybody ever goes a rune knight, just have them change a giant out for dwarvish instead. Oh, it's yeah. not that um, big a deal. I am a rune lord, oh, not actually, some smith. <laughs> Actually, it does go beyond that because all of the abilities from Rune Knight are named after all of the different types of giants. Oof. So, like, they're called, like, the Cloud Rune, the Fire Rune, the Frost Rune, the Hill Rune, the Stone Rune, the Storm just Rune. Just rename them. And you could just rename them. That'd be easy enough to do. Yeah. Because I want to give... I want to give the half giants in my setting like their own unique thing because I really like what they did with Goliaths in one D&D, which is they got rid of it just being a stone giant. You could be any type of half giant now, which is super dope, um, as well as like the ability to grow to be supernaturally large and shit when you reach like level five and stuff. Uh, so I definitely want that. Uh, I just don't know what I want them to be known for aside from like their war and their ordering and everything. So what you're saying is that we could fight the fire giant from Elden Ring. Yes. Oh fuck yeah. You want you just want to beat on his bum knee, don't you? I just want I want to punch I want to punch his big eye. What was that thing that you just said there though? The thing that is like where you're caught up. Huh? What? The thing that you said you're not decided on. Trying to figure out what they're known for. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, giants or boys? Giants. Oh. Being big and ugly. <laughs> Being fucking Smelly. massive. Tell that to Gerald. What the fuck? Mountain All right, well, rivers, baby. I'll tell him, hey, you know what fire giants are known for? Enslaving people. Lamau. And also smithing. But mostly enslaving people. What if the dwarves stole runes from the giants? Ooh, drama! Kind of... That's why they have like the like the dwarven thrower and like gauntlets of ogre strength. Because when you wear all three of those items, you get like damage against giants. It also makes sense because again, a lot of the base giants are like stone giants and hill giants it would make sense that they would run into the dwarves at some point or another because those are stone stone giants are going to be amongst the stone hill giants are going to be in the hills and in the mountains it's, it's the same thing with storm giants storm giants are even prone to like the craggy mountaintops and the or the cloud giants it's i like imagine they're kind oh of God. bound to run into each other in a way 
I imagine that while there was a war happening in the south against the giants, there was a war happening in the north against the giants. Where like, despite despite not knowing, there was probably several giant kings. And that that's why they, they probably were like in the middle of the ordining and finding out who would be the next true giant king. And House Ashford and the other like warden families rallied against the, the, the southern giant king and the dwarves of the north rallied against the northern king. And in doing so, probably stole rune magic from that king. Nice. And then pretend to be the big it. storm giant then. Get the get his shit. <laughs> Steal that man's stuff. Like I'm imagining a like a, a forgotten king moment where it's like a storm giant on the back of a rock. Ooh. You should look up um Rune Smiths and Rune Lords. Just for like a feel of uh, the people who make runes. Where did the runes originate? I'm going to say dwarves made, or not dwarves, uh, giants made them. Touch. So is there a group of dwarves living in abandoned, stolen giant cities and places? Probably. Ironic. No wonder all their fucking doors are so huge. Me looking at the doors of Bagmadia. Why would a dwarf need that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, when I think of the ho like the dwarves from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, like they have these very big, grandiose spaces, and it's like, why do you have these high fucking ceilings? You don't. <laughs> because you don't need that they much can. Space. Well, yeah, but it's also like, I fucking, this could have been a place of giants. Like, you have these big, grandiose spaces. Like, there should have been, there could have been giants living here. Maybe the giants made the dwarves into the servitors because that seemed logical to them. <sighs> hmm. Maybe they kept mining into their mountain, so they turned them into, like, well, because, like, if the giants are servitors to someone else, they've known nothing else, and they're finally breaking out of, like, the cage that they've been given, but then here's this other race who just happens to be very crafty, and they're like, hey, we need crafters. Do it now. Then when the time finally came to slay the giants, the dwarves, the dwarves are like, fuck them. Back. Yeah, fuck them. We'll find back, too. You made us slaves. Screw you. <laughs> or dwarves and giants used to be great friends. Dwarven halls are huge because they used to be big enough for giants. <laughs> That's the wholesome lore. They were BFFs, so they shared the runes. Yeah, well, I mean, you could go a middle route where they were friends, and then someone pissed in someone else's Cheerios, and now they're not friends anymore. We can do that, the grudge. Or the fire giants enslaved Ooh, the dwarfs, and maybe... some of the dwarfs escaped with the secrets. Maybe they could have been friends, but... Uh... The dwarves started mining into areas the giants were like, no, 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 that's our homeland. You, Those are our hills. Those are our things that started like some bad blood in Ooh. the mix. Ooh, always the dwarves. <laughs> they started mining so, somewhere you know, that they shouldn't. <laughs> I'm noticing a, a theme where all the older races get pissed at the younger, smaller races because they did something. And it's the, the millennial say, conflict it's happening IRL. Yeah, why is it always? Why are the boomers always the innocent ones here? I imagine. Well, the dwarves aren't uh, the young race. The dwarves have been around since not since the beginning, They're but young they were the to third the giants. Race. Well, the the giant. Oh, remember, the giants were made yeah. as servitors and then given flesh. So wait, are they are the giants actually a younger race than dwarves? Yes. Oh. So it was the boomer's fault. Oh my god. It's always the boomer's fault. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah go, go for it, Legion. Fucking doors. I'm gonna do that for my game. Giants got turfed out. <laughs> Damn. Furbogs are giant kin, right? Did they descend from specific types? Of are furbogs giant kin? Yes. <sighs> I did not know that. Huh. 
I always saw them more as like uh, akin to like beastmen instead. You know, their appearance changes vastly depending on a di like edition. I'm pretty sure young like previous editions they were almost like almost like Norse like half giant folk. Our Volgs look super different depending on the edition. Yeah. I always thought that they were more like beastmen, in a sense, like closer to something like a centaur. I should take a look. Four E, they got uh, they got lambed up. Three E, they're just uh, a big guy. Just a big e. guy. <laughs> yeah, no, they're pretty much big guy until five E, where they like get a huge nose and gray clammy skin. In years. furry, and they got fluff. Up until that, they're basically just Norse dudes. Damn, I love oh. Norse dudes. Well, okay, maybe like a little feral Norse dudes, you know. Here's what furball looked like in 4th edition. I'll put it in text chat. Just vaguely feral, you know. I don't believe... <laughs> Holy feral. shit! A little feral. Oh my god, oh he's, my so god. Fu he's fucking huge! This is what they I look like in. Them. Wait, I know I love they them, got though. they got fucking they were on fleek in fourth edition. This is what they looked like in third edition though. It's just Bart. <laughs> Imagine, look, Gerald's actually a furball. Who knew? Legion, I want you to understand that if you draw this to completion, I will be petitioning Brett to make it my new icon and shit. Wait, what? That looks doesn't share with the class shaking my head. Fucking yes, amazing. amazing. Not sharing with the class, Legion. I turned my profile picture into your art, and this is what you do to me. Put it in text chat. He's huge. He's a huge lad. Let me see. Oh my, oh my god, you gave him a tail. Oh my god. Yo. Damn, oh, dude, dude, you're getting a tail too, Potters. Jesus. Marius looked at Cheeks and said, I can wear it better. <laughs> First time. Dude, we're all getting tails. I just got a tail. Now Yo. you're getting a tail. Man, we all getting tail. Let's go. <laughs> Look how fucking chunky that guardian armor. I love it. Yeah, you wanted to go more space marine. Didn't yes. Yeah. Rock and show. I want to put my hands on somebody and just make them go, just squish them. Uh oh, how very artificer of you. I'm not an artificer. It looks at artificer clash, but you are. I'm a strength artificer. <laughs> Why don't you just ask? Threat to change class. You could. The moment what? he does. I all like the, the artificer stuff, stuff though. You're like fighter, like you should just be like a fucked up, like fucked up metal ass fighter. I don't know if you would let me have the armor though. I mean, it could just serve as like heavy, heavy armor. But then it doesn't have all the cool phases. It's just big plate. Okay, that's true. I guess you are armor artificer, right? Yeah. Okay. That's why I can, like, get out of my armor, like, as an action. <laughs> it doesn't take, like, ten minutes to don my armor. I can just uh, don it instantly. That's, that's true. Oh, gosh. oh my god. All right. Well, that's cool. I'm going to go uh, sleep on it. Fuck you. What are you doing? You ain't doing nothing. Yeah, I am. You're like you work today. 1 a.m. I... See, you said today, and that's already a problem. <laughs> you act like you work today. Anyway, you have an angry Momo because you're stealing her drip, so see ya. I made her drip. Yeah, and then you wore <laughs> it. Anyway, goodbye. 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 Uh, do you have gods whose domains overlap? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm also going to be making more gods. How many more? A lot. 
Oh, fuck. Let's go! What if the giant servitors were based on scaled up dwarves? Hmm. Hmm. Oh my god. See, he burp on stream too. And not I'm just me. Fuck. Can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Legion is fantasy. Who cares? They look sick. It's okay if it doesn't look, if it's not realistic, it's fantasy. If it looks cool, it's sick. It's all it needs to be. I care, I know you care, but imagination. It depends on your imagination. I think it looks sick. It looks fucking amazing. I, I stand by my statement. If you finish it, I'm going to slap it on top of Brett and be like, please, this is what I look like now. You said that very John Wick, by the way. <laughs> oh my god, their bonding pushes the DMs closer together. You two could, like, mm, mm, mm. write lore and hold hands. You have it in here somewhere, Brett. Where is it? I will steal that ability. I like seeing Legion art. Legion art make my eyes happy. For real? Legion getting on that iPad grind. Let's go! iPad good. Cool. Uh. Just smooches the Legion art. <laughs> Make more. I want to see more. Subs. I'm out of jerky. I just got more jerky today, bitch. I'm out of it. I'm sorry, you're out of it. You should have got more jerky. It's in the other room, but I'm too tired to go get it. Go get it. I said I just I just said I'm too tired to go get it. Too bad. I I hate you. Who's gonna stay up too late because they're hungry in an hour? <laughs> This is what a functional relationship looks like, everyone. <laughs> you not listening to basic facts. I love elves. Grabs them and kisses all of them. I love you. That's a lot of elves. 
I don't care, I'll kiss them all. The Valinar possess a keen understanding of how things are made, especially those of elven crafts. Choose one object that you can, uh, choose one object that you must touch for one minute. If it is a magic item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunement or not, and how many charges it has, if any. You learn whether any spells are affecting this item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. You can use this uh, ability a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Ooh. That is their lore smith ability. Oh. Now, what are you going to do for their starlight? I think I might. Oh. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the same thing, but when they they level up their teleport, they get like a little sword burst effect instead. I was thinking something like that. Deck save when they teleport and does AOE damage. Yeah, since they're more smithy. Would good be good for sword burst. Oh, we could give them the friend teleport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that. Where you touch a willing creature and you can teleport with them. <laughs> Would that be high elves or the other elf, though? The wood elves? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I always see wood, uh, high elves is more, a little bit more to themselves and snooty in a sense. I feel like wood elves are more caring. Look out. Not necessarily. What else can be like very isolated? True. High elves are the ones that fight in legions. Hmm. So there's autumn, winter, spring, and summer. Uh, autumn allows you to charm a creature for one minute until you or your companions deal any damage to that creature after teleporting. There's winter, which causes the creature to be frightened until the end of your next turn. There's spring, which allows you to, uh, which allows you to teleport another creature instead of you. Mm. And then there is summer, which deals fire damage to a number of creatures you can see within five feet. Which one did you give the, the drow? I gave them, I gave them a blend where the, uh, the Lashara worshippers got, uh, winter, which dealt the dazed condition. Uh, and then I gave the Arani worshippers, uh, or Arani worshippers, uh, the summer one, which dealt necrotic damage instead of fire. I think, I think. The, the friend one might be good if they're all about battle and maybe like camaraderie in battle. Hmm. I do like the friend one. I do like that one, like teleporting with their companion. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey, Grungrun. About to head to Bible study soon. Oh my god. That's hardcore. I'm sorry. Wood elves tend to be more tied to nature and were originally the ones who had the ability to move from one tree to another of similar size in a distance. Hmm. I definitely want to give them. I definitely want to give the Valinar elves proficiency with martial weapons. They deserve it. Do they though? If they're all about weaponsmithing, yeah. Do they though? Do they deserve it? Martial weapons as a whole, or specific ones Do like they the elves deserve it. Chris, are you playing League right now? What if I am? You don't deserve to have an opinion, then. You don't deserve wow. to have an opinion here, then. Didn't you play League last week? 
Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the second line of the Legion teleports to the front and the back then steps forward. Keep... Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe for weapon proficiency, it's like it's kind of like uh, some subclasses where they can pick maybe two martial weapons to be proficient in. Hmm. We could make it, we could open it up where it's like, you gain proficiency with long swords, and then you can pick, like... One other martial? Yeah, one other martial weapon of your choice. That'd be sick. I like that. I like that. Yeah. No, I like my it's... bed, so I'm going to bed. <laughs> hey, motherfucker, you're nah, already nah. in bed. You can't believe this. Why'd you come back? Right Why'd you come back just to say goodbye? Man. Lord forbid. It's because I showed up, that's why. Say it. Say oh, goodnight. Do it. Good night. Thank you. Now go to bed, oh. you tired yeah, I bitch. Either. I can't believe this guy. Call me what you want. I will sleep happily. <laughs> Good night. Oh my god. Get out of here. I will, however, uh, go grab a Good cup night, of Jeff. ice. And also I'm also going to get some water. Yeah, Hammer elves. Nice. Trust me, I've tried to make elves wield weapons other than swords. They refuse to. I'll be back. Gotta make a buff. Mm. Also, baby, I figured out what was wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was still having issues with my headset when I woke up. And it was fine for stream. And a little bit after that, but I started having like some real bad issues as soon as I joined like the Deadbeats Discord. Like my headset was just not cooperating. I could not hear Discord. I could not hear any of my desktop sound audio. Okay. So I figured out it was the cord. So I just right. the, I just joined the entire cord off, uh, and I took the cord from my old headset and I plugged it in, and now it works fine. It was just the cord got fucked up real bad. So I was still right. It was just more complicated. Well, no, the cord itself was broken. So I took my cord from because my other headset, the headset itself was broken, but the cord was fine. So I was like, okay, if the cord's fucked up on this headset, I just ditch the cord, grab the cord from the old headset, and now it's working fine. Yeah, I mean, it's good that you could do that. I assume it's just like a basic USB cord. Yeah. Or it's not USB, it's just like the jack in both sides. But, uh... Oh. I, just, I had it sitting on the desk behind me still, so I was like, what if I... what if I just swap cords? What if I just swap cords? Will it work? And it did end up working. So, that's good. And then I got to listen to Joe talk about Googling a uh, human-sized sperm. Excuse me. It was me. great. 
pardon me? <laughs> I love my D and D party. And then we found out that there were sperm mascots and that there were mascots for some sperm banks and stuff like that in abortion clinics. God, this is fucking good jerky. Oh! Yeah, baby, I'm so glad to have more. I love jerky. Hi, Momo. Did you finish painting? Have I tried built? I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it because I feel like that's a D's nuts joke. Yes, Momo. If you got sensitive skin like me, where I'm not in the sun, pe like, at all, if you just sit by a window where the sun is really intense, you can get a sunburn. That's just unfortunate. Like, I, I stay out of the sun a lot because I have chronic migraines and the sun activates my migraines a lot, like bright sun. If I sit by the window and it's a particularly bright day and I fall asleep in the sun right next to the window, I, got, I can get a little bit of a sunburn. <laughs> it hurts. I'm sorry, love. Do you got any aloe? Hello does work. It also is becoming spring, so you've got to stock up on aloe anyways when it comes for summer. What's that matter? Because... Chris, we're VTubers. We sunburn easily, okay? V VTubers have gentle- we have dainty skin! Do I like League? Yeah, I like it. It's very frustrating, but it's also, like, probably one of the best games ever made, so... Okay, hold on now. Hold the fucking phone there. That's like, the biggest lie I've ever heard in my life. No, no, no. Like, mechanically, the game is, like, fantastic. There's basically no downsides, because, like, it has some balance issues, sure. But beyond that, like, it's just so fun to play... It's just neat, but it has a billion other issues, and those are usually what drags it down. Counterpoint, uh, this defeats everything you say. It's a MOBA. There you go. So, MOBAs are great! Oh my god. I think I might have vomited in my mouth a little bit. I never said that my husband was sane. I say as I'm sitting here playing probably one of the shittiest MOBAs. Pokemon, oh no, no, there's Pokemon Dota! Unite. Dota is right there! I like Dota, Dota is Pokemon terrible! Unite. I like being Sylveon, okay? Sylveon's fun. Momo, you gotta buy the aloe tomorrow. You gotta go to the 7-Eleven, or not the 7 eleven you gotta go to CVS and get the aloe. Or a cold compress. If you get, like, a cold washcloth, that should alleviate a lot of the pain. Just like gentle dabs or even like just letting the the cold washcloth like sit over your face like you just uh <laughs> get that a little damp that'll feel real good have you guys ever been so pale you get sunburned inside your own house yes that's just that's what we were talking about yep <laughs> that's what i'm saying what how i deal with it is i uh i get i, I get a washcloth I I run it under some really cold water, and if it's on my face, I just lean back and I put the cold washcloth on my face, and it feels really good. <laughs> also, to text, I don't know about uh, talking to a redditor who's homebrewing that stuff. But the official Riot made, like, subclasses and character archetypes and enemies. And the, like, I don't know what it's called. Like, world? That stuff was awesome. 
Bryce, when are you gonna put a creeper in our game? Uh, no comment. They have stat blocks now. They do. Brown, when am I gonna see a creeper? Aren't no. they, don't they fall under Watsy's horrible CR design where like, they're like a CR half, but they can fucking kill everybody? Yes, <laughs> you should. Okay, Sounds so awesome, you know, actually. So you know yeah. how we ran into the giant frogs? It should be one of the forest encounters. <laughs> Is that just creepers just start sneaking up on you? <laughs> just, All right, just you make a new character, funny. please. <laughs> you just so fucking die. Funny. I say, all right, roll your uh, roll your hex crawl ability, and then what you don't see is me uh, invisible rolling the stealth check for the creeper that's <laughs> in the next hex. And as the party's walking along with their caravan, it just meanders its way out of the forest near the caravan. The party goes, "What the fuck is that thing?" <laughs> well, no, you got it. You got to make the hissing sound leading as it's like slowly getting closer. <laughs> yeah, just go. <laughs> you hear this. And then if they don't run, that's their fault. <laughs> yeah, but you can't run. Once it hisses, you can't run. You can still run. Yes, you can. It, it still hurts. Up. It has an ability. Or something. No, it has an ability where it's like if it starts, it starts hissing. And then on its next turn, if there's no creatures within a certain radius, it like stops hissing. Fair. Or you get a cat. Or the party. If the party wants creeper to turn, get a cat. Tabaxi. <laughs> or or a cat. Or just like just a cat. Just a cat. I'm going to give them long sword and I'm going to get them because elves get long sword, short sword, short bows and long bows. Um, I'm going to give them two say, martial weapons to pick from and the long swords. Give them long sword, a martial weapon of your choice and a ranged martial weapon of your choice. Hmm, that works. Perfect. Don't get comfortable with that familiar. It's going away real soon. Creeper familiar. <laughs> First combat encounter. We won the encounter, but uh, it was an arm and a leg to get this little fucker back. <laughs> God, this jerky's so fucking good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you some of this one of these days, babe. It's so fucking good. I mean, is it homemade jerky? Mm-hmm. And get some. Do it now. Go there now. I was just there this morning. That's where I was on morning. Go back. Well, okay. Next time I go, I don't know if I can send you any because shipping and all that shit. What does that matter? It's like five bucks for shipping. Okay, but. You got, uh, you got to tell me what type you want, because they make some really spi- Like, they make some nice spicy marinade ones. Like, I know they have teriyaki ones. Mm, one I mean, I, whatever. The what, one I, I don't get know. It's like the, uh, the Midwestern classic one. Get what you would want me to try. Okay. Because you have shit jerky there. We'll get you the Excuse good you! I am in Texas. We have the best jerky. The shit jerky! And meanwhile, I'm buying Oregonian jer jerky, so take that. Ooh, the, uh, oh god, what is that? Tell a book. Yes. Great jerky. It's very good. A little expensive, but yummy. It is a little expensive. <laughs> a little bit. Just a tad, just a tad. It's the way of us pale people, Momo. It's the way of it. What did Momo say? She's in awe that she got sunburned from being in her fucking living room. You know, see, it happens. <laughs> I did see something on TikTok, though, about millennials having great skin because we don't go out in the sun as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have great skin because we don't go out in the sun as much, but we burn like shit when we do go out in the sun. It was more of a joke, but it's not wrong. It's not wrong. We have great fucking skin. I have impeccable skin. Valorbound.
Uh, considered great warriors and trained since an incredibly young age, the Valinor Elves possess the intimate knowledge of several weapons. You gain proficiency with long swords, one martial weapon of your choice, and one ranged martial weapon of your choice. I love it. Legit. Oh no, Aga, they're, they're, these are white people talking about white people problems. Don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't apply to you, you understand. <laughs> Legion, that whip looks fucking sick. But I have the intense urge to put my hand in the mouth. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, I see it, too. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but looking at that is just like, I want to put my hand Oh, no. In. No, I see it, too. I want to put my hand I'm in. not one who would say that lightly, but yeah. It's just like, it's in a in very mouth. insertable mouth. I want to put my hand in a mouth. Crunch. No, God, no. It's just, it just looks like it could fit a hand. I just want to put it in. True. It is giving big Eva vibes. Which a little I bit. And then, like, the head space. <laughs> what do you mean, insertable mouth? I don't know. Just the way that he's, like, smiling and has his mouth. Yeah. Open, it's just like. It's the smile. It's just like, hey, hey, hey. You wouldn't. <laughs> It's not really even a smile. It's just the way I don't know something about the the sh face. Yeah, the I can't shape describe of the it either. Right now, I just it feels like I want to put my hand in it. What if you did? Would he do anything? Probably not. God, it's so hot Our here teeth. right now. But we're dropping down to the fifties again next week, and I'm very excited. Teeth. How hot was it actually, though? Oh, we got up to, like, upper 70s today, I think. My one friend in Naperville uh, had a, uh, like, they got in their car, mm -hmm. and uh, it was 95 degrees, and they were freaking out, and I'm like, oh, you don't even know. Oh, you don't yeah, even it's understand. Be, it's supposed to be, like, low 80s the next two days. Okay, I hear this out. It's supposed to be low 80s all of today and all of Saturday. It's supposed to snow Monday. Oh my god. Uh, that... Welcome to the Midwest, baby. Yankee vibes. I love being in the 80s and then it snows on Monday. <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous. Which means uh, Tuesday and Wednesday are probably going to be tornado hell. It'd be like that. Uh oh. Even Sunday might be tornado hell. Fortunately, Tornado Alley is shifting, so I don't have to deal with it as often as I used to. I'm still in it. Woo! No, we're not in it, actually. Don't dox me. We are technically no longer in it. Oh, fuck. Then why, it just were, kinda... there then why were there oh. two tornadoes around my house last week? Oh, oh no, don't worry. It still happens just as bad as it used to. <laughs> but the, the one change is that it's also shifted east, so now they suffer too. Dude, fucking two weeks ago during Stake My Heart, uh, I had to go in the basement because we got tornadoes, and then like a day later I found out I was sandwiched between two tornadoes that were each 10 minutes away from me on either side of me. Nice. One in the north and one in the south, and I was like, Oh, I, ju I just got missed. I 
I love Legion art. Legion, again, I say that I want to stick my hand in it, in the mouth in the most, like, loving way. I don't know why, it's just... He make me happy. But also, I want to stick hand in mouth. Lovingly insert it. Just, he, it just looks so inviting. What if I did stick his hand in there? Would it be padded? He wouldn't do anything. He'd just let you do it. Thinking about it, I, I mean it in like a, it looks great. I, me, I By a loving way, I mean it looks fucking fantastic. But I still want to stick my hand in his mouth. And not in a loving way towards him, in a loving way towards you, because it looks fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the dude would appreciate it regardless. I don't think he would. I think I'll he bite would. your I, fucking hand. Exactly. I don't think he would. I think he would. If you surprised him, he'd just be he'd like oh 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 oh. Just like see if they go up to him and he's like, hey, get the fuck out of here and just uh, his fucking your hand No, his no, mouth. he'd say that to you. He'd say get the fuck out of here. And then you just like put it right in. It's kind of like what you do with like your cat or your dog when you're just like, hee hee. Oh yeah, you ever do that thing where your dog tries to chomp on your hand so then you just like make a fan with your hand up and down? <laughs> I, just, I do, that to, I, I do um, that to Lily when she when she chomps on my hand. My dog is special and uh, she, instead of like when she, when she wants to lick someone, she doesn't just like lick them normally. She she has to make sure that part is in their mouth. So she'll be like, I want to lick your hand. But like first, I'm going to take your hand into my mouth, bite down, but not too hard. And just like a lollipop. I'm like, you need to stop doing this. This isn't <laughs> normal. <laughs> I know that Lily just likes to chomp on my arm. She just likes to put my whole my whole fucking arm in her mouth. I'm like, this isn't normal behavior. You need to stop this. I know you love me, and I know you want to play, and I appreciate the fact that you're not biting down, but why are you putting my arm in your mouth? Like, this isn't this... Like, you need to grow up, ma'am. How succulent. <laughs> the human flesh. Mmm, the human flesh. Okay, but Lily's a... Lily, Lily, my baby. Yeah. I wish you want her to fly, but also she's like... She's the type of dog that doesn't know what to do with her feelings, so like whenever we have people come over, she gets too excited and she doesn't know how to show it, so she goes and gets a toy and just walks around with it in her mouth. <laughs> she just wants to show everyone. It's her well, favorite no, thing. That's actually like a dog behavioralist thing. When when your dog gets too excited or they don't know like what to do with all of their excitement, especially when like people are coming over, because that's the most apparent, uh they'll go and instead get a toy and it's kind of them being like i'm so excited you're here i want to share my things with you <laughs> I, I want i want i want to do things with you i want to share my things with you i'm very happy that you're here please enjoy this thing that i like with me and it's very cute but then she puts my fucking arm in her mouth and i'm like honey i i get it she wants to show you too she loves you Zorro you're her favorite that. toy. Yeah. It means it means that your puppy just gets really happy and really excited when they see people. It's very cute. Uh, sunlight step and sunlight jaunt. Uh, when you use your sunlight step, you can touch one willing creature within five feet of you. Both you and the creature are teleported, appearing in an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within 30 feet. If there isn't enough room for both of you, you can choose who to send, teleporting either one of you. Nice. Uh. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> it just comes out of me, man. I like that though. That's sick. It's like a, it's like a, like a short range dimension door. Yeah, and they can do it a number of times equal to their proficiency modifier. Yeah. They gain it all back on the long rest. So that'll be a very mobile, which is sort of what they're meant to be. They're meant to be very mobile fighters. So you're doing it. So these are all, all of the like misty steps are long rest, right? Not yes. short rest. All okay, of them are good. long rest. Okay, good. I was going to say like, they get too many charges of those for it to be short rest. So I'm just making sure. Absolutely. <laughs> hmm. Okay.
My dog ignores me now? Aww. Oh, that's just unfortunate. I'm so sorry. Yeah, this is sad. <laughs> to be fair, my tiny dog hates me. He, uh, he is the only dog that I've ever had that loves conditionally. He only loves me when I am the only person home. That's it. If, if my parents are out, then I am his favorite person and he wants to be around me 24-7. But if my mom or dad is home, he's like, I fucking hate you. Get away from me. <laughs> Don't touch me. Alternatively, no. <laughs> uh... Don't touch me. My other dog, Lily, uh, she, she is a unconditional lover. She will love you no matter who you are. She is the worst guard dog in the world. <laughs> she, if, if you broke into my house, she would not care. She would walk up to you. She would. She does this really thing, this really cute thing when she's excited. Uh, she'll start like tapping her front paws like she's tap dancing, <laughs> and she'll just sit there and stare at you until you pet her like tap dancing with her front paws. Uh, she, she is the sappiest little baby ever and she loves everyone and then my, compared to her brother he's a demon my dog she is very like quite literally all bark and no bite uh because people will approach like it, it happens every day with the fucking mailman i'll be sitting in my room she's sitting on my bed and then she's like oh shit it's that time and then the mailman will come up and she'll start barking her fucking ass off and like it got so bad to the point where she nearly ripped the curtains off my fucking <laughs> window. Oh my <laughs> and then like I'll go get the mail. She'll be like at the door. And then the moment like I go get the mail, she like just suddenly becomes like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause you any problems. I was just, <laughs> I was just. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like ma'am, you just ripped the curtains off my window. All right. <laughs> yeah, you I'll need to control that. <laughs> I post the babies in text chat. Because I took this really cute one of them the other day. Let me see, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see him. I took this really cute one of them, they were sitting butt to butt the other day. Is there anything else to give them that would make sense? Because, like, oh my god, even the, even the Lashar worshippers oh. have four things. I love them. What do you think skeletal talus would look like? Ooh. Skeletal. Uh, so you know how he's all like very flowery and stuff like that? I think definitely incorporating more of his human features when he was alive into that would be good. But also um, like all of the plants on him becoming like withered in decay and almost like uh, Petri wood instead of the more alive and fungal wood i think like a petri like decayed shriveled wood but also incorporating of course a lot more bone in general bone what else could you add for these elves high elves high elves high, high elves high elves are typically known for what do they use? I'm going to see what they usually get because it's been a hot minute since I've played a high elf, so I have to look. They get in fourth edition. They get a cantrip of their choice from the wizard spell list. Yeah. Uh, then, well, the, they get the the weapon training. They get, again, dark vision, fey, and tra fey ancestry, trance, but their thing is that they get a cantrip of their choice from the wizard spell list, and intelligence is their casting ability for it. So, if you want them to still be high elves, you could give them, like, maybe shield spell once a day. Ooh, shield. Strong, uh, I like but that effective. I like like you, could, you could cast shield once a day because they seem like more of a melee elf already because of the, the weapon training you're giving them. Mm -hmm. So I think that like letting them be able to cast uh, shield like once or twice a day would be pretty good for free. The old boy full of rage here, Legion. I get you a better picture because he was being a cutie the other day and he was being sweet when I was holding him. Demon! 
He is a demon, but he was being a sweet demon the other day. Demon! <laughs> look at that little look at that little corgi just smiling. That's a whole look nice chicken, Thex. Look at that baby. Little tiny doggy. Hmm? A cute pupper. That's a whole ass chicken there, brother. Oh my. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so fucking Brown, did you guys get the like intense hailstorms a few days ago? If we did, I live in the basement. If we did, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna send these. Uh, look at this fucking hail that we got. Ah, damn. Ooh. Put a hole in somebody. I didn't get any property damage, thank God. But I know Chris got some bad hail a few weeks ago. They were like golf ball size for him, and they smashed a car. They smashed a They, fucking they car were window. fucking huge. It busted part of my car. I didn't realize till later, but there's a huge hole in like the plastic at the front of my windshield. Oh, well, that's just that's just unfortunate. <laughs> my shit's all dinged up, but I also don't care because fuck cars. You only drive your car to go get Starbucks now, it's fine. It's, uh, the only reason I do so is because I physically can't take it by bike anymore. Yep. Oh. And I'll He's show Starbucks mine. Boy. I'll show my pain. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the stake my heart crew that if they ever wanna give you a gift for your DMing or your time or anything like that to just get you Starbucks gift cards. I mean <laughs> I, I won't argue it. <laughs> You'd use it too. You'd use that I would that use a hundred percent of all funds given. And there, there was the hail I was dealing with. Yeah, we got some nasty hail storms. Oh my god! Wait. Came across a few weeks ago. Golf ball hail ain't no joke. It busted my my mom's jeeps windshield uh, god was not happy with us for some reason it's because we, we live in tornado alley it's just what this is our lot when you live in tornado alley it's also hail alley it's oh. also we want to fuck you in particular alley why do we live here why do we live here you may ask just to suffer i live here for the corn <laughs> the corn. The corn. I'm here for the corn. The corn. Let me see if I got any good other pictures of the babies for you, Legion, because you appreciate the babies. The that corn, is one thing. That, take us away. that is one thing that I do love about Peanut is he has such a fucking personality. Uh, he's very vocal. Whenever he wants anything. He will grunt at it. So like, uh, if, he, if he wants up in his chair that he sits uh, on the with me, he'll just he'll just like put his arms up on the chair and grunt at it to be like, I need uh, help. Or when he's out of food and he's hungry, he'll just go to his bowl. He'll grunt at it. When he's out of water, he'll just grunt at his bowl. Uh, and it's just like at least he's vocal about what he needs. I uh, appreciate it. That is what he sounds like, though. What the sounds that Chris is making? That, <laughs> That is what he sounds like, though. <laughs> it sounds like he's vaguely injured, but he can't tell you how. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of, like, so one of my neighbors had this dog. Uh, you ever, so it was a husky. You ever see those videos of, like, the woman's like, I love you, and the husky just fucking screams <laughs> yeah they're, they're all good all of them are good yeah but like so like we i remember when i was a little kid we just like just moved into the neighborhood and like i'm like laying in my bed at night and i'm slowly about to drift to sleep and their husky fucking screams like a yeah. fucking skinwalker at the top of their lungs. Yeah, you're like, you, what the fuck? You're you're on the verge of a dream. It's just spawning in your head, and then the cleric beast begins. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the? F I, I I was so scared. I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, what's going? on? I thought like a fucking banshee was about to fucking get me or something. <laughs> like, what is this? What's uh, happening? I have to. <laughs> post it just because it's like required at this point but there you go enjoy oh, it's so good dude 
It's just so good, especially with the Cleric Beast health bar. Yes. It, it's the last scream that does it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> 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 Why are dogs the best creature on this planet? Tell me. I don't know. I have so many bad experiences with dogs. I love dogs. They're the best. See, I, I had to literally fight two dogs yesterday because they were trying to kill a... T not yesterday. What the fuck? Last week because they were trying to kill a cat. Oh, no. Jesus. No, wait. I thought they were trying to bully the possum. Nope. They were. That was several weeks ago. But then the same dogs came back to try to kill the cabbie. The tabby cat. No. No. It's not good. It's because all of the... All of the dogs... So, Chris is a cat magnet, we like to call. His house is just a magnet for stray cats. They flock to him like... A, like, fucking, it's crazy. But the stray dogs in your neighborhood are not very nice. It's... <laughs> not that nice. It, it's an immigrant thing. It's a problem. My house is a magnet for ducks because we live near a lake. I would love ducks. Can I trade the dogs for ducks? You want all these dogs? Because I want none of them. As much as I would love that. No. <laughs> you don't like dogs that roam the neighborhood and attack anything that moves? What, no. What don't you like about this? Because now as much as I love dogs, uh, I don't want the responsibility of those dogs. That's the issue. <laughs> Oh, th don't worry. The owners don't want that responsibility either. Oh. I know, but the, the only issue with the ducks is like, okay, yeah, the ducks are great. I don't like them. You know, they're fun having in the backyard. Um, unfortunately, when I let my dogs out, they the, the ducks insist. <laughs> they fucking insist on just like, yo, I want to get close to that big thing with the fucking teeth. <laughs> that could I'm kill like, me. What's up, um, dude? Uh, and I'm just like, I have to go out back and just like shoo the ducks away. And I'm like, you, you can't be back. You will die. They'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, whatever you say, two legs. Let me talk to that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I'm just like, they will kill you. Like, not because they hate you. It's because they don't want to play and they play too rough with ducks. You need, y'all need to go away. <laughs> it's even more ironic that Crown called them two legs because ducks are two legs. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I didn't tell you that Peanut has a new fucking trigger word. Concerned. It's Squirrel. He fucking... He has learned the name for squirrels because we, we have squirrels that like to walk along the fence, but they also like to get into our garden and fuck it up. Squirrel. So they have, they have a... He has officially learned the trigger word squirrel and he fucking hates them. Like, he... I have never seen Peanut run outside faster then if I say, Peanut, there's a squirrel outside, he Do will you... bolt it and he will look at the top of the fence and he will chase that fucker along the side of the fence. Do you or your parents hate squirrels? Uh, my dad does because they always like to dig in his garden. That's why. Squirrels. That's why. But like, he officially knows the word squirrel now. And so whenever we say, oh, Peanut, there's a squirrel outside, he will bolt out, he will look at the top of the fence, he will see that fucker, and he will just chase it along the fence until it jumps into a tree nearby. He has heard your dad on more than one occasion say, those goddamn fucking squirrels. Fucking <laughs> squirrels. Uh, yeah, Lily's, yeah. Lily's trigger word, however, is ducks. And if we say ducks outside, Duck. uh, Lily will run outside and chase ducks. <laughs> I'll kill you. Not get you, dude. Oh, oh, so you dead. All right, Legion. Well, I hate you. Legion. His full name is Peanut Buttercup. We call him Peanut. Uh, P. I just call him P. Uh, I call him Nut Boy, <laughs> Brother Nut, and then when I'm pissed at him, I call him Peter. <laughs> Peter. Yeah, I love. Peter. I love he's, all that. I love Peter, every single bit Peter of that. Hanna, if he gets, if we're really, really pissed, he's Peter Hanna. Again, and I posted it a moment ago, but because I'm a bad streamer, I don't have a lot of emotes, but this is my emote. It's her dog. Nice. There it is. <laughs> He's hey, judging a... your soul as he stares at you. I had, a, actually... I had a cat named Buttercup, so, you know. Aww. It's because we would greet him and say, what's up, Buttercup? And then he would meow. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I, forget. I, I could hold him in my arms and he would be like, yes, hold me. Oh, 
I remember our family, we had a cat. Um, so it was our, it was a cat we got from our neighbors because they were moving, they can have cats. And we're like, oh, okay, we'll take the cat because my mom loves cats. And we're like, what's the cat's name? It's like, oh, we call her Allie. I'm like, oh, that's a nice name. Like, like Allie, we thought like Allie, like the person was like, no, no, Allie isn't like Alley Cat because we found her in an alley. And I'm like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I'm Thomas like, O'Malley, sense. baby. Yeah. So at Allie Very Cat. Very literal. Yeah, literally her name was Alley Cat. First name Alley, last name Cat. <laughs> All righty. Brother Nut Real got me. Listen, I, I started saying it one day and it stuck. I would look over at him and I was like, what's up, Brother Nut? And then it just stuck one day. I I never lived it down and my family uses it sometimes. We So it's one of those things where like your dogs have many names. Your pets have many names. So it's like we call them thing one, thing two. We call Lily Bertha sometimes. What Bertha? else do we call what else do we call Peanut? We call him Peter, we call him Ibby. Ibby. I don't know why we call him Ibby. Uh God, what else is my... My mom is the one that calls them, like, all the fucked up names. Yeah, you're the one with, like, pets who have many names. I call my cat Kitty. I don't even call her by her name. I, I call Lily anything that rhymes with Lily because she only understands the illy part of her name, so I can call her Billy Willy Silly, and she'll, like, come to all of them. Silly. <laughs> So I can, then, I can color any of those. And I'm sure you have a picture of it, but she makes that, like, face. It's Which like a face? face that's like, she's upset that you said her name, but curious what you said. And she's just like, huh. This one? No, not that one. It's when she's like poking her head through the door and she just makes this upset oh, face at you. Yeah, oh so she is the master of looking sad for no reason. And she likes to do this thing where she just opens my door just a crack so she can see me through it, but not actually come in the room. It's this. It's this face right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's Please like let me in. Like a cartoon. <laughs> Please. <laughs> she looks so sad though whenever she does it. I promise I won't bark this time. Excuse me, please. Can I come in? Bam. Like, it's, it's a Bam. regular occurrence though. <laughs> like, it's a regular occurrence. Bam. Please let me into the room. Hello. <laughs> Mama, can I come in and cuddle? I Mama. won't bark. I, pro Mama. I promise I won't bark this time. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> and she's been doing uh, that ever since she was a puppy. It's very funny. But then she also does this. So she likes to be in the way all the time. No, that's just your average dog. As in like, so if I'm walking to the kitchen, she will purposely stop and sit in front of me. But whenever she wants something from you, she will just sit directly in front of you and just stare up at you. <laughs> so most of the time when I go to see her, this is all I see. I just, she just stare, this is all I see. You're so happy. But then like when she's really excited, she'll do a little tappy tappy dance with her front two paws too. She's so honestly, happy. Honestly, that is, that's some cat behavior right there. <laughs> she, she is an angel and her brother is actual Satan. True. That's why he needs devil time. Devil time? <laughs> but also, uh, she's the master of begging and knowing how to uh, make herself look cute. So when she really wants something from you, she will rest her head on your knee or on your armchair and just stare at you like this. What, what is the fucking meme? The TikTok meme? Oh god, I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, I thought it. I thought it was half Saint Bernard and half Mastiff, but like Twitch, like b blocked out the first three letters of the 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 first half. You passed a year ago. Sadly, I'll have to post some pictures of her later. I can find some. It'd be good. It'd be good. Super. I want to see some pictures of a giant fucking dog. I do too. I want to see dog. a giant dog. I love dogs. 
jokes. The oh. smolder, that's the meme. Oh, and then if you want a funny video, here's my dog, uh, Peanut, being a human and using his little handsies like a, like <laughs> a human. A peanut. Look at him using his little handsies like a little human. <laughs> <laughs> he owned it. He eaten. Oh my! Oh my God! They're wearing clothes too. That's just basically a guy right there. That's not a dog. That's just a guy. Yeah, he's in a little sweater that he has to wear. When did you, cold so, did you ask that guy if you could film him? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he's filming dudes without their permission. He's just an <laughs> old guy that enjoyed yeah, his he's, food. He's, yeah, so he's a little hell? freak though. He uses the paws like little handsies. <laughs> There's the smolder for you in case you want it. Dog. I remember, I remember one time uh, when I came <laughs> home from school, like my parents were all like sitting in the front yard and they were laughing. I'm like, why is it so funny? And then they call our dog Natalie and she comes over. And she's wearing fucking like gym shorts and a fucking shirt. And I'm like, why? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, why'd you guys dress the dog up like that? He's like, because that'd be funny. I'm like, I'm like, well, she looks like she's having a great time, so like, I guess I can't be bad. Uh, the Bible stud. Whoa. Bible stud. The Bible. I know stud. you mean Bible study, Damn. but. <laughs> Damn, Jesus really be a stud. Dude, Je dude, Jesus is fuck. He got. He's got. No, he has. Dude, Risen. My saying, my dude JC has risen again. Dude, I'm just saying, like he said he shoulders our burdens. I didn't mean, realize he meant it literally. <laughs> I mean, unironically, the way that most Christian art depicts Jesus, he do be a stud. He do look like a Swedish meatball. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> The rat is here. Brother Nut is here. Hi. Rat, where? Hi, Brother Nut. Where's he? I. <laughs> he went to bed. I want to give <sighs> the Wood Elves, the the R and I, uh, to, to be able to communicate with small beasts. Nice. You want my little piece of jerky that I have left? Or do you want devil time? Devil time. He, he, that's all he wants. He wants At the end of the day, oh. if he was convinced to inhabit his devil form, he would. And mm -hmm. then he would make ugly noises into a microphone. He did just kind of walk over to me, so I expect that's what he wanted. I expect he wanted devil time. Devil the question time. is the question is crowned, do you want devil time on your stream or not? Because I can mute my mic if you if he wants devil time. What the hell's devil time? It's when he lets his inner demons out. Oh, uh, I feel my sanity slipping, so probably not. Okay, let me move my mic when I let my doggy have <laughs> Yeah, I already heard him a little bit. Little did we yeah, know. Yeah, he's, he's already he's already grunting a bit. He's on the verge. He's little on the little. verge of excess. Oh, he didn't find out devil time is they, they let the dog play league for a bit. Oh my god, the voices. <laughs> uh, Gren Gren, we have the Valinar Elves, which we finished. They get Lore Smith, which is one of their uh, abilities that they can use. They get their their version of the face step, uh, which is the sunlight step, and then they get sunlight jaunt, uh, which allows them to teleport themselves and another creature who's willing. Uh, they have Valor Bound, which... Uh, teaches them proficiency with long swords, one martial weapon of their choice and one martial ranged weapon of their choice. So they could be hammer elves if they wanted. And it's not like they haven't made el or uh, hammers before because one of the hammers in DOA is an elven hammer. It is Anduar, the mall of judgment. You done? I think he's so done you're saying with... these elves are jacked then, right? Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. The twin hammer Anduar, known as Verdict. This weapon sports a finely crafted head that appears akin to a gavel. Scripture is written along the shaft. For when hatred judges, the verdict is always guilty. Oh. So, this is one of the, uh, this is what the half elf in the party has Alaric. He wields Anduar. 
Are you Yo. Crying? My tiny dog is crying. I have to wipe his tears. <laughs> Come here. Look at the leaky eyeball. Come here, child. <laughs> no, no, we're done with devil time. Come oh. here. Oh, I heard it. The devil came out. No, that was not him. No, I heard it. This is him. Yeah, there he goes. It was want... only a taste of the devil. I don't want to do any more it's devil really time. It's really a taste of what we can do. It's just... only a potential of his full. He just wants to, like, sit on me and have me, like, pat his butt right now. Then do it. I'm doing it. Oh! Slap it vigorously. What if I... What if, you... what if I gave the... The Aranai Elves... What if I gave them shifter abilities? Just like they crossing are... over with changelings. I mean, they're the wood elves, so they are the more, like, druidy elves in general. So, I can see shifters, like... Like minor forms. Oh, buddy, you're stepping on. I a feel club. better than that would maybe be like natural ability to change into animal form, but that's also crossing over into druid territory. So, could give them alter self once a day. Alter self, like, could to give themselves like claws. It seems fair. Like bestial, like uh, aspects. Hmm. Oh, Jesus, Pete! Oh, God! It's like okay. a little narrative thing you could do that, like, doesn't actually affect too much, but could become useful if someone's smart. I mean, like, Alter Self, you can give yourself gills with that shit, and you can breathe underwater. Alter Self is really good if you know how to use it. Imagine a heavy armored elf with a hammer teleporting towards you and slamming the hammer against her cranium. It is badass. Agreed. Do you peeps tomorrow? Indeed. You will see us today for uh, for CTF. Here he goes grunting. Oh, yeah. Today is Friday, huh? Correct. <laughs> Man. I lost, I lost track of time today. <laughs> Eight hours did go by very fast. Oh. Uh, well, for me, it was different. Uh, it was my friend's birthday and we went out and my friend was like, hey, we should all have shots. I'm like, I've never done that before, but OK. <laughs> I lost track of time. Oh, my God. Look at Genji standing up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, where's he? Where's Genji? Oh, baby. Where's Genji? Standing. Standing. I love Genji. I love Genji. This guy's still streaming. Hey, Zerg. Uh, no, show, do us, you have a, show us Oro. <laughs> do you have a Thor allegory? I'm going to be making one. It's you. You're the Thor allegory. Ah. <laughs> Hey, DM, did you ever... Was the Crystal Tiefling still just an idea? Did you ever end up, like, fleshing that out? Um, that's what I'm working on races right now. It's going to be one of the ones oh. I work on. Oh, my God. I want to I wanna be one. I want to be one. An elf girl? <laughs> Jacked elf foot. Yo. Who are you? I'm Thor, she says, flexing her muscle. Loki loved big, 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 big Thor from, uh... Same. From, uh, fucking God of War. Ragnarok. Yeah. God of War. Oh, that was such a good game. I like the big belly Thor. He's just like, uh, yeah. Dude. Yeah, I loved him. He was great. It was a fucking jackass, which made it even better. Oh, absolutely. He was like, I'm Thor and I know it, so I'm going to be a jackass. <laughs> I'm just a destroyer. Ugh. 
about the T. Hey, 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 we're still working on the race, Legion. We're still working on the races. We're not making NPCs. <laughs> I know Grungren's coming and talking about NPCs, but I'm making NPCs just yet. Don't worry, we're going to make the retainers, Legion. We're going to make the retainers. Do you have the toad race? Like the Bullywugs? Is that what you mean? No, like the ones from Mario. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly, like in town, just hello! Hey! I would kill They're them. They're my mushroom people. They're mushroom people, yeah. They're my Vikings. I would kill them. They'd be like, <laughs> why not? Why, why would you kill them? Us. They could. They, they don't have to be voiced by normal actor. They'd be voiced by uh, who the fuck did in the movie? Yeah, Keegan, Keegan, Mike, and Keegan. We could have him do it. <laughs> what if I want to play one of the bush people? What? Can I be a Deku one scrub? Of the bush is one of the. Oh, the <laughs> awakened <laughs> shrub. Yeah, what if I want to play uh, the awakened uh, shrub? Uh, that should really be your new mascot, <laughs> is, I'm is, telling you. Is there enough races out there where the whole team could just be like a team of inanimate objects? <laughs> we got pot, we got bush, what else that, is there? <laughs> that's, Honey's, that's Honey's new team, it's just a bunch <laughs> yeah, of just awakened in, items. Yeah, just like inanimate objects and shit. <laughs> that were awoke, yeah, just a bunch of awakened things, that's his new Damn. team. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Oh, you know, I hate, I, I dislike the Kender, but I like their taunt ability. What if we gave that to the Wood Elves? The Kender? Uh, the who? The, the taunt. Uh, you have a supernatural ability to uh, hone in on a creature's emotional raw nerves uh, and craft a taunt that flusters the creature. The creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw uh, or it has disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of your next turn. Is it just a disadvantage on attack rolls in general, or is it di a disadvantage on attack rolls against a creature that isn't you? In general. I'll be right back. Go get beverage. You can use it as a bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Gain all of them back when you finish a long rest. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Like their own form of like vicious mockery. Yeah, that's it's sick as fuck. And this is for the wood elves? Yeah, they are a knife. Okay. I'm gonna forget all these fucking names. I need to drive them into my goddamn brain. Especially because I'm gonna be playing an elf, he would know. Uh. Is this going to be like a public thing that we can see in yes. the Foundry? Okay, good. It's not going to be in the Foundry. It will be on the Kanka page, though. Okay. I'm just writing on Foundry because I like the format of Foundry. And I copy Nutters. and paste it over to Kanka. Nutters, because I want to be able to look at the Drow stuff later. Drow stuff. I want to look at it, too. I want to look at it. I'm playing a drow, baby. I'm excited. I'm just a drow boy. I need no sympathy. <laughs> except for the town that found me and they're like, why the fuck are you here? <laughs> Go over there. It's a little drow boy. Ain't that cute. Uh, if I showed up at the elven town and they were like, why the fuck are you here? Where did you come from? Uh, you go to go to go to go to fucking Sunfall. I don't know. <laughs> e. I can't tell if it was like uh, they were interested as to why he was there, or they were like, oh, "We really don't want you in our town." <laughs> uh, you'll find out because you'll guys. You guys will probably be going back because I I don't know what you guys are gonna be doing once the game starts again because you guys have a couple hooks, uh, and that's 
like aside from like keeping you on retainer the baron doesn't really have like another job for you aside from sending you out to go clean up like more goblins and stuff so no. like you have the hook to iridel and i might craft some rumors about like northbury and shit like that so you guys will have like a choice of where you want to go i want to go back to the elven town eventually take me back there dm i want to ask them questions meat that's my goal I got Jimkin. What type of Jimkin? It's just roasted Jimkin. Oh my god, he got the Jimkin. It's just a big old piece of Jimkin. Why didn't you share? Well, you're not here. Fuck you. My god, super. Look at that fucking beast. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Holy shit. It's Wait, a tank. Oh lord. What are we talking about? There's a dog. Okay, I was I was pet. looking at the dog too, and I wasn't sure if we were looking at the same thing. He's huge. That do be a tank. They're huge. Oh my play. god. The wide boy. Uh, wide. Your average adult uh, chocolate lab next to this gargantuan beast. What you don't know is that tiny dog is actually a full fledged adult. It's full size. Yeah. Yeah, that house is actually upscaled, so the dog that, has, you know, seems like the dog is just as big as that truck. <laughs> you see, that dog is huge compared to the you know, Like, it, if they got closer, it'd be able to pick it up like a chew toy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crown has the ability to subsume all critiques into himself. Even those, uh, even those who would critique Crown end up reinforcing him instead. What? 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 No, I understand. I get it. I, Same. My brain turned off. Minus two. Mine's I, I'm off I'm now. curious what I said that prompted that. Like if I just like if somebody said something, I just glazed over what they said. I think I think it's because he thinks you're mm -hmm. cute. When were you last sad? That'll probably explain it. <laughs> uh, like a week ago. Well, oh. bro, lucky. What's happening here? Oh, excuse me. Fuck. fucking excuse no i've been burping all night <laughs> i had a lot of soda earlier <laughs> dude i get water burps water burps what the I, hell's water <laughs> it's very problematic i don't burp from soda i burp from water i had one i had i had a lot of mr pib earlier a, a rare choice but yeah, I figured, you know, I was out and they had it on the menu. So I was like, I'm going to get Mr. Pib. <laughs> if you said, hey, you can choose one soda from a list, I would never pick Mr. Pib. I was like, might as well. If I if I had if I had a choice of what I wanted, I probably would have got like cherry coke or like cherry pub shakers, cherry. Oh, dang, are the elves all done? No, I think we're just starting the Wood Elves Legion. Elves. What are they going to get for their, like, Misty Step ability? Great question. Misty <laughs> Step. Uh. They could, like... So, you know the Entangled spell? Yep. 
Maybe they leave like entangled snares where they teleport from in like a radius around them. Oh, like a trap? Kinda. Hmm. I was thinking oh, no. that or like when they teleport, they have the like roots and vines spring up. But what would that, that would be better. That would be better for the players. So I assume it as like when they leave, they leave difficult terrain behind, basically. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So it's kind of like Thunderstep in a way, but instead of, like, the thunder damage, they leave behind, like, a... Like again, a 10-foot like, radius, or a 5-foot radius of difficult terrain. Yeah, like a, the Entangled spell, or, like, maybe just, like, in the blocks surrounding where they teleport from. Like you leave, you leave uh, thorned barbs in every square around you, in a, like in a five foot radius, from the point where you leave from. I feel like you're sort of like, I mean, I guess if you're teleporting away, my view is always that like at least one teleport will be used to get to combat. Hmm. Well, you could also make it like a neat thing, but also a debuff where they teleport into a place and then it spawns the same entanglement. Mm. So it's inconvenient for them to do it, but it's basically a free ability for them. So it's like an inconvenience for a convenience. And it's also like narratively cool. Like they spawn where the roots spawn. Or like, yeah, when they get to their destination, maybe the Entangled spawns around them. So that exactly. way, like, when, they're, when they're fighting, uh, any enemies like near them or that they might be next to would like have that sh pop up beneath them. That'd or maybe cool. it could be like a when you teleport, you can choose to have this pop up next to you. You could also just do that. Like, I like that. The idea that like or when you pop up. You teleport to a spot and you choose to have like roots attempt to entangle the creature. They'll have to make a save or they get restrained until the start of your next turn type deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. And if you make it optional, it makes it so that like they can also like hop around without impeding allies as well. Uh, intuition, the R&I elves. Your connection to the primal spirits and the way of the world afford you a connection to all creatures who call Ada's home. Using your bonus action, you can tap into the emotional state of a creature within 60 feet of you that can hear and understand you. Uh, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or it has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you until the start of your next turn. The DC equals eight plus proficiency plus your int, wisdom, or charisma modifier you choose when you select race. You can use this bonus action number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Good, good. Elf. Elf. I love elf. elf. I, I haven't played an elf before either, I don't think. Would it be possible to have them blend in foliage? I do want to keep their, their base ability, which is like Anytime there's a natural phenomena, you can just sort of like obscure yourself with it. Like if there's rain, if there's snow, if there's mist, you can like, you can hide in it. Also, hello, Retros. Hello, hello. Do you guys ever named them all and have decided to give them cool, unique abilities? That's pretty fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, I finished humans last night and i'm going to be finishing elves here soon uh just goes to show you that world building is no small task because holy fuck it's been indeed uh, eight hours and we've only hours. done elves yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we've done uh we have our, our three types of elves we have our valinar elves we have our aranai elves and then we have our sharian elves to be fair an, a good hour of that, an hour and a half of that time, was also making all of Lulth's lore, which isn't technically the elves. Also, a good hour and a half of that was just like bullshitting nothing, so. A whole day. We, we did get up day. to a lot of bullshit. Go, well, come on now, what's another eight more hours, damn? You did get the the finished uh, Lolf lore though. I love I love her new stuff. I love love her new stuff. I like her new name. 
I like her lore and like what she did and like why she's in the vault. That all of that was great shit. I what look was the? Just seeing that on the Kanka page. What was the subtle name? So she and... has she has two names. She has the name before she took, like before she was taken into the vault, and that's Lashara. Uh, and then there is her name that she took when she was locked away in the vault by the Allfather, and that is RNA, the Primal Weaver. The Primeval Weaver. The Primal Weaver. That's loud, oh my god. Oh yeah, do you have the other gods up on the Kenka page yet? I have some. I, I'm still, like, I need to make more gods, which is why I haven't put the rest of them up. But there's like a handful of there. I think the Allfather's up there. I think Sariel. Uh, Zomarin. Oh Shulia? yeah, they're under, they're under characters. I just Shulia. Say, that's, that's my issue with Kank is I just don't know how to navigate it yet. So they are under characters and I was like, oh, okay. I had to step away. Are these elves all homebrew stat wise or do each have a 5e equivalent? Uh, they sort of have a 5e equivalent. Like the Valinar are high elves. Like I've, I've sort of listed it. Uh, Valinor Elves, known to most uh, of the common tongue as High Elves. Uh, Aranai Elves, known to the most common as Wood Elves. And Sharian Elves, known as Dark Elves. Is there a judgment race, a race specifically created to slaughter the ones that the Allfather deems unworthy, like Einherjar? Uh, no, I haven't made any Einherjar yet, but I have considered it. Warforged. <laughs> no, Warforged were made to kill Celestials. They were made by mortals. Okay, fair. Yeah, the Warforged in my setting are known as Celestial Killers. All right, let's go kill some gods then. Well, buddy, I'm gonna kill some gods today. <laughs> gonna kill some gods. Like a, a plus five to stealth? Uh, I've actually, I'm not entirely sure. Aside from it saying you can attempt to hide, I feel like it should give you a little bit more. Like, I don't know. I feel like just the fact that it says attempt and you don't get anything else is pretty blah. I uh, got a concept for you. Mech suit sarcophagus using the soul of their host to keep going, but mad as the years go on. I sort of have that. It's uh, it's proto illithid tech. Yo, boy, illithids. You tech, tech in my fantasy, get it out of here. Well, tech in the sense that it's like uh, arcane punk, like Archeo tech. Like, it's like psionics and shit like that. Psychic. The truth behind the orcs, oh, the orcs, is that they're the Einherjar? Oh, shit. Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. Perhaps. Like, League of Legends aesthetics? No. No, uh, when I say arcane punk, I mean like the the blend of magic and like technology. Like, uh, here is here is a mind flayer arcanist. This is what a mind flayer arcanist in my setting looks like. Doc Ock, is that you? Doopy Doc Ock. Dr. Octagonopus. Uh, here is the, the Epsilon Security Unit, which is a... Uh, it is a proto illithid uh, like machine. It basically has like a, a servant or a servitor is bound inside of the mecha and, uh, and operates it, even in death. No oh my. Is that a bad thing? Is it a bad thing to be put into that? Yes. <laughs> the, I, don't, 
I just needed to ask. The illithid in my setting are responsible for like races going extinct. Yeah, they yeah, killed, yeah. <laughs> they killed the kobolds. Yeah, they killed the kobolds and shit like that. Except it's more just like I needed to ask to know. I didn't <laughs> want to know, but now I do, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> Is that what happened to all the gnomes, DM? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't uh, even, I wouldn't I even would. deign to to give them lore. Gnomes never I, existed. I'm, I'm just like imagining Sardox. He's just like, it's like, hey, someone reading is like, oh, like, are you like, what's a gnome? Like, we don't speak that name ever. Chris, how you feel about halflings is how Crown feels about gnomes. I, I've just... given life to my gnomes in my world finally after years, but fuck halflings, I hate them. It's Everything just, about them. Every DM has that one race that they just fucking hate, I think. I used to hate a lot of races, but now I've opened up and it's like, alright, I give up. People Dude, like things. I, I remember when you absolutely fucking hated it when people started with races that get innate flying. Yeah. I remember Yo, when you fucking Aracocra. despised it. You were like, I hate... I hate the ASMR that gets flying speed. I hate Aarakocra. I hate fairies. You just hated those races. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> when you don't know what you're doing and you try to design quests that require, like, moving around, having a Z dimension ruins everything. But then, if you open up your brain for, like, two seconds, you're like, oh, wait, that doesn't matter. Like, you can just do other things to like contradict that then boom but i was too i was too naive at that time i did not understand it was <laughs> bad it's okay it happens <laughs> we're all baby dms at one point baby dms i still am baby dm i don't know what the fuck i'm doing you've dm'd two level 20 campaigns you are no three. longer a baby whoa DM. three that's on oh, yeah, the dance you, uh, you did the you did the oh wait doubt. no Seated. Oh wait, no. How, wait, what level did Maybe the four them? get to? See, uh, twenty. Okay, so the, you have four level twenty campaigns, and then you ran an epic level campaign. Wink, Yo, gamer. Wink. Uh, yes, no, I I killed the kobolds. Uh, nah. mostly because I thought of like what race would be easily accessible for them to grab an experiment. And I was like, it'd be kobolds. Like, it wouldn't be the drow because the drow would put up a fight. It wouldn't be the Durgar because the Durgar would put up a fight. It wouldn't be the Dwemer because the Dwemer are fucking insane. Like, kobolds, uh, kobolds like, literally have a class ability that's cower. Like, that's their racial ability. Like, They're cower. Come here. Come here, little boys. Come here. Not, I don't think they have that anymore, do they? The cower? I think I that's know. well. I guess I think that's like a in grovel, cower, like, and beg is an action on your turn. You can cower pathetically to distract nearby foes. Huh. I thought they changed that in Morta hands. I guess I was wrong. Dude, I will say it now. The best kobolds are Pathfinder kobolds. Pathfinder kobolds, wah! They get breath weapons. They're actually cool. What do you mean? Five year kobolds are cool. I like they the look are. of Pathfinder kobolds, no, though. They're awesome. They're awesome. <laughs> I like no, I like the little I chunky will. guys in Pathfinder. I think they're pretty neat looking. <laughs> if you want a if you want a breath weapon, be a fucking dragonborn. Oh yeah, kobolds in Pathfinder, they look so cute. I love kobolds and I can't play them. I can't play a goblin because they're hunted by most uh, most of the party. They're like I said, you could play one, but it's gonna be really strange because there are currently bounties out for goblins. Isn't there goblin. like a, a goblin-ish race that isn't a goblin? What am I thinking? Hobgoblins. Is that the Veldican? No, I'm, I'm not. Aren't, aren't hobgoblins like a, a con or like a half breed of like orcs and goblins? No, in my so, setting, they are half humans, half goblins. Okay. All right. It's not that one. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it, Momo. You might actually like it if I can find it. Cool. Uh, the Drisharden Empire. Destroyed. Defeated during the uh, the Third Age some 300 years after its conquering of most of Tyros. 
Uh, the Dressaran Empire is the oldest and greatest goblin empire to have ever conquered most of Tyros during a time referred to as only the Dark Age, when mortal forces have been shattered by the sundering of Eldrin, the High Seat, which broke <gasps> numerous cities and empires into nothing more than whimpering forces of their former glory. Okay, Momo, look in the uh, text chat. These are called uh, Verdin. They're like goblin-ish folk. They're not completely goblins, but they're goblin folk. Goblin adjacent. Oh, they're, they're really pretty. They're kind of, yeah, they're great. They're uh, they're kind of they're just slightly more taller goblins, yeah. and they're more humanoid-ish. That's an interesting thing. What are they? They're the Verdin. I will link them. Uh, Dressaros the Second of Stetmore, commonly known as Dressaros the Great was the warrior king of Stepmore and the Great Conqueror, was a uh, hobgoblin born of military-driven family deep in the southern mountains of a land which has come to be called the Ettenmore in modern times. Oh having, uh, having witnessed the death of his father during his marriage at the hands of barbaric humans, Drazoros uh, was pushed onto the mantle of leadership at an incredibly young age. Known to have utter contempt for humanity, he led numerous raids on southern settlements, uh, which saw the first of many victories for the young king. It was an attack by a neighboring tribe during one such raid, which made the young king question the purpose of infighting, why goblins would shed each other's blood and diminish their numbers to such a great extent that the humans could once again rebuild their vile empires, subjecting goblin kind to the horrible ways once more. And so the young king stuck, uh, struck out to meet the numerous chieftains and rulers, attempting to bring them into the fold. Technology, knowledge, and teaching, stolen from the crumbled ruins of former kingdoms, the forces of the Drazaran Empire were unlike any other goblins have uh, been or seen. Also, Momo, they are short stacks. They range, ra height ranging from three to four feet in height. They're just oh. more proportional. Let's go. Sorry. You, you've linked cursed, you've linked cursed D&D shit. Have I? Yeah, it's from the AI. Oh, Acquisitions I mean... Incorporated? Yeah, curse. I mean, you know. Yeah, no. They're just, they're more just like, uh, they're proportioned well goblins. Like even their, their lore it has in here, like they speak goblin, stuff like that. Uh, they start out similar in size to the goblins they were created from, ranging from three to four feet in height. At some point, after reaching maturity, they can undergrow uh, a growth spurt at times. Uh, starting at level one, you are a small creature, but when you reach fifth level, you become a medium creature. But that can be like an if you want thing. And then they have like blood magic and stuff like that. Blood magic. They're pretty cool. They're just like goblins, but uh, they're like if you smash goblins and elves together, kind of. Back about water again. Water. I like goblins. Goblins are fun. Oh, yeah, they even speak goblin and all that. Goblinade. I remember uh, in one of the games I used to play at, the main like uh, antagonists were goblins, and they they'd made their own language. And then like a, the one of the fucking part, my party mates was like, "Hey, so like, what's their language called?" And then he just like, "Oh shit!" Uh, and he's like, "It's called gobbledygook." <laughs> there we go. Don't fucking tell me about it, Momo. Oh, I feel you. <laughs> <gasps> the fucking you guys know the new mouse Pokemon from the newest game? Oh, uh, Tandem Mouse. Look at their fucking full art card that they just got. Oh, yeah, I love babies. them. I love them. Little babies. High cost normal card though. I love them. I like playing the mouse. You know, the the newest the newest game introduced some Pokemon I really like. 
There's some pretty cool ones out there. Pokemon fills me with so much confusion. It's just mouse. It's just it a mouse, mouse lesion. It's just and mouse. Then, and then another one shows up. And then another one shows up. And then another um, one shows up. They're based off of... So their name is based off of just like... They're, they're based off a type of like nesting doll, essentially. It's just like mouse house. It's just like, it's just like they're just a little family of mouse. Not a mouse. It's just a little family. Oh shit, is that Kaneki posting more art on Twitter? <gasps> Kaneki's been really into the fucking horse girl, like the racing anime gotcha thing. I remember, I remember hearing about that. It was like horse. My first thought when I heard about it was something, I was like, so centaurs? And they're like, no, 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 no it's not centaurs. I'm like, well, then what the fuck is it? <laughs> Just horse girls that they race and they're also idols. I'm like, oh, not gonna lie. It would have been funnier if it was centaurs. Kinda would have been funnier if they were centaurs. Like, come on now. Legion, where the fuck are our DMs? Oh, there you are. Legion. Merchant, give me my stuff. I shot all the medallions. Is Momo still playing Gale? That's up to Momo. It's up to Momo. A lot of us be switching it up, though. So I've, so I've heard. Yeah. So I didn't want to fuck it. I didn't want to have to fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. What made you think they had to kill each other? Because you were gonna eat pe If I saw you eat people, I definitely would have attacked Bro, you. That's literally what pots do. They eat people. No. Well, they do. It's very different. Uh, they eat people. Very different. So what if, you know, you ask for permission and um, do it in a more cultural, ritualistic sort of way? Yeah, you're just, you're eating people. <laughs> Is TOS even gonna be the same campaign anymore? How many of the members of the original group are even gonna be there? Don't know until we have it. You know? Yep. It's the whole point of it. It's a fucking we're testing shit campaign. I think Pim and Avael are sticking around. It's the whole oh, point Pim. of it. We don't we don't want to have another session where it's just our group fighting with each other for three hours again. You know? Sometimes uh, characters gotta get switched out for characters that mesh with the intentions of the party better. Sometimes, yeah. Just to meld better. Because <sighs> I fucking hate that feeling. When like, I'm like, okay. Like, this, the key, when your character doesn't fucking meld with the rest of the party. Wasn't that cause caused by the insanity? No, not inherently. It's just a lot of... We had two people that were very hard, good aligned, and some people that were more willing to take deals with people who were more sketchy, and the, the good aligned characters were very against that, and the more morally gray people were super for it, and it just led to some... Moral yeah. disalignment. Yes. And I'd rather have a character that can... Because Honey was good. He was, like, too good, though. So I'd rather make a new character that can easily swing to both more gray things or more good things or more nasty things because that's a character that is easier to meld with more groups. 
Dude, just bring honey over to DOA. We have a bunch of good guys up there. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are also like doing some crazy shit somewhere else. And you already have a pot. I'm so we could have two pots. You no, know, we could have like we, we got we got we got the custodian and then we got honey dude. And like since you both look alike, honey could be like, hey custodian, this is how you be a good guy. And he'd be like, oh shit. Dead ass. On God? And on God, the Blake of like, uh, he, yeah, good guy. <laughs> Are DOA morally gray? I would say DOA definitely like leans towards like good. Ne I would say neutral good because like some members of the party are willing to just do what needs to be done for good things and others are like okay maybe no, let's follow the rules here but I feel like Blake's actually the only one that wants to follow the rules <laughs> can your job boy hit the gritty maybe okay hit the gritty fucking do it <laughs> fucking <laughs> your job comes in he's just a fucking total fucking zoomer <laughs> He's not a zoomer, dude. He's not a zoomer. He's a totally, he comes in, he just fucking like, yeah, we beat those bandits, and he starts fucking, he fucking hits a whip, and then mm -hmm. nanays on him. Dude, I fucking, I love my DMs with Legion. My neurons are just constantly being activated, and then I devolve into brain rot. Excuse me? That's just, that's that describes mine and Legion's friendship. I think in general, <laughs> is that... neuron activation, and then eventual dive into brain rot this is, this is my life i love brain rot i live in a continuous brain rot soup i'll get brain rot about something for two days and then I, somebody will say something to me and i'm like nope now i got a new brain rot uh, and, then I sit, and then i sit in that soup for a week and then somebody's <laughs> like hey here's another hot take and then that's, I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a new flavor of brain rot now i'm sinking into that soup that's called adhd that that was that was fucking me when I was crashing on my friend's couch. There was like this one fucking video on YouTube where it's just a guy making fucking noises, and me and my fucking friend would just sit there and fucking imitate it for fucking like <laughs> longer than like we should be. And it was like, man, I feel like the best I've ever been in my life with this brain rot. Legion, I'm trying to say I enjoy our talks and our DMs and our conversations. I'm trying to compliment you. I love you. I enjoy our conversations. Fuck. No, stop. I don't have the ammo for this. I'm in the brain rot phase myself, dude. Once you enter like your brain rot arc, you you don't leave. That's what yeah. I'm starting to notice. I don't yeah. remember it. I wish I did. It's like I've entered the brain rot arc about a year and a half ago, and I just can't get out. Yeah, I just, like. Deeper and deeper you sink. I, I had brain rot for a hot minute and then it went away and now I have nothing and it feels unfulfilling. Yeah. You just oh. need to find something to rot about. Yep. You just kind of like, you long for it after it's gone. You, well, yeah, I long for it when it's gone, but I don't know if I want it again. But Why? Great. It feels nice. It's fucking awesome. It does feel nice, but it's also disastrous for any sort of facsimile of productivity you may have okay so that's true for you but i'm the type of person where i get to like oh god what is it what what is it called i get ocd obsessive no. in particular oh upset yes i do get i get a oh, fuck god what is it i have <clears throat> it's a name for it it's not ocd hyper fixated uh, yes i get hyper fixated on things and then the brain rot stems from the hyperfixation. Yeah. And it's I've been hyperfixated on the same shit for like a year and a half now. But the brain rot just get it, it feeds. So normally when I get hyperfixated on something, it'll end after like I don't know, it'll end after like two, three weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. 
but when you get brain rot during your hyperfixation, it's just constant food for it in different ways. So I'm I'm like riding the same hyperfixation for for multiple years now. Honestly, <laughs> not bad. It's Would love the, the brain rot just gives different types of fuel for it. Sounds nice. I have a cat. She has lots of hyperfixation. Brain rot constant in my gray matter. Yeah, like I'm fine with the brain rot in my gray matter because it gives me something to like, you know, think about. Let her speak to me. Let, let the cat speak. Yeah. Hello, sweetie. She's scratching me so bad. How are you, sweetie? That's all she's got. That's all she got. Oh. Oh. <laughs> is that a cat? Why? <laughs> What's happening? What's going on here? What are you doing to that cat? <sighs> What's happening? What's going on? Nothing else? Is that it? Is that cat screaming? Huh? That's all she's got. She got nothing else. She's at her limit. What is that cat screaming? What's that cat yelling for? What's that? Yeah, I feel that. Feel that on a spiritual level. Razi, I know you're not lying to the people. Did you tell them DOA is good aligned? They're definitely good aligned. I point at Talanos. Talanos, I would argue, is at least fucking like neutral or at least ca fucking like chaotic good. He'll do good things, Oberon. but like Oberon, nah. Okay, Oberon is definitely fucking like he's on the cusp of like evil, neutral evil and evil. When they but say he, good aligned, I think they mean like lawful good. I think only one like, person in the party is lawful good. Nah, fucking good's good, man. See, Legion, I'm gonna say, I got, I got, I sit here in my Piper Hellebore brain rot soup and I just, I, I drink it. I drink the soup. I sit in it. I bathe in it. I absorb it through my skin. I drink it. I gargle with it. My God. And I just sink deeper into the soup until I am nothing. Hold on, dude. What about until Zafina? I'm she's good. One with the soup. She's, uh, she's neutral. She's good. She's good. <laughs> and Abraham kind of is starting to lean towards good ever since yes. he became the Night Executioner. Night Exorcist. Yeah, Night Exorcist. Yeah, I don't want to say Executioner. And, and then, and then Evelyn. I, you know, I'd, I'd argue she's, <laughs> she's neutral. I don't, she's neutral. She's nature. <laughs> and then Blake, he's lawful good. He follows the rules because that's cool. I'm lawful good, stabs Evelyn. That was not <laughs> his fault. He was under the influence. That's right. That's what you remember. That's he what you should remember. Uh, he was under the influence. That doesn't count. Under the influence of what? Vampire. <laughs> Tharless Clearwater. <laughs> I love my party. Stabs them. He does. He loves his friends. He would never God, what do that I, on purpose. What I love I that they didn't aim. know, and so they were just like, "Wait, what?" It was great. I was. I. I hope you do that. Like, if somebody ever gets like dominated, person me, I will. or charmed, you I will. DM them. You know, I love it. He's done it several times I love already. It. It's one of my I've favorite almost... things to do. I've almost killed Ibrahim fucking twice because he's like, oh, you have the crown on your head. And he's like, Blake, he's <laughs> the enemy. Kill him. And then literally Blake scored a critical hit on him. <laughs> every time. Every time I'm like, hey, you should hit him. He's like, okay, natural 20. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. He loves fucking dominating Blake, bro. Because the, the moment he takes a hold of Blake, Blake will fuck anybody up that isn't the fucking enemy. He's my favorite. <laughs> oh, no, that's yeah. why when you try to fucking dominate the pot... I was very scared. I was like, oh, honey, we're oh. fucking these people up. Oh, yes. 
But he just he kept making the saves. He just kept making the saves. I wish I made those saves. I, I wish I could remember his title. His title is fucking dope. He had the Who's remixed title? uh Thorless Clearwell, the vampire you fought. He had the he had oh, the dope yeah. Castlevania remix as his as his theme. I fucking love that fight. Oh my god, especially like when Evelyn got taken over control. It fits so well with Castlevania. It was so good, bro. I, I I'm kicking myself that I can't remember. I think I my favorite. Maybe I could cheat. Hold on, maybe I could cheat real quick. I think I I think my favorite like when you were pulling out music is when we fought fucking Waylon in his fucking Sephiroth form. Yeah, and and you started playing fucking. Doom, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, yeah. music, music really does make or break a fight sometimes. Fuck I yeah. love good music. I I when when he was doing it like his super ultimate like special I really thought he was about to play fucking Winged Angel, like, yo, what the fuck's about to happen to us? <laughs> and then Blake almost <laughs> died. He nearly took twice his health and damage. <laughs> Oh no! Turns off their magical items. Dude, oh my god, bro, <laughs> that was so fucked up. Show me you're a true hero. Heroes, we want. Well, I mean, yeah, no, we're they're heroes because they survived technically. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, round. Yeah. Fucking speaking of magic items, now that we got uh the drow and. Our new, our I'm going to figure little... out the magic items, don't worry. Yeah, I just want to know what you might want to do with it. Like, because I don't know what you want Glenstone to be in your world yet. So I'm down for like nutty shit. If you want to like completely fuck with it. Mm. Like I'm down for because he became an arcade archer for you know why. Mm hmm. But the bow is separate from that. The, the bow is kind of just like a gift. And so if you want to go like full on nutty, nutty, like whatever you want to do with it, feel free. As long as it like I can still shoot with it, A plus. So because I don't know exactly what you want Glenstones to do and or be exactly yet. So I'm down for you to just fuck around and find out if you want. Oh, yeah. yeah Especially... Especially because it's an item that I want to like keep and upgrade rather than like switch out for a different item. It's a it's a bow that I'm gonna want to keep around for a long ass time and then upgrade it rather than buy a whole new bow. Yeah. So now that like drow lore is established, can it be one of those crusader drows y'all were talking about the other day? <laughs> one of the ones the the RNA. Like you serve, uh, you serve RNA, the, uh, the primeval weaver. The hot drow woman crusader. You think I'm doing this for roleplay purposes? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a rogue drow. I want to break away from the stereotype. I'll be a hot drow paladin mom. <laughs> It can't be a crocodile. Uh, let's I mean, see. That, that too. I'm doing that too. <laughs> Shari and elves are split between their worship of the same entity, though their practices vary wildly. They're known for their arcane prowess and abilities, as well as occult fanaticism of their imprisoned queen. When picking this lineage, you'll decide which society you come from. Those who worship uh, Ashara are masters of glintstone sorceries and the arcane, while worshippers of RNA are masters of the occult sorceries and demonic rituals. Uh, as a Lashara worshiper, you get Glenstone Barrier, you get uh, Brilliant Starlight, you get Arcane Studies, and Glenstone Shard Cantrip. Uh, as an RNA worshiper, you get uh, Blessing of RNA, you get Sunlight Sensitivity, you get Blood Step, Bloody Thorns, Arachnid Favor, and Soul Reaving Aura. Soul Reaving. I was very tempted to have it where, like, if you walked into the radius of an unconscious creature, you would cause them to fail a death save. But, uh... I feel like that, that could be get kind of wacky. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. maybe get wacky Maybe. I think I might just save that for the NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> I saved that for the NPCs. 
Uh, but essentially, I'm thinking of glintstone rods as at least they give you uh, access to X amount of glintstone spells as if they were prepared, possibly in the form of having some number of spells level spell levels to split between the ones you want to assign and some function where you can take time to reassign the spells in your glintstone. Hmm, OK. Do we have a spell called Slamma Jamma? I'm afraid not. Are the elves restricted to specific continents or do they they just go anywhere? They are they're not restricted to any continent, um, but your culture does vary wildly depending on where you're from. Like the elves of the east, a uh, Valinar elf of the east is very different from Valinar uh, elf of the west. Hey. So what's this glintstone y'all y'all been going on about for these, a couple times? What's what's that? What's glintstone? The glintstone's from Elden Ring. I never played Elden Ring. I wasn't interested in Dark Souls oh. 4. Um, it's essentially like a type of magic source. Okay. Okay, that's cool. It's like raw, raw magic in like, or in it's, like material form. Oh, okay. So like a magic in like a mineable form, quote unquote. Essentially mana crystals. This is glintstone pebble. It's just, he's, he's just casting, that's glintstone. He's just casting a little fucking pew. That That's what that is. That's the lowest form of the spell, or the magic. Oh. It's called Pebble for a reason. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Maybe. Glintstone. And I'll show you uh, one of the stronger versions, which is Comet Azure. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you got to show that one. <laughs> one of uh, the stronger ones, quote unquote. They don't have a gif of it. Oof. Honey, it's okay. I know it's free. It's okay. I don't work tomorrow. But you like to go to bed at decent times. It shakes you, but I'm having fun. Yeah, but you like to go to bed at decent times, which requires you to go to bed. FOMO! Imagine. Out of the way. I hate him. Does anybody want to buy him from me? <laughs> Uh, it costs a lot. Depends. I got. I got five dollars. Cost more than that. I got five dollars and a coupon to Dairy Queen. Oh fuck Dairy Queen! I got a coupon to Dairy Queen. You got. You need Starbucks gift card. I got. I got half of a Wawa sandwich in the fridge. We don't got Wawa in Texas. Uh, that that <laughs> sounds that sucks. <laughs> oh my god, peanuts! Wawa's peanuts. awesome. Peanuts snoring behind me. Oh my god, Rizzo, he's snoring. Go to bed. Snore yourself. Be louder. Peanut, please. I love you, but you sound like you're fucking dying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually want to stop him from snoring? Maybe. If you want to go over to him, pat him nicely five times on the head, and then slap him vigorously four times on the butt, he will snoring stop now. snoring. We stop snoring now because he heard me say his name. If he does again, you know the the, the rules. That's how gotta, it works. I gotta pet him and then slap his ass. Yes. <laughs> slap ass. It will work. You may not think it will work, but it will work. Listen, I know, I know he's kind of like a cat, but he's not fully like a cat. It's not a cat thing. It is a living thing. I would, I would kick your face if you ever slap my butt in my sleep. I will do so. I you will, will fail I to will... kick me because you are too short. But. Are you? Does anybody want to buy him? Please, I'm I'm taking I, any offer now. I offered you what I had. All right. I, I will take the five dollars and the Dairy Queen coupon. I really you want, will. You don't want the sandwich? 
I don't want the sandwich. I'm gonna be honest, homie. It's meatball marinara. I'm good. I'm good, frankly. I'm All right. good. Alright, good, because I wasn't gonna eat it anyway. Okay. Why do you have it? Because, uh, because after uh, you know going out having a friend at my fun at my friend's party, I was like, man, I want some food. As we know it, the incident. The incident. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, man, meatball sub. And then I only ate half of it. And then you're like, mm, that's gonna taste like shit reheated later. Ah, uh, see, here's the thing. I don't, I don't reheat it in. The microwave. I put that bitch in the oven. Hell yeah. I have finally gotten my family to fucking clean out the air fryer again. So oh, I can start, I can man. Start re uh, reheating my fried chicken in the air fryer, and I'm so happy. Oh, I love air fryers. That's like the best thing ever to exist. Why art thou silent? What are you talking about? I'm, I'm writing right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wrote writing. Forest Caller, the R and I are close to the spirits of the wilderness, allowing them to weave through the forest and grasslands with considerable ease, gain proficiency in nature and stealth. Woo! He's jamming. Yeah. He's jamming while we're being the fucking clowns. Honk, honk. I also have, like, one song currently that's, like, it's it's been, like, a, a brain rot song. And it's uh, when I'm listening to it, I can just focus fully. It's really strange. What song? Uh, song Out of My Bones by Randy Travis. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god. Oh, no, get away. Okay, Chris. He's, he's snoring again. What did you say? Five times on the head, pat, 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 and then four times on the butt, slap, slap, slap. All right, I'm going to try it out. I'll scream if it works. So they won't scream because that'll wake them up. Oh fuck! Wake them too easily. These big fucking ears heard my chair creak. Right, so but you up. didn't. You didn't go through the entire procedure. Oh uh, fuck, Ashley, quick! He has big fucking Yorkie ears, he'll hear anything I do to move. Yeah, if you don't go through the entire procedure, though, then the ritual is not complete. TOS is not the Sunday grin. Unless it is, and I've been not informed. Is it? I need to know. I would inform you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, no, I still need to finish sure. some things. The hope is that it would be soon, but I still have stuff to finish, so... That's fair. Take your time, King. Yeah. I wish anyone cared that way about me. What do you mean? Uh, here I am, not ready. And it's like, well, I better be ready. Just say that then. Just say, hey guys, I need another week so I can make the session as good as possible. Everybody would understand. I could, or I could work really hard and make it as good as possible. And you hurt yourself because you do this because you don't listen when I tell you, hey, if you need another week, take it. And Wink. you say, no, 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 I can get it done. I just I just need to work all uh, night and then be horribly tired and sad because it's not as good as I wanted it to be. When you could take another fucking week to make it as good as you want it to be. I mean, it is as good as I want it to be. And I did do it. So, am I wrong? I hate you. I hate you so much. This is love, everybody. This is love. Imagine being in love. I fucking hate you. <laughs> I so hate much. You. I hate you, I hate you. It's real couples goals when you can point out your partner's flaws and they say Keck W at you. <laughs> Keck True. W. And True. They say, and they say Keck W at you and continue to do their flaws. Keck W. It's just like every time Chris tells me to go to bed and I say Keck W. And uh huh. Then he's like, <laughs> hey, uh, could you take care of yourself and like maybe pace yourself better? No, hey, could you go to bed? You. Hey, fuck you, stop telling me what to do. Never. At least I listen to you. I just don't actually don't. do what you say. You don't listen to me. No, I really? listen to you 100% and then just disregard it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I do to you. When you say go to bed somewhere, I say, okay. Are you good? And then you say, are you going to bed? And I say, no. And what do I say? You say, stupid fucking bitch. I do not. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, that sounds about right. God, the amount of times I asked my girlfriend to not hit me on the arm when she laughs, sigh. That's- that's endearing, though. That's- that's just her, like... It's sometimes endearing. Sometimes yeah, it's a bit much. It, it depends on how hard she's hitting, I guess. Yeah. But no, nah, no, nah, what's a little, like, you know, you're sitting there with your significant other, and then, you know, as you're laughing, they, you know, summon unholy spirits to plague your household, but nah, it's just, you know. Listen. <laughs> I'm the type that when I want to be affectionate, I'm bad at showing it. So I'll just like kick somebody until they get closer to me. <laughs> kick them? Like, hey, I want you to come over here. Kicks. Why won't you come over here next to me? Kicks again. I said get over here next to me. Kicks again. Gren, you just spoke that statement and then you just heard what Summer said. How do you feel? Oh, fuck. Fuck off, mate. Me and, Chris are, me and Chris are the type to bully each other. Like, no! Just you! Yeah, it's just you! That's true. You, you'd be a great house husband. You'd make me food, and then you'd drop it off Your in my life. office. And your your then, life would increase in so much like quality of living every yeah. single day if I could just like give you food occasionally. You just come into the office, drop off a plate. I'm like, ooh, food. I would food. not even speak words. I would literally just like give you a bagel with some butter on it, and you'd be like, oh, okay. No. What what have we said? I this is one of the first things I taught you. Never butter my fucking bread. I hate bread with butter. I will kill you. You one, you've never said that. I hate butter on my bread. I love bread. Two, I, don't like butter on I my will bread. just give you a plain bagel and you I will, will eat it. I will be happy with that. As long as it's cinnamon raisin, I will eat it. Chris is just my stay-at-home husband. That's like that's his goal in life. I think is to be a stay-at-home husband. I'm not against it. Man, that sounds like a dream right there. I just, I just bring me food every once in a while into the office and provide cuddles at night. That's all I need. I'm an easy person to deal with. And then if I don't go to bed, I need to be picked up and suplexed into bed. Incorrect. But you do need to be slapped occasionally. <laughs> what the fuck? Ideally with something at link. So like a pole or a whip. Why do like, you want to hit me with a pole? I mean, one, to keep my distance from your violent outrages. And two, because it's convenient. Okay, just because I broke my remote by biting it too hard does not mean I have a violent outrages, okay? I mean, I didn't say it. That is not my fault that the controller broke so easily from me biting it, okay? This is why, <laughs> this is why I have chew toys. Me. Is why I have two toys say it. in here. The, the ones you don't use? I use them, I bite them. Uh-huh. News to me. Listen, I'm not, I, when I get physically, when I get frustrated, I need to take it out physically. And I'm not a puncher, I'm not a kicker, I'm not any of that, I'm a biter. So I need to bite things. And what I like to do is I need, I like to bite things and then I like to pull. So what I have to do is I have to like bite a pillow and then I have to pull really hard. And uh, what I would do was I, if I had a controller in my hand and I was pissed off, I would bite on the Joy-Con and I would pull. And then I'd pull really, really hard that the Joy-Con would pop out of it. And then I'd put it back in and I would wonder why my controller had drift. <laughs> So it's not my fault that the controller could not stand up to my my teeth. Okay? It depends. <laughs> was the controller made by Nintendo? Because then it might not be your fault. It was not. It was a PS4 controller. Okay, fair enough. I, I uh, did bite it like really, really hard. I, <laughs> I, I like I bit the shit out of that. That was not a good time. 
And you know, so I'm 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 a biter. I just I understand. Okay, well, uh, your your reason for getting a pole is valid. I will bite you. I won't I won't punch. I won't kick. I won't scream. But I will bite. See, the benefit though is if I had to give a guess, you respond positively to physical touch. However, with a pole. No one is physically touching you. You're being banged over and over. Just whacked on the face. <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed. Whack. Go to bed. And you'll be like, fine, stop. Just stop it. And you will leave. See, my the only time that I'm not good with physical touch is if it's like near my rib cage. I don't like being touched near my rib cage. Unless it's like a hug. But like, if you're trying to get my attention and you just like tap my side, I will kick you. Like... I do not like being touched on my side. Who would do that? That's weird. My family does that to get my attention. <laughs> Excuse just... me, Pokes rib cage. They've done that, and then I've slapped them. And that's they've bizarre. been like, ow, why would you do that? I'm like, you fucking, that's my tickle spot. Don't touch me there. <laughs> and now I'm chewing on my controller again because I talked about Chew on it. your goddamn chew toy. I uh, have the controller. Entangled no. step. When you use Wild Step, you choose to unleash. Uh, you can choose to unleash dense vines and roots from the earth towards any creature of your choice within five feet of the point you teleport to. The creature must succeed on a Dexterity saving throw or be restrained. Uh, this effect lasts until the start of your next turn. DC of like Dex save. Uh, okay. DC equals what I said. For yes. Uh, equals. Eight plus your proficiency plus your int, wisdom, or charisma modifier. Write it down so you don't forget. I should copy and paste it. Yes. Also, I'm biting the old controller that's already broken. I'm not biting my new one. Bite the things that are meant to be bit. Me, 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 me. The <laughs> one with the fucking little poppers too big. Bite the other ones. You haven't even unwrapped them, I bet. I haven't unwrapped them. I know! Do it! Try now! See what happens! <laughs> Experiment! Okay. You bought me two different chew toys for our anniversary. <laughs> Delightful. Damn, yeah, why aren't we like Legos. that? <laughs> Shut up. They do. They do. <laughs> why do they look like Legos? Do I get the it's... blue one or the red one? Either one. It don't matter. It's like, So the like design of them is apparently for the texture. So like they have different textures to bite. They're for ki they're kids sensory bites. Oh, this I'm... is kind of nice actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can like pull on this one because it has a handle. Yeah. You can pull on it while I bite it. <laughs> the the Aranite elves have intuition, wild step, entangled step, forest collar, and fleet of foot. Um. Intuition allows them, as a bonus action, to tap into the emotional state of a creature within 60 feet and force that creature to make a wisdom save. If the creature fails, that creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than yourself until the start of your next turn. DC is 8 plus proficiency plus your int wisdom or charisma you choose when you make the class or the race. Uh, they have their wild step, which is their face step. Every, uh, every elf has it, except they have entangled step when they reach level 3. Um which uh, allows them to potentially restrain a creature if the creature fails a dexterity saving throw. They have Forest Collar, which gives them proficiency in nature and stealth. And then they have Fleet of Foot, which increases their movement speed to 35 uh, and gives them a climbing speed equal to the same amount. Woo wee! Woo wee! Is there anything else they should get? They have something that's as good as mage armor for free. Uh, did you add the like altar self once a day? I was torn between the altar self or letting them hide. Mm. They already get the proficiency. They get proficiency in nature and stealth. I get team. Oh, as in weapon proficiency. I mean, 
don't all need weapon proficiency. I don't think the drows got weapon proficiencies. Oh, uh, but base wood elves do get proficiency. Oh. Yeah, they get elf weapon training. Elf weapons. Also, these other ones stink for us. They have, they have like a weird smell to them. And wash them. The brand new out of the fucking package. Just wash them. Yeah. I put it away. I think I might make. I think I might make elf weapon training part base of the elves. Because all what elves. It's all elves get, like base DD, all elves get uh, long sword, short sword, short bow, and long bow. So you need to change the long sword from the high elves. Yeah. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the elf weapon training just baseline for the elves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for like valor bound and shit, give them uh, either tool well, proficiencies or martial weapon proficiencies. You could uh, give them smithing proficiencies for the weapon one. But seeing people recently make race feats weaker because Watsi has decided to make race feats weaker. What are your thoughts on that, Crown? I don't think we're making them weaker. I think we're buffing them up. <laughs> we're making them better. Yeah, like... Uh, like, all elves in my setting get uh, a face step now. All the humans get a buff. Like, they have, like, all the humans have unique abilities to them now. Is there a movement focus elf? Uh. I mean, technically, I they're know. all sort of movement focused because they all have a teleport. It'd be kind of weird if, like, one sub race of elf was just, like, a little faster than the others, though. Well, I explain that as them having a connection with, like, uh, the wilds. Yeah, not necessarily the teleporting, what I mean. Like, like a base. Oh, no, I, I explained the, the R and I having an increased movement speed. Uh. And a climb speed. Valid, valid. Because I view them as very, like, the, the wilderness sort of assisting them. Yeah, they're so. nimble. So as they sort of move through the wilds, the wilds helps them. And as they scale trees, mm. the trees help them like scale. So they have a climb speed and a movement speed. That do, that do make sense. I'm just here hoping to see a level 10 unlockable feature for each subrace. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe if I start getting really noodly. The uh, the Valinar? The Valinar get uh, Lore Smith, which is like a free identify a number of times equal to their proficiency bonus per long rest. They get Sunlight Step and Sunlight Jaunt, which allows them to teleport another friendly creature and themselves to a place they can see within 30 feet. Um, and if there's no room for both, they can teleport, uh, either one. They have Valor Bound, which I'm probably going to change, which is proficiency in long swords, one martial weapon, and then one ranged weapon. I think I'm going to give all elves the, the weapon training. Uh, and then they have Hollowed Guard, which is, uh, within each Valinar elf is the power that, uh, a power that can be unleashed in dire situations that threaten the elf's well-being. Uh, you can cast shield. You can cast a shield spell without expending a spell slot. Once you use the spell in this way, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Uh, however, you can cast a spell using uh, your own spell slots if you have the appropriate level. Woo! So if you're a Woo. fighter, free shield. If you're a wizard, you have a, a free shield, but you can also cast shield again with another first level spell slot. I love them all. 
I love elves. Maybe I won't make it blacksmithing specifically, but I think I'll like you gain proficiency and expertise with an artisan tool of your choice. Yeah, that's solid. Are there any martial elves? I mean, technically, lore wise, the Valinar elves are the martial elves. I mean, you can play any of them as martial. Uh, how about pick one martial weapon, uh, and when you use the elven craft one, you can, uh, when using an elven craft one, you can treat it as a finesse. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So, like, the Valinar elves have the innate ability to turn weapons into finesse weapons. Ooh. That'd be pretty fucking cool. Like, if they get their hands on an elven axe, it counts as a finesse axe. Yo. If they get their hands on a hammer, it's a finesse hammer. So Holy. like, so it's they they got their hand on the great sword. That's a finesse great sword. Yeah, I mean there already are finesse great swords in the world. They're called flamdash, yeah. uh, but they're superior okay. weapons. So to get the superior properties, you have to unlock the ability to use them anyway. Uh, but okay. this would allow them to take a regular weapon and turn it into a finesse weapon. All right, so uh, Snapjaw's gonna be an elf now, because then everything will be a finesse weapon. You give an Elven Craft greatsword to a Valinar uh, that trained on it, and he's gonna finesse it. Yeah, I, I like that. Hey, Overcord, finesse gauntlets. Yeah. Ooh. Knowledge of Elven Craft. Uh, I like, I almost like it being like, not just one weapon, but if you pick up any elven weapon, you can treat it as a finesse weapon. I think, yeah, you just need to specify in there any elven weapon. Specifically elven. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, considered great warriors and trained since an incredibly young age, the Valinar elves possess the intimate knowledge of elven craft. Any uh, weapon of elven make that you wield gains the finesse property. Drow, drow focus a lot on, uh, like, glintstone. Glintstone and the occult. Indeed. Uh, glintstone and the occult. Uh, so the Valinar are the High Elves, uh, in my setting, Grin Grin. Uh, the Valinar are the High Elves, the Aranai are the Wood Elves, and the Sharians are the Dark Elves, or the Drow. And there are two types of, there's like, it's basically split. Fucking A. There are the Lashara Elves, or the Lashara Worshippers, who worship... Uh, who previously who uh, their queen was before she was imprisoned, and then there were the the Arani elves that are the uh, the worshippers of who she became. I saw it. 
you could like screenshot that and put that in our DMs, I would smooch you. What part? Just the both of the elven. I I think I already know which one of the sub races I'm gonna be, but I I like looking at them sure. for lore reasons. Also, whenever you put out those notes that we made for my queen, let me know. Oh, it's too big. It's gonna be a text doc. Hold on. Let's fucking go. Look. I'm cursing. Sorry, Resident Evil. <laughs> I'm bad at it. How dare you curse? I'm sorry. I won't curse. Yeah, fuck you. I'll 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 say happy positive comments. Fuck! I hope you have a nice Christmas. <laughs> Why Christmas? <laughs> I, I remember fucking seeing like a meme more guy. He's just getting like very visually upset at a game he's playing. And like, it almost like he looks like he's on a verge of tears and he's like, fuck you, I hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I wish that was me. Gren, I think it would be more so like the more spidery they get, like they turn into driders rather than into stone. Spider. There's nothing saying yeah. that they can't turn into crystal driders, but That's true. Okay. Oh god, yeah. The uh, I love I love the whole like crystal spider aesthetic that. You thought up. Oh my god, that was so good. Because I can imagine, like, if she ever comes back, the arcane, the arcane side will just be like, oh, <laughs> she's like made of glintstone. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, damn. Are you ever gonna introduce shard mines? Introduce what? Shard mines. What's that? Do you, you don't know what shard mine? So imagine a shard. Imagine it's like kind of like a rock person, but they're made of like crystals and shit. Is that a playable race or something? Uh, I believe it's fourth edition. Oh. Yeah, shard mines. They're pretty cool. Shard mines. I think they were in 3.5, too. Oh, well, they're pretty cool. Also, yeah. uh, pretty crazy looking. So probably be like a like a thing later on. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I can be a fucking rock person. Are we getting anything like the Chaos Dwarves? I'll probably turn the Duragar into Chaos Dwarves. Duragar, Woo! pretty cool. I love Duragar, too. Oh, they're, they're so awesome. fun. I like them. I like them. <laughs> oh, so fucking damn. Uh, the other day I was looking through lizard folk stuff again. Yeah, I realized lizard folk don't have, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> they don't have night vision. <laughs> they don't have dark vision. Yeah, I know. <laughs> why? <laughs> just fuck you. <laughs> but how am I going to see? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> you need torch light, baby. No. Get a torch, idiot. I don't want a torch. And buy some cool fucking goggles or something. <laughs> Yo, fucking goggles for Snapjaw? That'd be kind of dope. <laughs> goggles and night vision, baby! More like... Replace his eyes. And then I need to buy the opposite. I need to buy sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too bright outside. It's too dark in here. It's too dark in here. I can't see a thing. It's too bright out here. I can't see a thing. <laughs> I think that's it for the elves. What? Woo! 
Yo, elves are done. Elves are done. Yo. Kisses all the elves, smarches them. Clappity dappity. Smooch the elves. Nasty little elves. Oh, mm. <laughs> naughty. Naughty. Oh my. So, as a exactly. as a base elf, you get uh, plus two to one ability score and a plus one to another. Uh, you live uh, for essentially forever because I like immortal elves. I think they're really fucking cool. Uh, Wait, you are what? considered a medium creature. Uh, base, you have the blessing of Eloin, which is uh, the last star blessed tree, uh, which is in the east. And because of that, you still have your connection to its blessing, despite wherever you may live. And you get dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. You have keen senses, which gives you proficiency in the perception skill. You have fey ancestry, which gives you advantage against being charmed. You have elf weapon training, which gives you proficiency in weapons. You have trance, and then you have your languages. And then you pick what type of elf you want. So everybody gets the proficiency or the perception proficiency. I'm just sorry, my brain shut off for a second. I just went by really fast. Yes, okay, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm almost thinking if I should not give them that. Because I'm giving them so much already. Yeah, I would take away the perception proficiency. It's a bit much. And it's usually because elves are very less like scouty scouty. Press the delete button. Delete. He did it. He fucking did it. Then you can choose what type of elf you are. And currently, until I start working on some others or flesh them out, currently there are only three types of elves. There are the Valinar, the Erunai, and the Sharian. Wahoo. Yeah, we can potentially give the perception and the movement stuff to the, the hypothetical future wild elves. Yeah. Wow. Wait, elves are immortal? Yes, Isodob. I, I really like the idea of like immortal elves. It's it's a big thing in my setting that like as a half elf, you can choose what type of life you want to live. Like if you are a half elf and you choose your elven side, you become immortal. You live the life of an elf. So they don't naturally die at like round 700 like usual? No. Oh, so I can be old as fuck. I would ask that you don't be. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be like thousands of year old, but like a few hundred. A few hundred's fine. Yeah. I don't think for the backstory that we talked about, he would be more than like 500. I think 500 max. You know, speaking of it, uh, in your setting, DM, how long do lizard folk live? <laughs> five years. <laughs> oh, I was no. about to say five. <laughs> I'm basically, I'm basically an oversized kobold. <laughs> I'm an oversized kobold. Uh, how long do they live for? I have no idea, brother. I think I've seen where it's like average human years, but I always like the idea of like lizard folk being long lived, but like, you know, they just die young because they're fighting all the fucking time. And like, because uh, crocodiles live a long time because they're ancient. Let's see, how, how old are they? You edit that bit that... Oh yeah, I'll edit it once. Like this, guys, this is always the rough draft. I always edit it when it goes into the Kanka page. Oof. Uh... So lizard folk, uh, they mature at 14 and uh, rarely live past 60. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's also what I need to adjust. I needed to adjust. Sunites. They get a movement speed of 35. 35. 30. I need it's to adjust that on the Kanko page. It's a different race. <laughs> I mean, Gren Gren, uh, they can live a long time. Have you seen the salon? <laughs> I, I 
am very excited to play a draw. I'm just excited to play d and I want to be a lizard. I'm going to be a Sharian. I like Sharian. I'm going to be a lizard. I will nod at you while you eat people because I'm <laughs> going to be more okay with eating people because you see some fucked up shit in the Underdark. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Fucking Snapjaw is literally just gonna be fucking chewing on an arm. Going to shrug my shoulders and make arrows out of the bones. <laughs> I can do that. We both can make arrows together. <laughs> Are you melee or ranged? Wait. What, me? Yeah. Uh, he's gonna go melee, but like, one of the lizard folk abilities that it means the DM like is, uh, they can take like hides and bones and stuff and like oh! make it into like simple weapons. <gasps> That's neat! Yeah, I like it. Oh look, it's all of us! Uh, <laughs> look at it. It's all of you. us right Let there. I like it. this I like this map a lot, so it's it's something I come back to frequently just to like world build on. It's one of my favorite maps I've made, and I don't know why. I just really fucking like it. <laughs> this is like a cute little arena. It's where they met uh Onwin, the Lady of Morning. Yeah, you did I I watched you make this map. It's really good. I have the other variant that's not snow covered, and it's both of them are just gorgeous. So this is the one that we had our one v one on as well. Yes. The tournament map. <laughs> the Marius graveyard. Oh. No, don't call it that, dude. And you, know what, you know what it looks like? If you like center those tokens, it looks like a fucking select screen. Uh, are you gonna build all in fe uh, features into Foundry, or just add it as you go along? The species races. Uh, what do you mean, overcord? One more time. The phallic ruins. What? Nothing phallic about this place. Let's see. That's not phallic. If anything, it looks like a bug. Looks like a bug. Looks like a bug. That's a pill bug. That's a that, that, that's a bug. The pill bug. Look, look at them legs. I need to it, adjust. It was meant things. to vaguely represent a spooder. I like it. That's well, why I like it. Because of the whole widow motif. Oh. I knew it. Uh, I meant like the finesse options for elves. Oh yeah, I'm. I'll, I'll be able to change that on the fly when I make them. So when a when a person makes their stuff, that's why I'm also making these actors. Because I can just copy and slap over the maid ability into a person's sheet when I make them. Oh. So I can grab uh, Legacy of Conflict, which is a Tarosian human ability, grab it, slap it into the Tarosi human who made. Yo, wait, what's that ability? I'm glad you asked, brother. Because As a Tarosian human. human uh, to be Tarosian is to be of stout body and brave of heart, throwing yeah. yourself against the dangers of the realm for the good of all. Tyros oh, is yeah. built upon the stories of heroes, when the land united under the boughs of Thorland, the Silver Flame, and repelled the shadows which sought to consume everything. In times past, it is said that every man and woman lent their strength to the founding of what Tyros is today. But now, Tyros faces complacency. The sword has been replaced with a shovel as the people of the land serve their lords, cowering at the darkness. Every Tarosian possesses the spark of a hero within them, and this is shown in their unique abilities and traits when you choose the Tarosi lineage. You gain Leader of Men, Might Makes Right, and Legacy of Conflict. Ah, Leader of Men. Tyros is built upon the legend of brave knights and righteous heroes who've battled against the darkness of the realm. When an ally scores a critical failure on a d20 roll, you can expend your reaction and choose to inspire them, granting them an inspiration on their next roll, any roll that requires a d20. You can use this feature a number of times, equal to your proficiency bonus, and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. 
Yo. <laughs> Might makes right. To be Tarosi uh, is to come from durable and heroic lineages, but not all realize the potential that lies within them. You gain proficiency in athletics. If you're already proficient in athletics or gain proficiency in athletics later on, you instead gain expertise. As well, you gain Ooh. proficiency with one martial weapon of your choice. God damn. Legacy of conflict. Tyros has endured tragedy upon tragedy and yet withstands the onslaught of time and tyranny. As an action, shout to the heavens. All allies within 30 feet radius who are not deafened receive temporary hit points equal to 1d6 plus your level. To do so again requires a long rest. Yo. All of that just made Blake like a fucking support fucking controller. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, I, I got a question. With uh, that being like a Tarosian human, would you consider doing some for like people from specific regions? You know, like oh, people from Edmore get this, people from Rollfield get oh, this. Oh God! From... Would you <laughs> consider it? Consider it? Maybe. Yeah. How about okay. I? How about I flesh out all the playable races people want to play before yeah. I do anything else? Okay. 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 That's cute. I like that though. That, it was uh, nine hours just for the elves, and I'm on the <laughs> dwarves now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's fair. That's fair. My list like... of like main races I want to work on are humans done, elves mm -hmm. done, dwarves, half races, the Asimar, and the Tieflings. So those are the main races I want to work on. Okay. Uh, and then I want to add the other races like orcs. Uh, uh what were the others? Leonin. Leonin. Uh, oh, man, you have halflings, to do shit like that. Um, but when I think of, of Adis, I think of I think of these like six races that come to mind as playable races. OK, that's fair. The rest of uh, DLC races, I get it. <laughs> what if tieflings were born from four horsemen of burning fire and horns of different sizes and intricate carvings, saving tribes of humanity by battling the evils of the dark? I already have the four horsemen. I'm afraid. What's you a player are afraid. character? One is a player character. Wait. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I leave you to your world building questions. I go fucking bay. <laughs> Rest well, homie. Bad. Okay, bye bye. Bye, bye. Oh, okay, bye. bye. bye friend. Oh, wait, no, you said wait. Here I am. I said wait. I love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. 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 Uh, also, level 10, a lockable feature idea for Tarosian humans. Unbowed and unbroken. So long as you see an ally alive and fighting, even if your HP reaches zero, you deny death and keep on fighting. Ooh, that's very, uh, very hobgoblin. It is. Question. Feel free to ignore since it's a bit off world building theme. I've noticed you have a hex crawl map in there. I'm building a hex crawl map as well, but have not bought into Foundry. Just wondering, is there a way for you to control the fog of war to reveal one hex at a time? Yes. My big map, I don't do that for. For my world below map, I do do that for. Yo. In the world below. Wait. I like the world below. That's my home. So in the, from there. In the world below, here. I have their uh, their field of view limited. Currently, you can see everything because I haven't reset the fog of war. But if you grab it, you can only see the one hex in front of you. You move, you get the, the hexes adjacent to you. Keep moving, keep moving. As well, you are blocked by line of sight because these are all like parts of the wall. They're not uh, They're not tunnels or anything for you to navigate through. And uh, boom, you went from caverns to now fungal forests. I love the, I love the underworld. That's my home. And I have split up the, at least this map of the world below, which is very close to uh, CTF. Because they're after come down here to fight the face spider. Um, it's split up between the, the various types of uh, various types of of, of terrain that's here. Let's see if I can find my little handout that I made. Head cannon is that Tegan had a pet flump. <laughs> down in the underworld. Wait. 
I thought flumps were sentient beings. They are. Oh, no. They're, they're also kind of fucking dumb. I'm they are like, they're also like, like naturally attracted to evil things. Um, you have this here. He just likes keeping him around. He was so positive. Uh, you have these here, which are crag caverns. You have this, these hexes, which are fungal forests. You have these, which are sulfur springs. Uh, you have these as petrified plains. You have these as lava lakes. You have these as basalt bluffs. Uh, you have these as stone spires. And you have these as crystal caverns. Oh my God. Boom, 75 hook horrors. <laughs> Like a tiefling warrior who got who started the lineage by gifting the by gifting the unfortunate his gifts. I I sort of like the idea of tieflings being made from like Faustian deals and like couplings and pairings with these these entities. Like, I like abyssal tieflings of like either a family member in your line made a deal with the abyss or like paired with the abyss. And as such, your bloodline has been corrupted and from it, an abyssal tiefling has been made. Exactly. I, I really like the idea of there being like legendary tieflings of like tieflings back in the day but as a as a whole i like the idea of tieflings being uh of being like the byproduct of deals and like pairings and shit like that this one's also a really good map i mean i continue to fucking toot my own horn Oh yeah, my god, this map is so good. Oh, <laughs> I like your maps. I think that's they're great. That's a good map. I like them. This is where they fought the shambling mounds. I want to see more of your map. Yes, I'm gonna see more. We will. I actually I really need to make more done, like more battle maps. I've only been making city maps, and like my body craves to make like fighty maps. Yeah. I want to play so bad. I'm so excited for Tegan now. Yeah. I want to play so oh, bad. Fam, you're fucking, you're telling me, man. You have no idea. I'm just like it. fucking, just like, I want to play Snapchat <laughs> so fucking much. I love the lore that we made for the drow, and I'm just excited. Uh, uh DM, do, so for lore for like Lizard Folk, is it just going to be like straight for Warhammer, or is there like, is it going to go deeper? You're just going to work go on that later. Okay, cool. Cause I want to, I want to help with that. I want to help with that one. I'm excited to be a lot of people's first impression to like ever seeing a drow <laughs> on the surface. I think that'll be funny interactions. What would Viv be then? Like to get an idea? Cause I think her and another tiefling, uh, I don't know. What type of tiefling did you set her as? Because the, the devils in my setting the Hells are based very closely to Norse mythology. Fenheim. Like, uh, uh yeah, sh you show me your maps. <laughs> like, uh, the idea of, uh, of Vernus, the first layer of Hell being ruled by Zariel. Zariel is like a fallen Valkyrie. <laughs> so I, she, I ran into her. She has a lot of like. Well, you ran into her old version. the The new version I've made. She's very Valkyrie esque. Oh, so she she's not mean anymore. She's mean. She's oh. more steppy. She'd have stepped on you. Imagine she the Valkyries take... from God of War. Oh my fucking god! No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, oh, please yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh god. No what are the please. available tieflings? A billion of them. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping that you're gonna do when you make tieflings next, is maybe make it so there isn't a billion. 
I really do like that they trimmed it down to like abyssal, eldritch, and uh, like hells. I also, I also want to make my crystal tieflings, and I also want to make my astral tieflings. I want you to make crystal tieflings too. Because I think the astral sea and the sort of planes in between have a lot of really cool potential. And I think that you should be able to make a deal with things within the astral sea. Space whale. This man's skin passed no question like it had the plague. Uh, a map like a large battlefield where you can throw a bunch of Warhammer 40k guards, guardsmen versus a bunch of greenskins and they go at each other. That kind of map. Ah, uh, that's really fucking big. Like, bro, <laughs> like please. Warhammer maps are gargantuan. I don't know if I want to do gargantuan maps. This is like, this is what I like, where it's like a couple hundred feet across, not, oh, but not several miles across. But I like that battle we had in the town when we were stuck in the Matrix. It was fun. That's what you meant by battle maps. Eventually, I will have to make those types of maps once you guys get like units. Like once you guys get units and you guys start playing around the, the kingdoms and warfare stuff, like you guys will get unit cards and we'll be fighting on like an actual like grid style map for 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 battles. Yo, finally, all my all my years of civilization will finally come to use. <laughs> I have to refresh. Make a deal with Faye, Liches, Celestia, all that jazz. Yeah, that's. I feel like with Tieflings, you get so much more potential. With Tieflings, because it feels like a Tiefling can just be the result of any dealing. While as ASMR have very specific like guidelines to becoming an ASMR. It is a deal with a Celestial entity. But a Tiefling? A Tiefling can be a, a deal with anything. Hey, Toby. Hey, can... Because I remember tieflings are, like, specifically, like, humans making a deal with whatever. Are tieflings... Is that always tieflings, or can no, they be, it like, can be, other things? It can be anything. Um, I think it's... I think the, the story is that it's almost always... Uh, humans. Almost always humans. But I like the idea that anything can make a, a, a pact with it, an otherworldly entity. Okay. Or, you know. Um, God, what's that movie? What's the movie where there's like the big red like devil and he's like, it already germinates within you. <laughs> Bro, I have no idea. Fuck. No what is... Really. God, what is that? All right, time to look up the. the no, quote. not Hellboy. It's like an older movie. the The entity, the figure, is like super iconic. I, it, he has like gargantuan jutting horns out of the sides of his head, and he's like already the evil germinates within uh, okay. you. Okay, yeah, I, I'm because I looked it up and like I'm seeing so many fucking people quote it, but I'm just getting a. <laughs> My first result is uh, a fucking, like a fucking clay looking piece of bread. It just looks fucking scary. Legend. You were right, Fex. It was legend. It's as you say, too. Hold up. This is the first thing I found, damn. This is the first thing I found. It's the first thing that pops up. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even now, the evil seed of what you've done germinates within you. Uh, oh my god. Little bread. It's so fucking weird. I love it. It's almost as good as the pencil. Have you seen the, the pencil? Pen the pencil? What's the pencil? One second. Show me. Show me the pencil. You gotta figure out what's the... Legend is a, a movie in from 1985. It has a very, very young Tom Cruise in it. 
A Ridley Scott film. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> hey, hey, what? I'm scared, do you? <laughs> There's other gifts of it too. I gotta find them. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. The super devil over here and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the dwarves? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Smile. I'm gonna make some sub braces by smashing other ones together. Sub braces. How many types of dwarves are there? There's only. There's only There's three, only thank God. There's four. Four? Durgar, oh. Mountain, dwar or Hill. Durgar, Hill, Mountain, and Mark of Warding, but that's a fake one, so I yeah, guess. That's three. a fucking Eberron one. Yeah, there's three. So it's not bad. What do you think about two races coming together and through generations making a whole new race? As an example, I had a civilization that was made up of Genasi and Tieflings. I figured if a Genasi and human makes a Genasi, the same is true for Tieflings, and eventually the pairings uh, of the two would remove the human part, leaving a half Tiefling, half Genasi. Hmm. You know, what I came with that, I remember reading a lore on dwarves that, like, like most humanoid races, like, they you can crossbreed with the dwarf, but the dwarven genes are just so strong they come out on top in the end. <laughs> See, my opinion is that you can have a half of any race, but you're crazy if you want to make a stat block for a half of any two races. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I always like when it came to like half a race, I always uh it was like what the fuck was it? It's you normally like yeah any two race can come together and make a child but like the parents of the child will most likely take on like the mother you know what i mean yeah i but, like i just like the lore of like you can like being able to pick and choose certain abilities from both races that you're yeah. a mix of but like if you if you were to make like a custom stat block for every half race, like oh, fuck that's that. a lot. It's yeah, why I've that. it's why I was like half elves, half orc, uh half giant. <laughs> that's how you get because, because <laughs> well, then you would have to do like, oh, what's what's a dwarf and a tiefling? What's a dwarf and an elf? What's a tiefling and an elf? You gotta do all those and it's just like that's just too much. Like that's you you're a crazy person <laughs> to do that with. You gotta do half Leon because that's what Blake is. You're Taroshan human. I'm done. <laughs> I've done away with variant humans, brother. Why? Because everybody gets a feat at level one. That's fair. But he's half lion, man. I'm sure. Yeah, and that's why you have the daunting roar ability. That's why you have an ability that nobody else does. As the a human. ability that doesn't fucking work. <laughs> hey, brother. It's, it's literally a role playing tool. Correct. Hell, we can even reflavor your uh, your uh, your Tarosian ability as that, where you don't you don't <laughs> fear anybody, you just uh, give temporary hit points. Oh man, I think it's only worked uh, once, and then he legendary resistance. No, it, it it worked. No, okay, so it's worked twice. Once, no, okay, it's worked several times, like three. So one, it worked on someone who legendary resistance it. Second, it worked technically but they were immune to it and the third time it worked it was on an ally telling us <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right that's right uh, it's 4 a.m i know I'm, I'm about to call the stream here i was gonna start working on dwarves uh, but i realized i've spent all of my brain power for today and i'm uh, starving yeah you should also sleep it's been like fucking 10 hours it's been over 10 hours i think now i want to eat food Imagine you should, you should eat. It's been ten and a half hours. Jesus, ten out, man! Holy fuck! Also, because Chris DM'd me before he got off, and he said go to bed at four or else, and I was like, okay, nice. Okay. Or or else, I don't know what. Well, I don't know what the order <laughs> Dude, I got a full night's sleep since we started. 
<laughs> oh, sh I guess it. All right, time to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's time to go to bed. The only reason I stayed up is because I don't work tomorrow. So, yee, -hee, I get to sleep in. I gotta work tomorrow, but it's Friday. All right, say goodbye. Bye bye. Bye, chat. You're I beautiful. Will. I love you all. I won't be coming back, so it was a pleasure hanging out with you guys. Thanks for sticking around for 10 hours. I uh, fucking hate oh, you. Oh, yeah. Probably. I was still laying around for 10 hours. I Can't wait hot. to do it again. Goodbye, oh, Blakey boy. Okay, bye. Bye, beautiful. Ah. When's the next stream, King? I'm glad you asked. It's today. <laughs> Uh, it's today. We're going to be streaming CTF, uh, episode 61, but we get our D&D &D today, the feel, uh, and then probably another stream on Sunday. So a big week of streaming. I'm going to, I'm going to double check and do all my tax stuff Saturday, make sure, double, double checking that, uh, all of the shit's actually accounted for, uh, and then submitting them. I've basically been waiting for uh, for approval from my bank and everything like that before I start doing some crazy shit. So I'm going to finish up my tax stuff on Saturday, get that all submitted, be Gucci, take Saturday off, and then uh, then stream Sunday. So Friday, no stream Saturday, stream Sunday. Uh, What else? You haven't... Ooh, thanks. You should absolutely do your taxes, brother. <laughs> The reason I've been holding off so long is because I've been waiting for my card from my bank. It's already all said and done, but I have not hit submit on them yet. So once I get my stuff from my bank, I'm Gucci. Um, plugs. Hey. Hello. Hi, I'm the Crown DM. I'm a 5th edition dungeon master who owns games in his own homebrew setting the world of Adis. What you just saw was an impromptu stream. Uh, generally, streams don't happen every Thursday, but when they do, it's a, it's world-building streams. You just helped me make uh, elves, the elves of Adis. Uh, don't worry, we will be continuing this as we go along. We will be making more races, more sub-races, new features, new class features, all that fun stuff. Until eventually, the setting is my own. Finally, my own. Um, what else? Oh, uh, if you like what you saw, don't worry. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, usually. Friday and Sundays are dedicated to game days, uh, but until a Sunday game is happening, Sunday will be uh, dedicated towards system making or race making. Um, Monday and Tuesday are known as Map Making Monday and TPK Tuesday, where we make maps and make NPCs and monsters for the upcoming games. Uh... Also, hey, I'm a I'm a rogue partner. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. There's a referral link you can using exclamation rogue that'll take you to the Rogue Energy website to show you uh, just what it is. It is a it is a uh, a sort of dietary or hydration supplement to replace all of the caffeine consumption in your life. If you drink coffee or energy drinks and find that you're crashing pretty frequently afterwards, don't worry. If you drink rogue energy, you'll get all of the benefits of the caffeine without the crash. And if you find that you want to use it or you like it, uh, then use that referral link and use my code, code crown to get 20% off uh, by any, uh, any products that you purchase from there. As well, maybe you don't want to, Maybe you don't want to pay money right away. Don't worry. They have a little kit for you to try out. They'll send you a shaker and some flavors for you to get a test. See if you even like it. And if you do, why not go on back and use that code? Every time you guys use that code, every time you guys use that referral link, you kick back a little bit to me and you guys are helping me out all the time. So I appreciate you guys. Those of you that have come out and support uh, supported me using the code. I really appreciate it. Follow the Twitter for notifications of when I go live and when I retweet cool art and artists. Follow or go subscribe to the YouTube where I upload all of the VODs for our games and campaigns. And eventually I'll be uploading these world building VODs up there as well for your viewing pleasure. Should you wish to go back and dredge through 10 hours <laughs> of content. Uh, join the Discord where all the cool people hang out. Uh, you'll see all the amazing fan art that Legion and Grengren and Inkly... Uh, and, and so many others have posted and made, uh, and you'll get to see all of the adorable pets 
and talk about all the awesome D&D and TTRPG stuff that the community talks about. And you really should join because uh, maybe, maybe just maybe, somebody needs another player in their game. Or maybe you're the dungeon master they've been waiting for. So who knows? Why not come hang out with the community and find out? Aside from that, that's it for me tonight. I'm going to go get some goddamn food in me. Uh, I'm starving. <laughs> uh, I hope that you get... We're probably not going to raid tonight either. Uh, just because, again, it's very late. So... <laughs> I hope that you... Oh, maybe. Maybe. Let's see if any of the... Let's see if any mutuals are, uh, are streaming right now, actually. Hold on. Let's see if any homies are streaming right now. Oh, we can go raid Eli again. Yeah, we can go raid Eli again. Eli's a cool dude. So we'll, uh, we'll go raid Snake. Are we here for CTF? Nice. I appreciate it. Uh, Snake's amazing. That's right. Pass the crown to you. Here is our rating message. Pass the crown to you. I hope that you guys have a fantastic night. I hope that you guys take care of yourselves. Hug your loved ones. Tell them that you love them. And I will see you all later today for episode 61 of CTF. Good night, chat.